for it. Bare pige, vi har B.
further ado, let's get rolling! Good morning and good evening, everybody, wherever you are in the world. The BSC is back and it's been a while, but it's a great thing to be able to finally say. I, of course, am the host and caster for today, joined by my fellow co-casters, Trav and Teddy. Trav, going to start with you first, mate. It's been a what? Feels like a lifetime, right? It does. It's been, you know, a couple of months since our last monthly finals and uh, I couldn't be more thrilled to be back today. It's going to be a banger, Teddy. How does it feel to be back casting in your home region? Super exciting, man. It's been like two months since we've had monthly finals, and I am thrilled to be a part of the action again. It's going to be a long one, boys. Strap yourselves in. But this is the EME region, of course. It is always one that delivers. Let's start with the format for today, of course. Power match format being the name of the game. Picks and drafts that we all know and love. And our eight-team single elimination bracket. Best of fives here. It's all to be seen throughout the entire day. It's going to be a long one, as it always is in this region, but one that never fails to deliver. Let's take a look at the leaderboards as well to see how things are shaping up to be. Trap, anything there that sort of catches your eye? Well, you know, the only things that are really catching my eye at the moment are foot esports and Team Queso being so low, you know, dropping below Humble a and Ammo Fantasy. This is not something we would have seen last year, but they've been playing so, so well throughout this year, so deserved spots for them. But it's 80 Division, they've won two, so they're absolutely flying off in first place. Reply Totem and Navi down in second and third. Still a bit of catching up to if they want to take down 80 Division today, but we'll see if they're able to do it. Yes, they are in a formidable position at the moment. And of course, they get good results today. They could well be locking themselves in for things like LCQ, maybe even more than that. We'll have to wait and see. Zeta Division up first up against Ammo Fantasy. And then after that, Humble versus One Trick Pony. It's great to see them back actually coming in. Humble, of course, the former Dogster Lobster Roster. And I never need an excuse to say that. SK Gaming versus Foot East will be an absolute banger for match number three. And Navi versus Reply Totem for the fourth quarterfinals match of the day of course it is going to come down to the nitty gritty we've had two monthly final wins for zeta division so far this year in february and march navi though got the win last time around trav any thoughts on who might get the win this time round? I know you've been saying beforehand we're going to be, it's pretty much going to be, you feel like it's going to maybe be nab, uh, between whoever wins that game versus SK and Foot. And honestly, I kind of agree, but I do still think that Zeta Division reply to and we've got a bit of a say in it. And obviously Navi as well. It's pretty much anybody's game, I'd say. Well, you can have your say over at events.brawlstars.com. Join in the fun there, earn some exclusive in-game rewards and get your predictions right. We're going to be helping you guys out along the way as best we can or maybe quite the opposite. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. It's one of the more unpredictable regions. Is that not right, Teddy? Yeah, it has been very erratic so far throughout the year. But as you said, a couple teams standing out a bit more than others. Zeta so far, the only team to win two monthly finals are looking to potentially be the favorites again this time. They've been on a pretty good track record, that's got to be said for sure. But we have seen some rising up of other teams within this region uh, along the way as well, Trap. You know, looking at Navi last month, they really came through. I'm still kind of rooting for them a little bit, just based upon some of the sort of score lines that I've seen, you know, throughout the cup stages of the Snapdragon Pro series in Split 2. But, you know, nonetheless, you guys go ahead and maybe discuss the reasons why you're going. I mean, you're separating yourselves between SK and Foot. Uh, so, Teddy, let's start with you. What do you think Foot have got over SK this this month. Well, first of all, they have Lena, which, uh, you know, is something to definitely take into consideration. But in all fairness, I feel like this one is very much a 50-50. It was the toughest one for me to predict. And as you guys said, you know, both teams, they have so much to win, but also so much to lose in this monthly final. A bit of a slow start of the year, both for Foot and for SK. Trav. Why SK? I mean, we've, we've both kind of seen that in line, but, um, you know, you're going humble over one trick opponents as well. I'll maybe talk through my predictions along the way of the show, but uh, you know, what, what do you think SK have got over foot? I, I honestly don't know. I've kind of just been watching them and I feel like maybe they've got what it takes. Obviously, they did just add OK to that roster and I think it has made them that little bit stronger. A few roster changes here and there for both of these teams. So it's kind of just a question is who be, who's, who's been able to solidify that synergy the fastest. And honestly, I think this might be the first month that we've all had completely different predictions. 
Yeah, uh, it's being a bit of an edgier one, isn't it? But it is a special day, of course, because we do have Brawl Talk later on. And you can go over to the event site as well and place a poll there. How excited are you for that? It's going to bring a whole new world of things, I'm sure. No spoilers, but make sure that you do tune in for that because it will shape how the esports scene does go down. Of course, we'll be lining up our first match of the day very, very shortly. Um, let's discuss a little bit before we send one of you guys off. Uh, Zeta versus Amavantizi. Let's first start, of course, with Zeta Division. Uh, Garou, Meow, and Naoi. Um, you know, tell you they've had a great deal of, of progress this, this year. They are the team to beat in this region. Navi coming in last month, but you know, do Zeta have what it takes to be able to do the same over, all over again? Uh, they've looked like the most consistent team so far and honestly by far you know it's been a very chaotic start of the year for most team a lot of big names not even making it to this monthly final today zeta they've just been so incredibly consistent at winning and this month i'm sure they're aiming to get their title back well teddy we're gonna catch up with you in just a bit me and Trav will take the reins on this one Trav, give us your thoughts on this matchup. You know, where do you see this one going? Have Ammo Fantasy got what it takes? Because this roster is a very, very good one. And they have shown some good progression, some good growth in the competition. Philip, Simon Stell, can they cause an upset here today? I don't think so. I mean, there's always a possibility of an upset, right? They've made some great growth, some great progression, as you've just said. But is it enough growth and progression to be able to take down Zeta Division, who are pretty solidly on the top of the region by a big amount? They've been top two uh, the first two months. Absolutely incredible team in them. I mean, Fantasy, they're kind of just becoming good. They're kind of just being able to challenge these really, really top level teams. And Zeta Division is the top of the top level team, so I just don't really see it happen. We've seen crazy things happen in the EMEA region, but one thing is for sure, Ever Fantasy have got a big mountain to climb. And Peseta have shown along the way a couple of slip-ups. We did see them have uh, a couple of losses, actually, in the qualifying stages for the uh, Snapdragon Pro Series of Split 1. So they have shown a little bit of weakness, and of course, last month as well, you know, they didn't quite get the results that they were looking for in those stages of the brackets. And Navi then saw the open door and walked straight on through. It just made... The semi final well, actually went out in the SK in this quarterfinal stages. So they're hoping to be able to do better on last month. They they definitely did drop off a little bit. And the Fantasy have been very consistent coming into the competition in terms of their appearances, but in terms of their results, not quite the same story to be told, Trap. Yeah, exactly. And you know, although they may have gone out a little bit earlier in that last monthly final, looking at the Snapdragon Pro Series, they were dominating so hard throughout those cups, and it just seemed Zeta, 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 Zeta when you're looking at the winners. It was absolutely incredible to see. And with how back and forward this region usually is, them coming up on top of two monthly finals, winning all of those cups, and then qualifying to the challenge season of the SPS as well, it's definitely something to be scared about. Well, there is also a poll there to be scared of as well. 98% siding with Zeta, just a 2%. The 2% Warriors backing the side of Emma Fantasy as we go into our first set of the day. Knockout will be the game mode. Goldarm Gulch will be the map. It's quite a good place to start, I feel, to be completely honest, because if you're Ammo Fantasy, you do need to feel things through, get an idea for what Zeta's division are bringing to the table here today as the bands are in and the Shirley ban. I actually quite right there from Ammo Fantasy, the tick as well with the gene. But the side of Zeta is going to be Brock, Max, and Gray being banned out here. You said it, Trav, in the Potesto podcast just a few days ago with the esports uh, upload that Shirley is a brawler which people have got to take seriously, and uh, you just want her gone, right? Well, I mean, to be fair, it did get nerfed after we recorded that, so I'm a little bit more here for it now, but at the same time, it's still very, very <laughs> good because I kind of feel like they needed to nerf that movement speed rather than anything else they did. Uh, but I'm quite happy to see it banned out by Amo Fantasy here. We've got that first pick of Sprout coming in from Zeta Mission. I like it. Obviously, you knock it, you're able to kind of block them in certain places, use those gadgets to recycle them, and obviously, you're going to be able to block them in that zone as well, which is another great, great thing. That's going to come in then for Ammo Fantasy as well. It's a solid mid to have. And the shield, as we know, can provide so much of an ability to push forwards and aggress things like a Sprout. Botany going to come in as a great assassinator when it comes to that Sprout, going to be very susceptible to it. So I do like where they are thinking with this. And of course, the range is going to come in very, very handy for Goldarm Gulch, for sure. Some aggression needed for Zeta, some range as well. Death certainly going to be needed now to really go up against something like this. And 
the control, no doubt, going to be there, but it's, it's, it's very, very good bands across the board because everything then takes away six brawlers. Now you're going to come in. We've seen Zeta go with this idea a, a fair amount, actually, uh, along the way, and they do play it very, very well. They are one of the few teams that really hold on to it. Otis now has a bit more of like an insurance policy for what this third and final pick coming in for Amo Fantasia could be. Yeah, it's going to be the Grom. I do like it. Bit of a thrower coming in. Obviously, they kind of needed something to be able to fight up against this, uh, against the Sprout. Needed a thrower to be able to combat it. But at the end of the day, I kind of like both of the comps here a lot. Gus very strong at the moment. Bonnie very strong. Nanny obviously able to um, fight this Bonnie at that range because she's so slow. He should be able to get quite a few hits and get a lot of those peeps coming in as well. Otis, when they jump in, when it's towards that late portion of the game, going to be able to get some mutes off, which is going to help Zeta Vision out a lot. But at the same time, Ammo Fantasy may be able to throw out some little gust shields and help his teammates out that little bit more. Well, let's see how Emma Fantasy do fare in these early outsets. It will be a testament to how potential sets could then follow on from things. They cause a ruckus early on, as we saw last month. They did exit in the first stage of the competition. Will they do the same again this month, or have they learned from some of those mistakes? A lot of activity already going on. There's an aggressive push coming in, pushing everyone to the left-hand side here. That spat from Garrett to try to just deflate things a little bit here, but I love the way that Emma Fantasy are actually coming out very aggressive, as long as they're not going to be overly so. Yeah, I like it as well. Well, we've got that totem coming down as well. We're going to give him vision of the bush, but quickly taken out by Meow. And he is quite low, needing to heal up a little bit more. We're seeing a little bit of a rotation to the right hand side from Zeta Vision. Wants to try and open it up, but at the same time, they're opening up that left hand side for them to push down. But now he's turning back and getting some great shots in on that Bonnie. He's going to allow him to get that super and stealth. Probably going to be the prime target, but looks like maybe a little bit of grass break along with the shot into uh, same there is going to be the choice that they do go with. Sprout wall over the right hand side, blocking off so, so much. And it's actually Meow who placed it, so maybe not the best for them. Well, plus bring here, and it's going to provide a lot of value here to Meow. Still, there's no here, he will go down. Just a two versus three there. Gero has got the mute to hand. Philip goes down into three versus one. They're pretty reserved now, this utility, and yeah, nowhere to go for save. He's got to go into the gas, and that's a good, solid start for Zeta. But I do feel like there is a chance here that this could be a closer match than many expected. Yeah, I mean, 98% of people expect Zeta Division to win. I don't think it's that one sided, but we'll see if that's how the outcome is. Got a couple of supers down on the Zeta side of things, and only one for same over the right side. But obviously, his is probably the most influential. Out comes the peep as after he did get it. And probably got to be looking for that, grit, uh, that, that Grom, sorry. Charging it up just a little bit. Now it's becoming a little bit hard to control, but still going to get the connection. Great stuff from him. Meow has the wall as well. Going to be able to block them out in this late game. And so far, it seems like Zeta are a little bit more in a comfortable position here. Yeah, starting to really gain their footing now. As Meow tries to bounce these shots into Stell. And just coming up a little bit short by doing so, but thought was there. The peep coming in for Naoi. And Say might be forced out to jump here, but he's got a lot of tank in his HP to be able to deal with it. Coming back around, trying to get the connection, and Khan hits the wall. Big miss for Zeta. Obviously got this mute up top as well, Bonnie. Got the jump, can't go anywhere near Jiro, and surely he's got to be going to protect his teammates here, but tries to get a few shots through. Sprout Wall, return send, in comes the jump down onto Meow, though, but he's muted out. Great stuff from Jiro, finds a shot, only Meow alive, but Stell finds it in the closing seconds of that round, and AOF even things out. This is what I like to see, and oh, imagine if this round goes the way of Fantasy and just keeps Zeta at bay for the most part. Big tap, though, from Geru. Will really force back same there and a shot short there from Naoi, but nonetheless, huge taps, big start from Zeta. They kept things at bay for now, but they continue to do so. They're just trying to seek out Naoi into the mid and gain that shield as it will help considerably so against the couple that they're running up against. Still doing a decent job though, keeping his distance from Meow and keeping it full HP. They do need to have something of a solid backbone when it comes to this matchup here because Zeta take no prisoners. Here's the peep again, and Stealth throwing out some shots. Might be the target of this, but he's missed it yet again. Maybe charging up, I don't know. He's going to find nothing except from a wall. He actually looped it back round. <laughs> it get a little bit longer than I expected, but didn't actually get anything in the end. Anyway, needs to look for another charge now, but it might be too little too late for that, and going for these shots might be the better option. Fat splatter plays onto Philip, and a hit from now he comes in there as well. Aggressive position from Bonnie, but a good pinch from Philip. Keeps Jiro low. Return sender there on Stale. Out comes the Grombok. Hits one, but misses the rest. Have they got the damage to do the same here? The shots from now are missing, but now Phillips locked out. He gets the wall back, places it again, and that's going to be a Zeta game one. Oh my word! <laughs> what an
explosive finale then for that first game. It could have gone either way. I think it's fair to say, Alphantizio bringing out some fireworks, but Zeta were able to stay, stay firm. I will say though, for me, Zeta are looking more shaky. And I don't know whether it's just simply the fact that we've seen them do so well at the beginning of the year that maybe there's an expectation now upon them. And it might be starting to show a little bit because Fantasy, I've been blunt, have had a terrible run in the SPS split two cups. Uh, they didn't even make the open final stages. So they have dropped off a little bit over the past few weeks. Nonetheless though, back and forth, can't be denied. Let's see though whether we might see a game go the way of Evan Fantasy in this first set or whether Zeta will make it a clean one as they go head to head now. You know, wall coming in already from Meow, but great shots from Stell to keep him low. Return shots from Meow keep Stell low though, however, and now it does seem to be Zeta who are in control of this map. And obviously with this Sprout Wall, it's going to be very, very helpful. Does get it back as well using that gadget. Smart stuff from him. Going for this right hand side block, block off now, and that's a wonderful wall. Nobody locked below either. He's checking that bush still. Doesn't know if someone's there. And actually wasted the wall pretty much in its entirety by not shooting upwards. Closing in, Meow's got the wall as well, and he might just use it now. He does. It's going to force everyone forwards, and now he's got a fantastic line of sight through this mid. Big taps on the same, and Guerra as well, splashing onto Philip. The gas is going to surely seal the deal here for Zeta as they move on to get the round. One more will gain the set. Yeah, and somehow Meow survived through all of that, as well as expecting him to go down pretty much instantly after some shots did connect onto him, but stayed alive nonetheless. And Zeta Division seem to be having their synergy shine through against AOF here, and just need this one round to be able to secure this first set. And they're in a great position to do just that. A lot of mistakes can be made. They can take losses in rounds. They can even take a game loss, and they're still going to be in a great position. Keep going to come in. Is it going to connect? Oh, it does finally now onto Philip. Keeps him low, but the pickup and the follow-up is not there. And that's going to be the concern for Zeta, but they clearly want to just to keep the pace as low as it is. They're getting results with it. So if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it, I guess. Now he's still getting good value. Because the gap can't really be closed in the same way in the top part of the map between Gera and Same and the Jukes and the speed gear, of course, coming very much into play. Favor getting that back. Both sides just waiting things out now. The sprout walls available and it will be used and then maybe we'll see something fall off the back of this. I mean, now he as well, he's been hitting so many shots. He shouldn't be that far away from super and in the late game, it might be useful to have. Down comes another wall as well. Stell might need to use his super to break this here. Throws it out towards the others. Only hits Jiro, but he gets the mute on. Same gets the trade out. The wall's there. The return to sender as well. And this has got to be a Zeta win. Surely going to be taking the first set here. Now he with the killing blow and Zeta bring the first set back home. Looking at much cooler karma collected Zeta there towards the end. Their first sets have always notoriously been a little bit, you know, slow to the mark, but that looked a lot better. In fact, you know, it was actually Emma Fantasy which didn't really learn from those mistakes. The finalizing of that round was very, very similar to one previous to that. And you know, the Sprout Wars towards the end of that late game was where it really came down for me, for Zeta. And they were able to focus their time and their attention just securing the kill. So we needed to have that same aggressiveness that we saw in the earlier rounds from Emma Fantasy continue forwards because their early game was where they really could have started to thrive and maybe even secured the set themselves. Zeta were playing the long game and they just took it through every single time to do so that's kind of where emma fantasy faltered for me yeah i mean these walls really were flawless though to be fair just especially in that last one separating the bonnie and the gus and making sure that they're, they're going to be able to take a one a 2v1 match in both of those scenarios really really smart coming in from me out there and he has played the sprout pretty much perfectly all the way throughout did a good job to avoid that grom bomb as well obviously jiro did go down but got his trade and that's really what matters so we were able to pretty much not dominate this first set as aof did have a bit of uh, a bit of something to say throughout pretty much all of it but Zeta Division do come out on top, not counting out AF for the rest of this game, but looking at the statistics, they didn't get that many kills at all. I don't actually feel like Gero did pretty well to get what he did, because ultimately he had a tough matchup. He had definitely a lack of range on that side of things. So despite having the lowest or matching that up now, he nonetheless, great round for him. Hot Rock Mine then coming up. One of my favorite gem grab maps. It cannot be denied. And one of the more balanced of all the gem grab modes, I feel myself personally. Coming up, surely. I'm a fantasy with some lessons to learn here. Let's see what they go for. Double shelly bands. Do quite like that. And the early draft of Gene. It's not necessarily the first sort of idea which we see in the draft. It's going to be played out. Yeah, I mean, it has to be an A bit in return for it. 
and Chikar is able to come back away from the spawn with the gems, keeping them safe and secure. Um, but nobody really see gem carries coming a little bit later into the draft, but clearly both sides. And, you know, as we saw on Twitter earlier this week, Bobby is correct. The Mr. P meta seems to be upon us. I mean, I haven't seen enough of it in competitive, obviously pretty much at all, I will say. But 8-bit, great against the gene on this map. Mr. P is going to have a lot of porters spawning in. Great against Gene on this map. I'm just not sure how anybody can really back this Gene first pick. But we're going to see a bus coming in down the lane. Probably just try to tank straight towards those uh, that Mr. P. Because obviously he doesn't have a lot of DPS if you're walking in a straight line towards him. And bus has got a decent amount of HP. I, I don't know whether I'm so sold on the bus to pick. I think Ash, oh, they're going to double down with Ash. Okay, I mean, that's kind of wild. Um, but maybe you need something of that nature up against a team like Zeta Division. Something which just keeps them completely guessing and then uh, a bit of a spot where they've got to maybe adapt on the fly. I don't know, but we shall shortly see. There's definitely still some options. I think it's going to be noticed for me, but nonetheless, we might see a spike or something. There's going to be a heavy uh, tank counter idea, but they're not going with that. Interesting. I don't know whether that's kind of how I feel towards the situation. They want to tackle the tanky aggressiveness with more tanky aggression, but I don't know. I, I, I feel like the Otis would have been the play for me. I wouldn't have hated a Primo either, to be honest with you. I mean, <laughs> we've, we've seen, I don't know, I think it was Semantic played out on a map. Semantic, like yeah. It works so well. Uh, but Daryl, I'm not going to complain either. Pretty pretty good against both of these tanks, I'd say, if you know you get the roll bang on and get some damage down. But even at the same time, if these guys play it well, they still are pretty decent against a Daryl. You know, if you get the rats down, keep on cycling those. Buster, if you just kind of stay away from Daryl, you should be fine as well. But maybe I would have preferred a Primo. I, I really don't feel like this Buster pick is going to work out for me, at least on the personal level. Um, but it is wild. Gero you know, just trying to get this early gem slice, little favorable spawn there. Now even easy pick on the left hand side. Buster just has just fallen off a great deal. I admire the idea of trying to experiment with it, but I just have a bit more range, a bit more control. Be great. Rico is available this map. You know how much I love that, right? But nonetheless, it does seem like Emma Fantasia is struggling to get their groove early on. There's now five gems in the pocket. Let's nice pull from Philip, but I would like to have seen that more onto Geru at a time when he's susceptible to it. Yeah, but we do know, you know, Geru's not really going to be susceptible for the most part. He's pretty much going to have a lot of cheek still got three, and they've already got six in the bank. So maybe a good pick, pick up just to just try and get some control. Now we have this right side now up against this uh, against this Ash, which I'm kind of surprised about considering Meow wasn't doing too bad and now he was dominating that lane against uh against same over the left but seven to one it's quite the difference in comes the roll now knockbacks there but the slowdown with the tire barrel is as well not gonna tp back and all <laughs> that is <laughs> the gene throws the pull out auto aims it towards now a great g cartridge from jiro and what did he expect i, I had my the mr p versus bust the matchup and mr p comes up on, on top so we're looking at different things and seeing similar results it does feel like emma fantasy haven't really kind of mustered this one just yet there might be a swift turnaround but they've, they've left that damage you know station up the entire game they're going to be able to get that out of the way that's when Gero is susceptible to it they can't really seem to close the gap right now no utility for it now he comes in secures everything it's just stealth and everyone on the side of zeta is safe and sound I mean, that was a little bit embarrassing for AOF in my eyes. You know, Zeta Division completely dominant throughout that one. And as you say, I didn't see the Mr. P beating the Buster. I saw the auto aim gene pull heading towards a, a Daryl that's completely out of range because he didn't expect the cheat cartridge back. And you've got to expect the cheat cartridge back. Well, let's see going into this next one. Will Emma Fantasy be able to iron out some of these errors? Or will they concede another set here? Everyone on the left hand side just clustering in, so obviously it will then feed into Same's ability to have super. But now he's already on it. The pinch is coming in. Now he's surely me outnumbered here in the years. This is a better start. Philip though is pushed away from the mid by now on the top. And now coming back in with the support for Gary to be able to get these gems. There's three sitting there. Now goes for it. I mean, he's not the ideal person to even have them in the first place. And now finally the pickup is there. Six gems in the pocket for Zeta as quickly as that. Yeah, I mean, insane down this left hand side. Made the, got the kill, but did only survive on six HP, so can't engage Jiro just yet. Another roll coming out, and now he's there as well. Tar Barrel not going to be connecting this time either, but we need to see a better gene pull this time. Meow's not in a good spot here, but gets the spawners down. And Insane going to waste that super as well, and that should be a pickup for Jiro right there. Gene pull's available, we're actually going to go for the TP. Maybe Stealth should have stayed in a more aggressive position and got that pickup there, but now he actually comes out on top. 
Yes, those steam falls, but the damage booster is there. They've got a tankier cop to be able to push for to be able to eradicate it. And they're just simply not. One gem is split there with Naui, so if he goes down here, it could be a problem, but he won't do that. Rolls out of these and gets the pickups along the way. Beautiful stuff from Zeta, and this is going to be surely their set, their way. It's done. And Philip's got to be able to push forwards here, and he can't. He's got no HP for it. Zeta proved victorious. I mean, it can't be just me that thinks that was embarrassing for AOF. You know, I said it after the first, and I'll say it again <laughs> after the second. The draft wasn't good. The gameplay wasn't good. And I just don't know what to say. I don't know why they're first picking Gene, especially with so many of these counters still on the board. It just seems a little bit weird from them. And I don't know if they just kind of a draft that they didn't expect and just completely outdrafted, which obviously they did, or if they're just not switched on today. The reason I love you, Trevor, because we can always expect honesty when it comes to you being on cam. <laughs> But you're right, I, I'm kind of with you. Uh, if, I, if they're going to be bold enough to go in with a buster pick, I want to see a payoff. I want to see some strategy, some thought behind the, the madness, you know? Uh, and, and that's something where you can look back on things and go, do you know what? Actually, this team are a cut above the rest. They're staying ahead of the meta and have spotted something that we necessarily haven't. But it wasn't the case, you know? I was expecting to see a bit more of a, an aggressive push forwards, uh, something which was going to overthrow the Zeta comp and just really focus and fixate around getting those damage boosters removed, making Gero weaker in, in that position of power. They just didn't do that. It was a bit all over the place. And, and the stats say a very similar story. I mean, one kill with Philip for the entire thing, Stell with a, a donut, now he with nine. I mean, Zeta are going kind of what we thought they would do coming into this one, sweeping the sets. It did look in that first that like Emma Fantasy had a bit of a chance, but now some questionable decisions coming into motion and the gameplay is kind of matching up with that as well. And it's a sad thing to see. I would like to see them get in a set, start to gain some momentum and start to turn this one around. I mean, they're going to have to have three perfect drafts in a row with the most perfect gameplay I've ever seen to be able to risk, uh, reverse sweep this one because Zeta are looking good. They're not looking too great. And they've got the momentum in their hands as well. This, in my eyes, should be closed down as a 3-0. And that's probably what 98% of the public expected as well, this being closed down in a 3-0 by Zeta Vision. But I hope to see something from our fantasy. I need to see Zeta being challenged in this first one. Or else they might just be looking at the third monthly final. I'm going to throw Emma Fantasia bone, you know, here, because this is their third monthly final. I mean, when you look at their consistency in qualifying, they've got a better track record than teams like SK. Uh, I mean, that is something to be said. But nonetheless, maybe this is a year where they're just kind of getting their foot in the water when it comes to monthly finals, because it does take time to be able to handle that kind of scrutiny. It's a very tough first matchup for them, no doubt about it. You know, Zayt's division have won two monthly finals of February and March, and they are still looking like they are a very dangerous squad. Shelly Bound there for good reason on the side of Zayt's division is the first draft coming for Nita from Anna Fantasy. Will it ban? Which is quite a rare thing to see, but I feel like this is a map where she does thrive, and we've seen many of the regions adopting towards using her here, so Dynamite and Barley to follow up on that side of things. It's a triple throw ban for them. I do quite like it. Max banned, Barley banned, and the Shelly for Zeta has now a chance to come in here. B is wide open. I mean, it's definitely going to struggle against Bruce, but M's is their flavor of choice. I really like the way the M's has started to flittle back into this meta in such a lovely little way, and it can suppress so much on this map and use the walls to great advantage. But some range wouldn't go amiss here. Penny is still available here as well for Zeta if they want to have more control. Or something more aggressive like a stew or like a side lane for them. Be a bad thing. Ruffs can be quite with it. Pan was not the pick that I was thinking. I don't necessarily mind it. You can get some great value in the mid pan. Yeah, it's going to shred through those bears as well. That's the thing. I, I don't mind it. Uh, if Ems, you know, is, if she's going to be coming in close proximity with Anita Bear, she's going to be losing that fight end off. That's just how it is. But she needs to keep them in range, keep that super out of Anita's hands if she's going to be on that lane. Bear in mind, they've still obviously got this last pick, which could be another lane, something like a Carl that hasn't gone drafted or banned so far. It's going to be very good on this map. The ability to, you know, peek around those corners. But we're going to see the Crow come out. Crow into a Pam is not something that I'd have expected to see today. But still, it's decent on the map. I think, I think for the first time today, Trev, you're being very reserved. Crow into Pam doesn't work. <laughs> it's like it's like the opposite thing that you want to have, realistically. Crow, any other time, absolutely can work. You know, it's absolutely the, the thing that you would want to have on this particular map. But it's going to struggle, for sure. Ash, I, I kind of much prefer. But you're still picking it into, you know, an M's, which can really cause a problem against it. Carl is a great pick here for Zeta. I really like the way that they are thinking with that. The flying hook coming in, very aggressive in nature. 
and I think Emma Fentezi could be in trouble here. I think so as well. You know, Protective Pirouette's going to be good against this uh, Ash. If you can get on top of the Nita, it's going to be good. If you can get on top of the Crow, it's going to be very good. Pan versus Crow in the mid should be Pan's way. And Ems versus Ash, if they can get that matchup as well, it's going to be more of the same. I think Zeta Division are going to wrap this one up right here. It's the cop to do it. But can we see something mustering here for Amaphantasy that we can have a little bit more hope for the 2% that the voters over at event.brawlstars.com for them to take this one. I'm sure now they would like that twist of fortune. Good touch from Philip. Damage gear coming into play as well. Don't juke around this flying pickaxe and doing pretty well at doing so, but the mama's hug there. Star power for now. He will cause damage to Philip and he's forced back. It's now three versus one and it could really quite easily be a goal here. Garrett tries to find the needle there, but couldn't quite manage it. So a bit of a save. I think Zeta probably could have scored it from that position, to be completely honest. Yeah, maybe if he found one of his teammates instead of trying to find that open and could have gone there. Yeah. Super build from Naui as well. Not going to have the hype heals coming through. Need to beg and be placed, and I think that's a bit of a waste. It's not really going to bring that much fortune back to them in terms of control. Just going to get this round side a little bit, gets the turret down, so I suppose it wasn't too bad. But Zeta still, I'd say, in a little bit of control. Seems a little bit even out, but that's a slow from Saiman. Not really going to do too much other than get him and his teammate killed. Bit of clear up though from Garo. Phillips hanging on, but low HP will seal him off. Gary now just trying to think about going to the right, maybe. Healing station in a fantastic spot there for now. It's got to be said, as now Zeta can just heal themselves up to stay in position. Most importantly, Gary though, over the he takes the pirouette, will stay in the mix. But the swift takedown of Mao. Meow. Oh, oh, the super pass bridge the same as well. Oh, oh my word! What footwork from Alan Fantasy! It's uh, the turnaround's beautiful from AOF there. Lovely stuff from them. Great pick out of the pass. Great, great plays. And Jiro was even there to cover it as well, but he couldn't get in the goal phase, goal mouth in time. Zeta Division now need to make something happen, but they're just feeding Philip all day long here. Surely going to be close to another Bruce Bear soon. And uh, getting the shots off. Here's the spin as well from Jiro. Only got one super, uh, one gadget left though, I believe, and could be a bit of an issue going for it now though. There's the slow one to Stell as well. Just the Crow remains and it's a 3v1. They've got to make this play happen because this might be their only chance. Henshin, they're doing it nicely as well. Another healing station goes down for Zeta, but we saw, to be fair, the fun takes to take care of it. Well, last time, will they do the same this time? Big jumping from Sane will secure that takedown of the healing station as well. It's now a three versus one. Oh. Stella's still in position. What was that? Why did they put the ball there? Some miscommunication, a terrible moment for Zeta. And 10 seconds now, it's all that remains between them and a the goal. Will they be able to force this one through? Another fumble! But they should have enough time here to be able to secure it, but that did not look clean, Trav. Well, I was a little bit worried there, I will say. They did not Me too! Ever. Unbreakable walls will remain, though, and they need to be cautious. Bruce Bear's there. Not going to play, so he's getting backed up so, so heavily, but two supers available from either side at the moment. Super from Meow just pushing Ash back here, claiming some control of these walls, but a jump coming in from the same should get rid of him. Bear pushed back Jiro so, so far, but Philip surely got to go down. Super from now, he plays calmly over the left-hand side. They're going to play it slow as they're not in control of the moment. Oh! Oh! Spears about to take down as well. Same should be able to slow this. Has he got a gadget? Can't quite see. No. This could be disastrous. Jump away. I like the thought. Meow pushed it to the left for safety, but actually that entire moment has been deflated. And now Bruce Bear coming out for Philip. And a big moment in time. Stella Super as well. Can he get the pass off? He finds save up. What a clutch. The ending station gets the take down. So back and forth. There is still time for Zeta. It passed through to, to Garu. Can he find the gap? The stun. The save. And ever Fantasia safe! Zeta all over the place. Pass it back. He's got his super. I don't know why he passed it in the first place to the right anyway. But so many fumbles of goals in that match from Zeta Division. Wonderful defenses from AOF. I will say that Crow jump at overtime back to the goal mouth was absolutely flawless. Surviving on 16 HP. Saved the game. But still, this is so, so sketched from both teams. Yeah, that, that's the thing, isn't it? It's not necessarily like, you know, one side is making mistakes. It's definitely errors on both. But I feel like Amazon Fantasy might be able to claw a set here. The way that they are playing is a little bit more sure of themselves. Decision making is better than we saw in Gem Grab. That's to be said for sure. We'll pass through to Naui. Cell goes on the aggressive. Can't quite find the shots into Garou now. Starting to connect, though. Potential pass moment, but Garou intercepts. Very nice step from Zeta, and the pass... Ooh, wasn't quite there, but now he might have been away with that if it were. 
Yeah, Phillips still in a good position. Bear does go down, jump from the spawn from same there. Now he turns and tries to get the scrap sucker on, but that should be his demise, and it is. Jira looking for the trade, can't quite find it. Meow's got his super, so he should be able to defend this one quite nicely, but Robotic Rat's coming down and instantly being eradicated with only one ammo bar is not the best from Stealth. Big take down on the left hand side from Meow. Continuing forward, cycling beautifully as Gary comes over with a flying hook. Not done yet. Protective pirouette should secure it. Same jumps up, finds the pickaxe on the way down. Ooh. Oh my word! And somehow, some way, he even secures it. Two versus two now. But I feel like Emma Fantasy should be able to slow the pace enough to get this ball out of harm's way. Yeah, Meow needs another super in a position like this. That could be dangerous for AOF, but doesn't get it so far. And Jira on the back foot quite heavily. Flying hook there, and he's got to be close to super. You know he is when he's making that kind of play. Not going to use that chill pill to get the heals back, and a Pam super does come down to assist Jiro in the back spawn. He might have been hit by that crow shot, but he's just going to out heal it with uh, with that Pam super. Bear's going to do nothing other than give Philip a little bit of control, but Jiro already under the super in hand. No gadgets, bear in mind, but a pass up and a little play might be the way to go here. Big aggressive plays from Gary. He's still all over this game, but the thing for me that's kind of a bit worrying is the fact that Satan have comp. They have comp here, but they don't look as if they do. Now he's in a world of hurt. Goes down to the potential goal scoring opportunity here. Amazonia playing a bit safe, a bit too safe actually for me. But nonetheless, facing out that super from Yao is a great way to go here. They have got time, 25 seconds, and potential overtime here. Now Zeta is starting to recollect, giving some hills along the way, and actually Gary, if he gets this. He's got no flying hooks, so actually wouldn't be able to score from that potential moment here. But I think Amit Fantasy let that slip. Yeah, he's got his super now as well, and this could be dangerous. There it is on Philip. He gets the bear off, doesn't get the stun off either, though. Shots through are going to go straight through that, and he's got another super in hand. He cycled it as well. If Pam can get this ball to him, but it looks like Crow might be trying to make the play. Can he get the ball? What? He grabs it. The left hand side <laughs> open. He makes the play, saves the last game, and wins this one. What a moment! What an incredible play that really was. And it had to happen. They don't really have a great overtime comp and they saw their opportunity, they seized it. And this is what I wanted for Emma Fantasia. I'll be honest, I'm biased towards it because Zeta should be stomping this. Like the Crow pick against what same is up against here. It's a really tough one to go up against, but they are managing to make those opportunities count. That's what's being remembered. Zeta have got to respond now, or they might find themselves, you know, having that set be closed a little bit closer. Yeah, there's the super coming from Jira, but Stell's outpacing him. He's got that slowdown on him from Same, and the super wasn't even enough to catch up with the raged up Ash. Plus, it's the left hand side now using the super, but Phillips open may be able to find this opening. Bruce Bear thrown down. He's got the stun on it as well, but the stun misses. Can he grab the ball? He can't. And Ammo Fantasy's right ahead again. Oh, <laughs> Philip is trying to you know, use the pin there to maybe a sense of authority, but Meow will turn that idea down. Still coming in with some shots, but thinks better of it now. Healing station goes down for Nowy. This is better from Zeta. They've got to respond, of course. There's one minute 30 on the clock to be able to do so. Big taps from Nowy. The same, but healing up now. Protective pirouette value again from Nowy. And from Gary, and the rats got instantly taken care of. They can surely try to walk this, but they're not doing it. They're so afraid of that Bruce Bear and the stun. And then bringing the ball back. Same comes in. Great amount of aggression. And as quickly as that, Sata are back in the sport. Yeah, still got a minute to go, though. They need to hold on on the side of AOF here, but great aggression from Philip. Even cleans up Meow as well. Jiro over the left-hand side, hit by a crow shot. There's an opening here, and they might be taking it. The shot's through the slow. Can he get the ball in? The shot to the left, and he <laughs> finds it. AOF take the set and are bringing it back. MVP same. I, I'm just saying it, how it is in that matchup. I said going into that draft, and I stand by it, that Crow into Pam is a nightmare for the Crow player. It is just not going to go your way time and time again. But if you're playing Crow like that, I stand corrected. It was a great pick from Mount Fantasy, and it paid off. It wasn't too little too late. And now they've got a chance. They can turn this around. And if any set is to go by in order to think that in their heads, it's that one. 
I mean, that is dangerous from AOF. That was a beautiful set. Some of the plays they made, some of the defenses they had were so good. And here's that one play that we just, you, you can't not talk about it. The jump forward, that shouldn't have even been an opening in the first place. I don't know how he was allowed through there by Zeta. Wonderful play, but the opening shouldn't have even been there. Philip here as well. Bruce Bear, stun's going to be missed, but it's enough to open it up, open the goal up for the, uh, for the, for the ball to go in. And just some all-round great plays from AOF. And I don't think we're even going to see a highlight from Zeta Vision because they didn't make any good plays. <laughs> brutal but true. Brutal but true. Definitely a set which Zeta would prefer to forget. And look at those stats. My word. Gary Meow absolutely popping off there for Zeta. But to what avail? You know, that's the thing. They had the comp. They just didn't make use of the opportunities which they had uh, many a time. I'm sure we're all going to need to look back to say for absolutely certain because it was a pretty chaotic set. I cannot lie. But the fact that Emma Fantasia were able to go forwards with so little to show for things and come back with the results says to me that they were not necessarily focused on securing the takedowns and that kind of thing. They were just simply playing the objective. And that's where it matters. That's where it counts. That's what gets you wins in the long run. Yeah, I mean, if you're not playing the objective, you're not going to be winning games. And playing the objective is exactly what AOF did in that one. You might have had so many kills against them, and one player had pretty much the kills of the entire team of AOF. Uh, but if you're not playing the objective, it's going to go that way, and it's more of the same here in Heist. If you're getting kills, you're getting damage on the opponents. It doesn't matter in the slightest amount in comparison to getting the Heist damage. Well, here is where, for me, Zeta should tie this up. They've got to take some learnings from that last set and know that they cannot afford to let this go to a fifth and final set. They've got to look back to their previous monthly finals where they lost to SK at this very moment in time in this quarterfinal stages. And remember that this cannot be the reflection of our team having had those consecutive monthly final wins in February and March. Meg coming in for Amber Fantasy. I like that. Colette, I like that. Eve is great here, but I don't know whether it's first pick worthy. Zeta, however, do tend to sort of gravitate towards it, make it work more often than not. Nexus obviously had some nerfs as well, bringing her into a much more balanced place, but I still think this is a place where she can absolutely thrive. Lola coming in for Zeta. What are you thought so far and how the draft is shaping up to be, Trev? I kind of like Zeta Division's comp so far. You know, obviously Eve's going to be able to just float over some of this water. We've got the Ego coming in from Lola. Going to be great against both the Meg and the Colette. And then Bell's coming in as well. Going to outrange everybody on the MO Fantasy side even more. What they've got so far is very, very good, especially with Brock off the uh, off the menu and Bonnie as well, Crow. We don't want to have seen any Crow, obviously, from uh, from from AOF. So I'm surprised to see they banned it, but obviously with Zeta with the first pick, it's kind of smart. We'll see what they're going to bring in now. And they're going to go with the Carl. I think that's a good pick, good uh, response to what Zeta Vision brought in. I do quite like the combo on both sides. Of course, having the Bell and the Lola combined for Zeta was smart because ultimately, Bell's a great counter to Lola. You can just get so much value ricocheting your shots between the Lola and the Ego. I, I feel like I actually prefer the Amma Fantasy comp here, but it comes down to how it's played. That's what we've seen uh, a bit of issues in the previous sense of Amma Fantasy before that Brawl Ball set. And the draft was not quite right in gem grab, but this I feel is a much better grasp on things. So I think they've actually given themselves the best chance so far as, as gaining another set, taking this fifth and final. But Zeta cannot afford that. Let's see, flying hooking in very early from same, goes straight into a bell shot. Consecutive once from Geru, and we know how dangerous Geru is on this bell pick. We've seen it before. Will we see it again? And so far, he's proving that to be the case. Yeah, tell me about it. He's absolutely tapped. I think he's at maybe, you know, 75% of his shots so far. A little mine going down there as well. Jump out from now. He does get that little uh, pet deal with quite quick by saving, but still pushing this left-hand side so, so well, and Meow not able to deal with it so far. Philip looking for a super, and should be some guaranteed damage on the safe with the Colette on the side. Good positioning power here for Amaphantasi. Big shots, though, capping into Stell. A bit of a chance to alleviate the situation here from Sane, but he will go down to Naui. But if they can just hold this mid still, it'll go a long, long way for Amaphantasi to be able to have a three-man push coming in. As now the quadruplets coming in. As that new gear for Eve has pulled her a little bit further forward into the meta. Same as in a tough spot here. Can't really do much. She's surviving on. But yes, yeah, she continues to do so. He will with that pickup from Stell. This is great. Emma Fantasia just buying themselves some time and keeping Zayn to a bait. 
Yeah, good trade from Naui, though. Only 14% damage was dealt on their aggressive push as well, so it's not that much. One push from Zeta, a few shots from Bell at range is going to be able to do it. And he's hitting him in the bush. Lovely stuff from Naui and Jiro to pick him out there. Great aggression coming through now as well. The swipe's missed by Stell and still a healthy Meow on his face. Super comes in from Colette, though, and he does deal that, uh, pick that up quite quickly, deal with that aggression. And they just seem to be keeping in control so well. It's only a 14% lead, but the trades are there. And the Fantasia are very fixated on ensuring that if someone goes down, we've got to get that trade. We've got to make it even. The ball that Zeta cannot push back against it. I love it. 72% damage, but not a single shred of damage from Zeta. They are banking on this final big push to be able to turn the tides, and that can be a risky one. Philip going with more damage here. Coalition tools 50%. Stell is on the save. Zeta have got to start to do something about this situation. 30 seconds remain. Now he's too low to really help too much. It's now or never. 20 seconds trap. I mean, it's, it, it literally is now and ever, and it seems like they're going to go with never because they're not even trying to get damage now when they've got a couple of the members down. It's got to be a meow defense. Don't go back. Stay up. You need to just trust your teammate that he's going to get it because you're getting no damage yourselves, and that's going to be the game wrapped up. They can't do anything about it. They've accepted defeat, and I'm all fantasy bringing it closer and closer to this reverse sweep. My goodness me. And it's getting a little bit scary for the 98% that voted for Zeta Division over at event.brawlstyles.com. There is now bling, by the way, available there to be obtained and earned if you get your predictions on point. So I think that's a pretty strong incentive to look over there. Those two percent might be getting a little bit of a payday. There's it is the first tier on the pass. Same coming with another big flying hook. Gary's not getting as fortunate with these taps anymore as it could be a little bit of an insight to the mental here for Zeta. They are struggling a little bit now, getting the pick up. Now he's pushing forwards, getting still out of the mech is a very good start, actually. Look at that. I thought they were in trouble, but actually they're making me eat my words. Yeah, good aggression from Sane. Did go back, and now he needs to try and defend this, but now they're just leaving Jiro alone. Eventually, Meow's going to get that with a little help from now. He's just pushing him down to that bottom side. Philip needs to take a shot at this thing here and does get the Parasite off the map. Doesn't get hit by any of those follow-up shots from Naui, though, and does stay alive. 8% dealt by Ammo Fantasy, but this time, this is the best we've seen Zeta, uh, best position we've seen Zeta in. Finds the game much more mid control because that is where the battle is won and lost a lot of the time here over on Kaboom Canyon. As we saw, Abba Fantasy really spent the majority of that first game here. The same comes in. He is marked up, so he can't go overly aggressive. What a tap there from Naui! Not an easy one to hit at all, but it deflated so much potential problems over the small side and that tap from Gero finding the connection onto Philip. Same as going in alone here. I don't think that is the play. Two taps, a mark, and now the pet's coming in as well. And Emma Fantasia have got to go back to their winning ways. They're starting to struggle, and they're losing that mid-control is really where they've got to start to gain a bit more composure. Yeah, Juro can't find the hit when it matters, and Philip does get him. It should have been an easy kill for the Bell, but couldn't find the connections. This time, now he's going to have to cover for him whilst he tries and gets back up. They are ahead by 2%, but now he's uh, going to go down over the, I mean, Meow's going to go down over the left-hand side. Now he's getting pushed back by this mech now. Survivor's on 200, but the mech's just going to be able to heal up. And eventually, Juro's getting some work done, but Stell aggressing should be taken down. And this is a position that should be as Ace Division will. We'll see if they can hold on for these 35 seconds. It should be, but the fact that you've even said that now I've lost Jinxed it, because <laughs> I, I don't know. The way that they're playing at the moment, I like to hope so, but they've been very uncommitted with a lot of their ideas. They're closing in now, but you know, are they getting the objective? Are they getting takedowns? I'm a fantasy I'll su survive on. No fight hope the same. That could be an error of judgment. Take the pure trying to come in to repeat these shots there from Naui, and he will go down. This is surely going to be a Zeta win here. That's surely with that takedown as well. Yeah, they're going to get the damage that they need and move on to match point. But it just does not look comfortable. Oh, this is this is kind of scary to watch, to be fair. As you say, it's not comfortable at <laughs> all. I kind of felt like Ammo Fantasy should have won that one as well. I mean, they didn't get anywhere near as much damage as Zeta Division did, but they seem to be winning a decent amount of the matchups. They just didn't get the positioning required like they did in that first set. And Zeta Division this time were managing to control that mid just that little bit more. And as you say, it's all about these trades. If they can get the trades, they keep the mid. Yeah, it's not quite connecting there. Meow, though. Getting pretty close to getting that ego toolbox to try to defend things, but it's now he gets the first sign of blood in the mid. Big taps onto Philip, he goes down instantaneously. Still coming in with some nice taps onto Naui though. And trying to gain that, or regain that mech. And the Fantasy have definitely 
in slowing down the pace a little bit and saves are really valuing that mid much more so now that range of now he able to get the first sign of damage onto the safe and the same is one tap away as well this is much better and say to get a lot more damage to add to the mix now yeah, it's looking a lot better for Zeta as well. Jiro choosing not to heal up and just choosing to go for some shots. Going to place that nest egg as well. So if the flying hook comes through that portion, he's going to be slowed and they should be able to deal with him. But Stell's the one aggressing it and actually gets marked up as well. Not really going to be useful after he comes out of the mech, but once he's out of the mech, he's not that much of an issue anyway. It goes down for Naui. How about a lot? Stell avoided that as well. It's creeping forwards. Why is the ego too much on Naui for me? Or on, rather on some Yao, but... I think that might have been better served elsewhere because the Eagles is going to tank a lot of those, sh those shots. The same goes in now, gets the pickup, and now surely able to survive a little bit. Damage gear rolling in still, but the pinch is going to be there for Zeta. This is a good opening chance. As quickly as that, it could be gone. Stealth's trying to buy his time. He's got to just do what he can. Try to secure something here as the teammates come back in. It's not a bad attempt either. He survives on. He's marked up, but now I'm a Fantasia all together again. I was going to say, it's all, it should all be down to the Colette Supers, but he chooses to go in and actually dies whilst doing it. They need those on safe to get the damage, but Stell's still here. Same going to use that super fold, but Jiro, shot in a super, gets him down. Stell almost out of mech as well. 35 seconds on the clock. They are still 20% down. It's not that much to come back from, but with Zeta slowly working the way back up the map, they don't have any control anymore. Stell is weak. He will survive on a bit. Has to shield the hand, but would much prefer to be, be in mech. He's not too far away, I don't think. So meanwhile, on the right-hand side, clustering is going to be a bad news thing for same as yet. That ricochet shot will not hold back at all. It looks to me like it's going to be Zeta, which will bring it back. But it wasn't the most comfortable of victories. Ever been taken a little bit short in this set. And it shows big damage now. We'll secure it. Zeta's division are safe, at least for now as they make their way through to the semi-finals. I mean, you've got to give it to our Fantasy, to be fair, there as well. If anything, they looked better in those last two sets, in my opinion. Uh, you know, Brawl Ball, they played so, so well, even with what we, you know, classed as a bit of a... a bit of a worse comp in comparison to the Zeta comp. The second one, uh, this, this last one, they looked very, very good in that as well, but couldn't quite bring home the wins, didn't get the damage required, and Zeta Vision are going to finish it out and move on to those semi-finals. Yeah, it was something that I would like to have seen resolved in the fifth and final set, actually. But I think you're right. I think I'm a fantasy now. We'll come away thinking, Joe, what well, actually, we had the most memorable moments of that set. And that really does count for something. The skill in that brawl set was so enjoyable to watch. And certainly, player of the day moments left, right, and center for Amphantasy. And I think a lot of the teams watching that will maybe be questioning the strength of Zeta coming into this month. You know, I, I think that in previous months, they were really the top dog of this region. Navi now, last month coming in, or a month prior to that rather, coming in and showing that actually it's anyone's for the taking. I think this semi finals matchup might not be as clean as we were thinking. I put them down for the grand finals over at event.brawlstars.com. I don't know now whether I feel the same way. The stats, however, do look very good. It's just, they look a bit shaky, Trav. Yeah, they do look just that little bit shaky, I will say. You know, I'm just going to put it out there. They've got the easier half of the bracket, undoubtedly. So, you know, they, they might still be able to make it to the finals, even if they are looking shaky. That bottom portion of the bracket is looking so much more stacked than the top. I'll put it out there. I know you love me and my brutal opinions, but that is just fact. They are even, <laughs> even looking a bit shaky. They might still make it to the finals if they do manage, if they, if they don't bump it up that little bit more. Well, there was a great deal of opportunity because they, they, they had stats that were fantastic throughout every set, my I add as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing who really shone the most. But everyone for me did 17 takedowns for Naui though in that game. I mean, that is phenomenal for me. DPS, more on the side of Meow, but everyone very close together. I think when you look at that, you know, sort of last set play out, it did need to be Zeta that were the ones to be able to secure it in the end. That first game going the way of Fantasy though, did keep me on my toes. The MVP, as voted over at event, .com, will be Meow. And I think very deserving of it. I think so too. He played very, very well. And to be honest, every player we're looking at here, all six played very, very well throughout this one. But clearly, Meow just caught the audience's eye that little bit more. And I'm sure the 98% of you who voted for Zeta Division will be very, very pleased that they did manage to win and not get reverse swept there.
Yeah, 98% of people getting bling as well, by I tell you, and that's a great reward to be able to add to that track. Make sure that you head over there, place your predictions for the next match, or if you're already, like me, getting there early with everything, locking it down, giving yourselves those best opportunities to get that all-exclusive BSC, uh, I think it's a pin this month as well. Um, make sure you head over there, and we'll do our best to help you guys out with your predictions. But I think so far, we're so good, right? I think everyone went with Zeta for that first match. So if you're following us, you're doing well. I'm fortunate for the two percent, but you're doing good if you vote Zeta. Yeah, I mean, see, I think you were maybe not to call people stupid, but you'd have been stupid not to vote for Zeta in that one. I think even if yeah. even if AOF came out on top, I'd still have called you stupid not to vote for Zeta for the first one. But getting into this next matchup, Humble versus One Trick Ponies, Tomzy Cyclone and Luki versus Gas Filippo and Lars. Who you got coming out on top of this one, Huck? Well, this is where we separate, you know, this is the, the first match of the day, which is going to determine who gets the lead here. I think it might be you guys, but I'll explain as we go. Humble, of course, Tom Z, Cyclone, and Lukey. You may be a bit confused, but this is the former Dogster Lobster roster. They were signed up by Humble, and they've been doing very, very good ever since then. It does feel like they've got that kind of Orc buff on their favor here, getting some great results, especially over at the uh, Step Dragon Pro Series in the Cup stages. Humble getting two uh, Grand Final wins, actually. And one of them actually was against this very team. And that might be enough to give them the edge. They have to prove themselves on the scoreboards to be able to do so. Great qualifying stages as well. They're looking very, very good. Every now and again, bringing in KC as well for some of those cup qualifiers. But nonetheless, a very aggressive team. Been very consistent as well for the most part. Last year wasn't quite this. Uh, last year wasn't quite that year. This year, it could well be. Yeah, I know. I agree. I think they have what it takes to get to the LCQ, to get to Worlds this year, and they're looking very, very good. Gas, Filippo, and Lars looking good as well. I'd say I don't think they look as good as Humble are at the moment, but they must have done something to catch your eye because I believe you did predict one trip ponies over Humble. I will say they're a very, very good team. They've got such recognizable names. Lars specifically has been in Brawl Stars Esports for so, so long, and he'll be hungry for, for some good results. So here's my thought process. Uh, in the qualifiers, they looked very, very strong. I'm a bit concerned because it has been a while for them. You know, this is like their first real appearance this year of coming back into the BSC. And it, it didn't quite end in the way that Lars would have liked to last year. And Lars has always been like the kind of front man of this squad. It's obviously a very different roster today, but nonetheless, I just have a feeling, you know, there's a lot of people rooting for this team, a great fan following, and that could well be enough. I feel like, you know, going through those qualifying stages, making their way here, actually, it feels to me like when Lars is not with an organization is when actually that squad do and gain the best results. So they kind of seem to struggle a bit with that pressure. And this could be one of those days where they haven't really got the most amount of pressure on their shoulders. Um, you know, they're not necessarily up against you know, a Zeta or a Reply Totem. I think it's a relatively even matchup on paper. So anyone here could come out on top of me. Yeah, and I mean, it is going to be either team's big break. One trip enemies desperately need points. Humble, they're still in a decent spot, but they also need points to get further up those leaderboards. You're never safe in the Brawl Stars Championship, especially in EMEA as well. So both of these teams massively need this win. One trip ponies to start their journey through the leaderboards and Humble to start rising up it. Yeah, and there's a, a big sort of mismatch when it comes to the rosters here as well. So Ziaku played a lot with Dogster Lobster back in the day, and which is this you know, former squad here. Um, I think as well, Cyclone played a lot with Lars as well. So they're going to have a bit of an insight when it comes to the mind games, when it comes to the drafts, where people feel most comfortable when it comes to the brawler picks as well here. So it's very, very even here. I feel like obviously those early outset moments, getting that first set gives you a lot of momentum. And especially now that we've got the best of fives in the quarterfinal stages, it opens things up quite considerably here for time to adapt, time to look back. And of course, we've had a lot of balance changes still. We haven't really seen necessarily a lot of them come into the, the forefront in the BSC because so much has changed over the months now. So if you are just joining the stream, welcome back first and foremost and get yourselves over to event.royalstars.com straight away where 76% of you are feeling like Humble have the edge. 24% still not too shoddy there for one trick ponies as we go into our first set for this series. Shooting star is the map, bounty is the mode. I say it, the, the, the predictions are better than the last and they came a 3-1. So, you know, even if you're part of the 26%, don't count yourselves out just yet. We're into shooting star. RT going to be the first pick. We'll get into the bands in just a second. But RT, I like it. You know, you're going to be able to defend when you need to defend with, when dropping your legs and getting that big damage down or keeping your long range form, which is also very, very good. But personally, 
I like Nenny as a first pick, that little bit better. Bands of Bonnie, uh, Gene. This is a very fast draft. Sprout coming in as the second pick from One Trick Ponies. Last band from Humble is going to be Meg. Then we got Grom, Max, and Tick on the other sides. What do you make of this draft so far? It's definitely bold, but I think that the bands kind of warrant that Sprout pick where it is. It's uh, one that still has a lot of ability to be countered. If Humble are bold enough, and they have proved to be bold enough in the past to go with like Mortis ideas here, but that third and final pick to more, uh, to one trick ponies still going to be very much there to be able to counter those ideas. Gus playing it safe in the mid, very nice for me, and also that shield going over to anyone of their choosing can put a lot of pressure. Gas or whoever is playing that nanny pick on the side of one trick ponies and the card is a great thing to hand over a gas shield too, isn't it? Really, the flying hook. Um, so far, I actually prefer the humble comp big time, but this third pick from one trick ponies might be something to be able to blend this whole thing together. Yeah, we'll see what they do choose to go for. I don't mind the one trick ponies comp whatsoever so far. Obviously, humble with this aggressive Carl flying hook in, you can pretty much clean up the sprout instantly if he steps the tiniest amount out of position. So it's a great thing to have for them, but they're going to go with the Piper. And honestly, this is such, this is a comp when you think shooting star, this is a comp that you think of. And I kind of do like what one trip ponies have brought to the table, but if they step the slightest amount out of line, they're going to be punished hard. I mean, for me, I never need an excuse to play Piper here, but I do feel like it could be troublesome, actually. And Carl is going to be able to go in super aggressive on it. I just hope that those shots do land. Historically, one trick ponies have been good with the Piper. It's normally Lars on it, but it could be anyone, to be fair, today. But I think that the Humble Cup is just a safer pair of hands, you know? Able to push forwards, have its moments of aggression, play the game at closer quarters. I believe it's going to get those early abilities to jump away from the situation for sure Pomsey 4 HP but Cyclone did pick some early taps here let's see who's the early advantage going in yeah well obviously that blue star goes the way of the Carl you kind of expect that to be the way that it is but on the lanes so far it seems like Gas and uh, Filippo are dominating Lars got his wall now as well going to place over the left hand side he's going to rotate over there as well which is a smart decision but Humboldt just backing up so so far and they, again they're going to get to a point where they just can't back up anymore you have a homemade recipe there and Luke is surely going to go down he does just there but I don't mind it Humble need to be in the aggressive position they want to be going aggressive and not playing defensive coming in Going back around, fires Luki, and he is low, but it's the support network there from Cyclone. That seems to be for the most part, but nonetheless, Luki will go down. Oh, Cyclone. Oh, I want a juke. He survives on, but Felipe will seal it. Very, very back and forth, but watch your ponies for me. So far, just seems to be tying up the loose ends more often than not. There goes the super, though. Not going to hit that it's set from break up some of Lars' walls. Not sure what Gas was trying to achieve there. Just breaking up Sprout's walls is not a good thing to do. And we've still got a, a flying hook left for Cyclone. He's got one left, and that's going to be surely reserved for those closing seconds. Filippo uses another homemade recipe there. No connections from it. It did go towards Tomzi instead of Luki, which was his prime target. Obviously, this wall's going to do a lot, but he's still got his flying hook. He can get across if he sees the opportunity. Picked out there from Felipe onto Luki just to ensure that he stays back. But I like the aggression coming in here from Humble. Felipe's got the ability to jump away here, but it's the left hand side where Cyclone is going in and does secure the takedown. Blue Stars, though, still with one trick ponies here. Huge gadget onto Cyclone. Will allow then Lars to push forwards, but he actually breaks his own wall. And the shield comes in. Lars is going down, and it was his own real fault there. The turnaround might be there, but the Blue Stars still with one trick ponies, and they get a kill for good measure onto Tomzy to secure it towards the end. I don't know how that happened. I was watching the left and something happened over the right, but I saw the stars change <laughs> and it was in favor of one trick ponies. Humble just not off to the best of starts. It seemed like Cyclone was doing so, so much, but his teammates weren't finding the same results. Early flying hook from there from Cyclone. Gets the blue star, safe and sound, but he did take a lot of shots last game by doing so and slightly less this time round. Keeps one trick ponies more to the back lines now. To try to defend this. A big tap from Felipe on the left, and Tomzy so keeps him low. It's this early start with both teams just looking to get that utility. Obviously, Felipe does need to have super to hand more so than not, as Lars does also, because Cyclone's the threat. And so, Ooh. oh my word, what a flying hook to dodge the gadget there from Felipe. Oh my word. Now the people coming in, much to the kill. Tomzy tanks it, but not out of the woods yet. Another big tap from Felipe as well, and everyone's still struggling to humble. 
couldn't get the gadget off in time either, and I don't think it would have killed Filippo anyway, but Cyclone going up the map, trying to get something to happen, doesn't want to go alone though, needs to wait for his teammates, and they need three stars to bring it back, Lars is the obvious option to be able to get him down here, as they get the flying hook and super onto him, he's going to be dead, but Filippo also has three stars over his as well, so they can pick a, they can pick the correct one, or they can just go for gas and try open something up, Luki over aggressing yet again, and you've got a question, like, what are they going to do? They're so far behind and they've got to push into all this range. It's really bad timing on their part. This really should have been the strategy in the first game to learn from going into the second. Keep coming in, we'll get double value actually and the return to center from Gas was timed perfectly. Luki now is in a bit of a pot spot. He does have the shield to hand, but look at that. He's forced it out and that would have been better served going over to Cyclone later on in the game. Another return to center. Gas is on fire on this right hand side lane. It really is wonderful stuff, and Luki not able to get so much done. It seems he's over aggressing that a little bit too much. Cyclone's going to go in. Wall says no, and Lars might even get the kill here as well. Does five oh. over his head. 15 seconds. Does Cyclone even have enough time to get up? Never mind getting the rest of the kills. Another one for Lars as well. Six over his head now, and one trip ponies have destroyed them. Yeah, that wasn't a set win. That was a set annihilation for one trip ponies, who have come out absolutely swinging. I mean, I voted for them over at event.brawlstyles.com, right? So I'm going to be biased throughout. You guys went with Humble. I've got to have my moments to rub it in, right? But it is the first set. It's still early days. But it's going to be a testament now to Humble as to how they recover from that because they didn't really learn from the situation. They just kind of kept throwing their bodies towards it. And you can't do that in a game mode like Bounty. But... It is the first of many to come, or hopefully for Humble sake, many to come, because they are the ones set down already. But they are an aggressive team. You've got to give them that. And more often than not, that is what gets them wins. Here, there's a bit overly so. This was very, very clutch ending here. Blue Star was always on the side of one-trick ponies regardless. But nonetheless, it did get a little bit closer there with Blast in that left-hand side corner. Second game, though, Trav, much more the way of one-trick ponies. Very, very much in their favor, I felt personally. Yeah, and you know, I, I can get behind you rubbing this this win in. You know, it might only be the first set, <laughs> but as far as I'm concerned, that was dreadful from Humble and thoroughly deserved win for One Trip Ponies there. My predictions, uh, for the sake of my predictions, if Humble are performing like this, I don't even want to get it right. They don't deserve to move forward. They need to play better, and in my eyes, Cyclone played really well. He, there wasn't a lot he did wrong, but his teammates didn't have anything at all. You see he got three kills, but across the board for one trip ponies, four, four, and four in comparison to absolute zeros for Tomzi and Luki. And to be honest, I don't know if they're just getting outranged or just losing composure. Look at the stats. I mean, like everyone for one trip ponies just did their thing very much even across the board. Two donuts for Humble. Cyclone did what he could with the more aggressive of the brawlers, but... I mean, one trick ponies really did pull their weight. We are hearing as well that Lars is going to be subbing out for Ziaku. And I think it's a great time to do that, you know, give everyone their moment in the monthly finals. They had a great start. They can afford it's, it's a little absolutely bit. Absolutely not a great time to do that. <laughs> no? Destroyed you them. Why are they making a substitution? I mean, it's, it's, it's early days for them in the monthly finals. I think it's a good time to kind of trial out who's working in terms of the Ross. If they fall back a set, they've got a bit of time to be able to recoup it. And they've shown in that first set that they've got a real ability to shut down Humble's ideas. And the question for me really is whether it comes down to the game mode, the draft, the circumstances, all the players. And I guess we'll find out. Well, we've got Crow as the first pick for the side of One Trick Ponies. They're going to go with the Max, Shelly, and Stu bands. Gus, Ash, and Max bands on the other side from uh, Humble. We'll see what they do choose to draft first. But so far, the Crow is very, very good. We've seen it perform it amazingly today. Obviously, it was in Brawl Ball, completely different map, completely different mode. Ruff's going to be a return pick from Humble. Also an amazing pick. Yeah, safe and secure so far. We are seeing a great amount of variety when it comes to the brawlers being banned, which I think reflects a lot of how the meta is shaping up to be so far. Much more of a balanced place, especially since we had a lot of the heavy hitters really knocked down a size. Shelly still needs to be knocked down a size, Supercell, if you're listening, but nonetheless, we're getting into a, a place where there's so much variety. B going to come in for the first time today, I think it's fair to say, and I do love that finally. I was literally just thinking it as it dropped off too much, but now, yeah. That's uh, just great to see for me. A lot of mid-choice, though, still available. I think Wondering Pony's probably going to stay with the Crow, but maybe they could be rethinking things just a little bit. I'm not too sure. But they need, they need some side lane aggression on the side of Wondering Ponies. Stu Band, by their own hand here, would have been my personal go-to. So, 
Carl going to come in for them. It was Humble that really did kind of have some flair with that in the first set. This time round, they're going to prove to themselves. And Ems, I always think of Ems here, but simply because I, my mind goes back to consistently watching how SCMN handled things in the uh, Season 2 of the Snapdragon Pro Series. And it really did cut the muscle to the Crystal Arcade. And now with the indestructible walls, she's even harder to shake. Yeah, but I mean, you still can break the sides and Ruffs is great at doing just that. So I do, true, I, true. I'm a little bit concerned for M's. Carl, however, on the other side, very, very good pick. Sandy, they're going to go with. I kind of like it. Obviously, you're going to be able to stun out Carl. But once those three stuns are gone, Oh, the pain uh, against both, you know, Carl the Crow who can slow you down. It's not going to be looking too good. But if you can cycle those sandstorms, get control, get it again and again and again, then it's going to be a really, really good pick. That is one of those really niche ideas now that comes into play with like Hard Rock Mine and Crystal Arcade. But it does really prove worthy of results here. It's kind of been forgotten a little bit about. It's not quite the same as it was back in the day with the kind of Gene Max Sandy comps. But it does really cause a problem here. I thought it could be that all potentially we see need to take a similar kind of role. But the unpredictability of which that sandstorm provides means that you've really got to take it seriously and just play it safe. This double push on the left hand side here. And exactly who will go down. Cyclone survives on, but just enough for Bolivia to get the kill here. And now it potentially could be turned to Luki. Two gems sit in the mid. They should be going into the hands of one trick ponies now. Amplified shots won't connect from Luki either, so. Bit of a saving grace as we're all tied up here. Yeah, Cyclone with this power up though, gonna be able to three shot gas, I believe it is, if he connects all those shots. So definitely a little bit of something that gas has to be cautious about. And the same with Luke, obviously be able to two tap Felipe if he gets the first and follows up with that charged shot, but did get a little bit of a heal in there. And Tom's just keeping control of this because Jakub doesn't want to feed super. He's gonna get one of his own, the slow comes through, and even with that, Tom's can't aggress. <laughs> Cyclone survives on there with 10 HP. That's everyone on the right-hand side there, Felipe and Zeka going in for Tomzy. Now thinking better of it and trying to evade these shots from Luke into mid. I don't know where that one was going, but I guess he wasn't too sure that someone might be lurking in the bush. Yeah, that's surviving just an 80 HP. As Zeka clears to the right-hand side now, a lot of pressure on Luke to hold into these gems in the mid. Yeah, it's got to be Luke really who's going to do anything here, you know. Needs to connect a couple of shots on Filippo, shake one trick ponies up a bit, or it's, this could be going quite bad. We need a break from Cyclone here as well. Needs to get rid of these walls and just follow with a few shots on Ziyaku. I don't know why he's not just throwing the super out and breaking the side. There it is now, eventually getting rid of it. He, he actually goes down. He was behind a wall and still Ziyaku found the angle. Beautiful stuff, honestly, and I love the way that Felipe is utilizing the speed of the crow pick to really evade these shots from Luki, who, like you rightly say, has got to start landing shots. Great slowing talks in there from Felipe as well. Keeps Luki at and Gems go into the pocket for one trick ponies. The reset has got to be here, and Luki and Cyclone have got to find this out. And it might be there as well. They've got the slowdown, but here comes Gas. That's a wonderful super out spawn from him. Oh, 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 the shots are coming through. Cyclone finds it. Ah, Look, he's going to provide the gems. Gas surely going to be able to get out of this position. Gets the spin. Perfect time. Picks up all the rest of the gems. And that is 16. All they need to do now is just defend once again. A little shot there from the second. Say good job, mate. You got us out of that hole. Lovely stuff. And it should be safe and sound, but I do not want to speak too soon, but Ziaku, yeah, was in the perfect place for an ambush and doesn't hesitate to cause a problem. One Trick Ponies are starting to run away with this, no pun intended, but they are not going for a gentle drop through the woods today, Trav. They're going for a gallop. That was really nice from MOL say, you know, they just seemed in control the entire time. They struggled until Ems found the Sandy. Just needed a little bit of help from the teammates. Got him quite low, and then he could just push aggressive. And we saw, I believe, one, uh, maybe maybe one or two Sandstorms, and one of them was in a completely useless spot towards the end there. Tomsey really not starting the best, and he's going to die here, surely, maybe. Oh, actually, he gets the stun off. Sweet Dream sends him to sleep and picks up the kill, and that's what Humble need. They need these good starts, and with two of them down, just Felipe remaining, this is perfect. It's much better. We have seen Humble struggle to maintain these kinds of positions of power. Luki now, though, starting to hit. And five shots, they just never quite follow up for me. That's the problem. They're the ones that have to really pack the punch. But it is three gems now to the three of one-trick ponies. But the positioning power, of course, very much more so. Oh, great slow from Felipe. Great synergy between him and Gas. Goes in, gets the takedown. And now pressure back onto Luki. Tomsi trying to alleviate something on this right-hand side here. But he's got a tall ask, a tall order there. As Yaku really just keeping him at bay. 
It's going to be a tough reclaim for Cyclone, but there's the super. That's what they needed in the previous one. Tomzi uses it, and they get some good pushback here as well, but Gas going aggressive. Might be able to get the kill, but it's actually Cyclone who comes out on top of that matchup. Luki got the power up now as well, being provided to him by Cyclone. Holy Lass is down behind that wall as well, and seven gems. This is where Humble need to be. Yeah, Luki is now so dangerous with that additional buff from the roughs. Gasto is still surviving on for the most part. Cyclone now finally says no. And Felipe is in a terrible spot. He will go down. And that's surely going to be a countdown for Humble and the first side of the line. We need to be cautious though. That super comes down. Jaku's going to avoid it. Super available from Jaku, which is very good throughout this sandstorm. He'll be able to scout a lot of it, but Tomzi just keeping it out of max range and keeping him back. Filippo needs a jump. He needs something, but they're not going to get it. Two seconds and one. Humble take the win. And this is the first game they've got on the board. They need another one to even it out. One game for one trip ponies though. And this length massively opens up. I love that interaction on the right-hand side there between Zeke and I think it was Cyclone just keeping their range perfectly at bay. Nothing that one trick opponents could do about that to secure their first game of the day. Yeah, it was. My word. Let's see now. Look about on top. Because it suddenly got a little bit closer together as Humble find their rhythm a bit more. That's going to be scrutinized here. It's now they're going super really aggressive. Throws down the Honey Molasses, gets the takedown, Felipe now our position has got to rethink this. It does have four gems though, so it's a better start for one-trip ponies in terms of actually gems rather than getting the kills. But they have still got one side as well, so it's not the worst thing. You can see Cyclone moving over though, and Jack is just eating all that, gets super off as well, and that's going to be the wall broken, surviving on just a little bit longer, dodging some of these Luki shots, and I feel like he just hasn't been connecting enough of those, especially those 3Ks. Well, I see Gas going here on aggressive, but now with the Sweet Dream stun, he's now in a perilous position. Finally, the pickup is there, but it wasn't as clean as we saw previous to that. Great time up there in terms of the gems. Four to four, five now in favor of Humble. But Luki is still the problem for me. They haven't quite really been able to push their way forwards to really cause a problem for it. Great connection, though, as the shots are starting to get a bit more warmed up, as we saw in the first game. A couple of missed ones, but now causing much more of a problem. Deku is still suppressing so much on his left-hand side, but his health is low. He's got to start to heal up, and he is doing so now, keeping his range perfectly there. But now, Cyclone's found him. Yeah, needed maybe to juke a little bit better there and gets hit hard again. Does have super, though. Get taken down instantly. Super from Tomzi, really nice stuff from him. Available as well. Power up goes to Luki, and now they've got eight gems. Sandstorm down, and a big, big amount of control. Yeah, they're very aggressive. Honey Molasses there. It's going to cause a problem. Second might even pop super just to get rid of it here, but he'd like to try to get some double value for his time. He's struggling so much against Tomzi, and he's got the range advantage. There he is going to do it. I think it's the right play, but is it too little too late? Gas goes in, secures the left-hand side, places the pressure onto Luki, and that was a perfect time to do so. Great tackle from Luki as they fight back. Gas has got to come in and get out of this position, but even if he does, the gems, the countdown, all with Humble. Really nice comeback then from Humble. Thank after that first game, difficult, difficult stuff for them, but they managed to claw it back. Five seconds, and then nowhere to be seen. One trip ponies can't move up, and that is difficult for them. Gas eventually going to use a flying hook, which he should have used way earlier on in the game, just to just to put out there. Uses it in those last closing seconds, but it's not enough. Humble even things out, making it one one. You got to hand it to Humble. You know they start to adapt. In that early outset, Luki wasn't really kind of like landing where he needed to land. And for me, a great reason why we saw that kind of comeback potential for Humble was because he started to absolutely tap it up and cause the problem that you know, bunch of ponies never really resolved that. They never really, you know, at the very beginning, they were utilizing a lot of that crow speed to, to maneuver around it. But they never really put Luki in a tougher spot where they you know, could not get out of. And more often than not, Humble able to recollect themselves and Return the favor. We are all tied up now. I'm pleased to see it. I love close matches, and we always seem to receive them in EMEA. Yeah, I mean, although, you know, I think it was Filippo was picking up the gems on Crow. I'm intrigued to see how much DPS he's going to have. Because honestly, did he even have one super? Because I didn't see him jump anywhere at this point. DPS, 48. Yeah, that's what I thought it was going to be, something like that. Because he really didn't do too much whatsoever. He can pick up the gems all he wants. But if he can't hit the mid, he needs to be pinching. And we didn't see a lot of that either, I don't feel. Well, we said coming in trap that, you know, it was potentially a bad time for a team change. Will we see another on the substitution sides for one-trick ponies going into this next set under... The scoreline, it might build the time to bring back in last, but we shall see. 
Flaring Phoenix up next for Knockout, being of course the game mode. A tough map, I would say, actually, when it comes to Knockout. That mid area and also the ability to get flanked around the left or right hand sides can prove a big problem here. I want to see a Shelly ban every single map today. And I think today should prove no different. There it is on the hard side of Humble. Body and Daryl to add to that. Tick, Gene and Grom are one trick ponies. And again, another instance of having a great variety of bans. No duplicates here. Yeah, nice stuff. RT is going to be the first pick from Humble. I like it. You know, we saw it in that first. It didn't work out for them. They're going to try it again on a bit of a different map. Flaring Phoenix. It is a much, much better pick in this one, I would say, because, you know, th th those closing seconds where you're being pushed in, you can just drop your legs and get so much damage down. And even not, you're able to play at the range as well. So I think it's a very, very smart pick coming out of Humble here. One Tree Ponies are going to have to answer to it. It's a great first pick. It's, it's my go-to pick here. First time round. I like it. Someone is picking Carl for sure. Both sides really favoring that pick. And we have seen Carl rise for a little bit more now since the most recent balance changes. Kind of fell off a little bit now, but finding his place. Barley coming in and Gus. Barley's very much favored here as well, actually, a lot of the time. Could be time for Humble to consider that uh, that Carl now because it'd be quite good against the Barley to eradicate some of that control or bring in some of their own as well. Maybe even a Sprout or something for that kind of advantage. Aggression, I think, is needed, though. You've got to have something to add to the mix. Long range in the mid is one thing, but sometimes having that ability to push forwards on a map like Blaring Phoenix does have a lot. Brock is available. Sprout will come in for that reason. I love that from them. I'd like to see the follow-up, though, as well, to have something more range to add to that RT, but Sprout is going to do a pretty decent matchup now. Gray going to come in. Like that. Like that a lot from Humble. Yeah, Gray doing his little happy dance after being selected there. Love to see it, and uh, I kind of like the pick as well. He's little TP in, little pull through some of these walls, put them in unfavorable situations. It's a great pick in my eyes if you pick those those circumstances right, and if you set up a good TP as well for the late game, RT is going to be able to exploit it massively straight onto the opposition. Even if you don't get the kills, your teammates should be able to in the long run. Montreux ponies obviously have this last pick. Then we'll see what they do. So like five seconds left for them to grab something, and. I think it's got to be kind of long range, right? It's going to be good with a penny, a bit of mid range, but the more stuff is going to be able to help out massively. Salty Barrel to tank a lot. And obviously, Salty Barrel's good in those closing seconds, too. Yeah, Penny received a little bit of a knock back nerf to her Salty Barrel, but it's still so viable. And she's got so much utility, so much knock back potential, control potential. There's a great deal to her kit, and it goes a long way. I think I do prefer the humble comp here, to be honest. I mean, that mid is going to be won more often than not by the RT. Gus will have its moments for sure. Of course, the Kooky Popper Gadget, always going to be a great thing to have on the side of One Trick Ponies to be able to just gain that low HP moment and then just press screen. No, it does the job. Let's see, though, who will get the early sign of aggression, who wants to go for the more controlled based game. Luki is a real threat on this grey, though, I've got to say. And I just hope that for One Trick Ponies, they're ready for those teleportation moments. Yeah, well, we know he can't TP any other members of his team now, which would be maybe still a little bit too broken if they hadn't reverted that change. Luki just playing through this mid, wants to try to get some super, but Tomzy keeping him back so much, and Filippo doing more of the same over the right, that right hand side. Choosing not to move up to this wall because obviously they can't pull through, and there you go. A little bit of wall break, not massive amounts, but Penny splashed through. Really nice down there for, uh, well, not for Luki and Cyclone, but very good for Shiaku. Gas will be coming in relatively soon, and who that favors? More than not the Sprout, I would imagine, but Tomzy hasn't got super yet. Needs to be able to obtain it quickly, as now the Penny turret goes down, it's going to force the hand a little bit more as to where Humble can realistically go. Great wall there from Tomsey, right in the nick of time. Gas now, as well as the amplified connection from the RT. Going to be struggling here, but big shots from Philippe onto Luki with the support. Yaku is two versus two now, and all oh, Tomsey all on his own. It's just surely go down here, yeah, and he will. Watch the ponies, show the first sign of life here in the set. They've got to start because they were down in the previous set. Yeah, I mean, we needed that grey shot to hit for any chance of a humble win there. Luki missed a valuable, valuable shot, and it did not pay off well for them. Wall going to come down, not blocking all of it off, but has broken up that grass, stopping them from navigating through uh, undetected. But Tomzy just going to reclaim that wall with the gadget and have it for a later time. Gas now, just looking for some shots through. Can't really find too much, as he's just going to place a wall if he feels in danger. And that right-hand side has definitely opened up quite a lot more than it had previously, and that's not good for Felipe. The turret 
available now for one trick ponies and Zeka's gonna hold on to it i actually don't mind that ultimately they can just wait the clock down they've already proven that uh these overtime stages kind of tends to favor them a bit more last call available to Filippo as well and i think for me hubble have got to start to try to push forward to be a bit more aggressive now as finally the utility goes down good timing for it Zeka though is incredibly low here killing tonic coming out for that reason from Filippo. Get some quickly back into the mix, but I'm liking the way the Hubble are approaching this Walking King. Won't connect though from Luki. That can prove costly. Tomsy low here as well. Luki now starting to tremble. Oh my god, Luki goes in. One tap, two tap, and Zach, who's the third? Oh my word, Humble. What great turn around there. I mean, it couldn't have come at a better time. Got the two kills. The gas finished off the third, but just his presence scared him into the gas. And that's a wonderful, wonderful play from Luki. From going to possibly costing that first round and not getting that connecting hit to winning the third to win in the second pretty much alone is such a big turnaround that's what we like to see from Luki shouldn't be too far off another super bear in mind as well because he connected a few shots after TPing I say knockout is certainly Gray's best game mode we don't really tend to see Gray elsewhere I mean I I I'd like to see him sort of come a bit more into brawl ball again as he once was but it's such a great mechanic to see there I could use a little bit of buff in that respect but knockout Time and time again able to help out, sometimes a little bit in a hot zone, but Luki playing a fantastic game nonetheless. As this wall now is really separating what Gas and Zeka could do on the top left hand side. Tomsey doing great for that reason now that the Gas coming in and consecutive taps. Third didn't quite land, but it's allowing Zeka to actually heal and that's deflated so much. What great tricks from Zeka on the left hand side. Lovely stuff. Tomsey being pushed back as well. Wow. Shiaku, great play from him and finds another as well. Luki the only one remaining, but what can he do? 1v3 and one trick ponies take the lead once more. He was one shot away from death. In a realistically there, he should have gone down, and that should have been a humble round for me. But the ability to juke his way forwards, get the takedown once, then follow up with a second, it pretty much secured the round. And that is a game then going their way. Great stuff from Roderick Ponies, but we have some resolve from Humble before. He got a very convincing round previous to this one, so can they do the same again? As Luki trying to find the connections, does find one to Ziaku, Gaslu. Keeping his distance, or oh, walking Kane, almost left Felipe in a tough spot there, but it won't do much more than trickle down the HP, as now his teammates come in to help. Yeah, need to make something more happen. Cyclone's just taking so many hits and having to back off. But now, Jaku's doing the same again. Tomsy all alone, not going to be able to gauge HP back from the grass either, because he's going to be recycling super instead. We can't find the last shot. Chooses not to go any further up, as he would have been a little bit out of position, but in my eyes, I don't think he was in too much danger. Yeah, I think he could have maybe committed a bit more. Just have to call to save for sure, but it's a great wall from Tomsey. It just eradicates so much. You can see the crossover far better now as well. So less place to hide. Covers a great amount of area as well. Great pull over the turret, exposing it. But look at the positioning here. It's very much in one trick pony's favor here. Walking came from Luki though. Down there goes Yaku. It's a two versus one though. Oh my word, Gas just about secures it, but only just. It was the shots from his teammates prior to that which really helped out considerably so, but ultimately, if you're the last person standing, you're the MVP of the round as far as I'm concerned. It's such a close matchup. Shaku's marked there from Cyclone as well. Dangerous stuff from him, but did survive nonetheless. This is surely going to be a humble win. They need something out of it. Have the wall, have the legs from, from Cyclone as well. But he's getting tapped so hard. Has to retreat yet again. We see a very centric approach from one trip ponies here, whereas a bit more spread out from Humble. And you were saying, Trav, going into the last set, that maybe it wasn't a good thing to bring in Ziaku. I think this was a great time to have Ziaku for me right now. Didn't quite necessarily bring in the results in the previous set, but right now it's absolutely hard carrying one trick ponies as far as I'm concerned. Another big wall there from Tomsey. Now it's the time to push for Humble and try and land some of these shots, get that early advantage. And Luki's doing that onto Gas. He's got Super as well to go in, but the Gas Shield's going to be a little bit of a problem there for him. Much prefer the matchup with Filippo, which Tomsey has at the moment, and he's landing one shot, but no more than that. Now, the time is for Humble to defend, and it's not a great look. No, oh, Tomsey's there. TP comes in from Luki. Great shot from Tomsey, though. Can he find more? Well, well, he's there to finish him off. And one trick ponies take the set, moving themselves up 2 1, and now Humble are at risk. I mean, your predictions are a risk. <laughs> hey, listen. It's more important than my predictions. Humble or a risk, <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but this could very much be, in all seriousness, a match which goes the whole distance. 
you know, I, I feel like it's very, very close. I feel like actually it's coming down to like just simply the game modes of which kind of favor each of these two teams. Gem Grab was very much humbles off. They started to get into the swing of things. Question is now, have they taken a bit too much of a knock actually from knockout? Because they just didn't quite see themselves in the later stages. They struggled against the gas. And for that reason, it would have been better for them to go a bit more aggressive earlier on than they did. But that's exactly what Zaku did time and time again on these lanes. And you see him there just absolutely clapping, let's be honest. It's time still for Humble. They've you know, got, in my opinion, more experience actually now when it comes to monthly finals. But one trick ponies are making their mark. And it's starting to show now. Will they run away with it in this next set or will we go to the fifth and final? That is the question now. What a great splash there from Tomsey looking back at the replay. Got a bit short changed, really. He did his best. Here are the stats, though. And they're not necessarily telling the massive amount of the story, let's be honest. I mean, Humble, yeah, with Cyclone having a little bit less, but his role is much more control-based anyway, let's be honest. I mean, what do you make of that, Trav? I mean, uh, look at the statistics. It, it, they, I mean, obviously, it's one trip pony signing because it's a KD match. That's just how it is in knockout. Obviously, you've got to pick the right times to get the kills, but I mean, Humble just not looking too good on Cyclone, specifically not able to get much done. I will say, though, and I'll try not to cry at this statement, but Jacques going to be sudden back out. Which I'm all for, by the way. <laughs> As I said previously, I think it's a great thing for a team to show that they can just kind of cycle through players whilst they're going through the motions of winning sets. And it keeps everyone fresh, keeps everyone in the forefront. You know, we get to look back at their gameplay and it gives them their chance to shine. I think that teams that kind of suppress a player when it comes to the roster, when it comes to like those four-man rosters, it doesn't tend to do much more than kind of overall harm the grand scheme of things. So I like this from One Trick Ponies, taking the, the chance and they already, you know, dropped that seven they did it previously, but then they bounced back. So they've got that to their advantage and they've also got Shelly to their advantage now, which wasn't banned for some unknown reason here. I think this is a great starting hand for One Trick Ponies. The B response here from Humble comes in and that did give them some great results, let's be honest, in gem grab. Bands being Gene, Artie, and Gus on the other side of things, Stu, Crow, and Max for One Trick Ponies. Yeah, uh, I, and you know, I don't mind the Shelly pick. I don't think it's as good as it would be on pretty much a lot of other maps. Obviously, still does have that clay pigeon. Very, very good still. Still very fast, but Shell Shock got nerfed so, so heavily, and that was a big, big thing here. That's how you get the connections with this clay pigeon, and I think maybe that will drag it down a little bit more, but the speed should be able to help avoid some shots. Meg, however, going to be quite hard to miss shots with Meg, but B, if you get the slows, they're going to be connecting shots. I'm with you. I agree with you. You're absolutely factually correct, Trav, as always. But was it the right nerf for Shelly? I'm not convinced. I feel like the speed is where she really still thrives. And even in Backyard Bar, which is such an open space map, let's be honest, in the previous balancing of Shelly, she would never really be able to you know, hold a candle to this kind of map. Mr. P coming in as well. I love it. Out of the right ideas from Munch Ponies. I still think Shelly is going to cause a, a big problem here. But Hubble have got the more traditional ideas. And that is going to be a good thing for them. The, the, the concern for me is the Mr. P versus B matchup now, which can deflate a lot of those amplified shots. Penny kind of coming for control. I don't necessarily mind it. I think they're both are going with, like, well, very different ideas. Let's be honest. One trick ponies, a bit out there, a bit more aggressive. But I think Shelly always wins. I can't get that out of my head. That if you have Shelly, you, you're pretty much picking up the win. Um, the Mr. P matchup with the B. I mean, Shelly versus Meg. I, I think this is kind of one and done, is it not? I mean, Bonnie versus Penny, I mean, the Sorty Barrel will tank some shots for sure and have some knockback potential, so maybe that's a bit of a rough matchup there, but it comes down to how they play it at the end of the day. That is what counts the most, and I, I, I like both drafts, but in different ways. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's not going to be played as that matchup, right? They're going to want it as Penny versus Mr. P. You get the splash through those porters. B versus Bonnie. And then maybe Tomsey should be all right. So I don't mind the humble comp here. But Luki's going to have to start hitting these 3Ks or it's going to go downhill fast. Yeah, they answer that question, Trav. There, swap lanes. There it is. <laughs> just, keep, just keep swapping lanes. <laughs> but it is humble right now, which are just holding themselves stubborn. And it's working out well. Filippo, though, holding on to super here. And I think, why is this so? HP was able to just 
trickle down the clock a bit more to ensure the reset, but so far, good. keeping Roger Cronus on the back lines here is exactly what they need to keep doing. Yeah, great shot so far from Luke here. And they did use that gadget. I'm not sure about that. It was pretty much going to be pinched down instantly by Cyclone and Luki. Tomzi just looking for his super back, but Filippo's got this super, and with it, a bit of slow might come down, but Lars just throwing that ball a little bit further up, getting hit pretty hard, and Luki's doing such a good job just controlling this mid. Lars has got to be more careful. Like, he absolutely rightly said, you, you've got to be so careful in the midst of your penny matchup. I mean, Cyclone might even go all the way to score this now with the respawn of gas, probably not, but, you know, he could tank three shots off the back of those, that splash, and you can't really do that. Now, I think it's the wise thing. Get him on the right-hand side. Get him away from Cyclone. Like, if one trick is going to win this with the confidence they're running, they've got to be much more careful in these matchups, and you're the first to point it out, and rightly so, that they've got to keep swapping lanes, swapping lanes. They're the first available chance here, and actually, Humble might be able to score chance gas jumps in it's now a team wipe the pass will be there it is the goal for humble i think they deserved it yeah they're looking very very good and you know you might be able to escape cyclone splashes through but he couldn't escape lukey's shots he hit so many in a row and he's still doing it slow hits as well penny to roll finish it off and he follows up yet again on Filippo. that should be a quick one two for cyclone a pass to one of the sides and a goal yeah it's just it, but they're not gonna push it and i don't quite know why there i mean cyclone was still healing but it was a team wipe. I'm sure they could have mustered something up nonetheless. I don't think it's a bad idea here just to use the space that they've been able to generate and just continue to tap there. And Luki is doing just that. Gas, got to heal up here. Felipe needs to push forwards into a more aggressive position, but the time is against him now. Four being pushed through. It's in a good spot, potential for a pass. Everyone's on the good side of HP for one two ponies. They haven't found the space. Gas is slowed here as well. Let's just, just, just take down the back and forth in the mid. There's no time here, surely, for the pass through. Even if it reaches Gas, no. Humble take it. That's good from Humble, and it's good for them as well because they needed these wins. They need this set to be able to continue their tournament lives. We just need two games in a row for One True Ponies to be able to close it out, though they're still very much in this. But in that first game, it was all Humble. They just got so many shots. Luki was popping off on that, that, that B pinching so well, dealing with his matchup, dealing with his teammates' matchups. And if he continues, I see a set number five coming our way. Big taps from Gaz, keep Luki very low. And look at that. Big gadget taken care of. Cyclone actually comes out on top here. It's just enough time for Gas to come in and gets the takedown there as well. Much more back and forth than we saw previous to this, but Andrew Pony's making more opportunities for themselves. If they lose control here, which it looks like they're gonna do, we might get, be going back to old ways here. Yeah, well Tomzy, not able to get too much done, but does get his mech now, and with that, gonna shred straight through all these porters, but with them spawning. It's not the best person they went on. They want them towards Cyclone, and that's why they're going for the swap now. Should swap back, to be fair, but not actually going to just yet. Filippo's got his super, might be able to slow down Tomzy and get him out of this mech to start with, but splash through yet again from Cyclone. He's going to hit Gas this time. Gas yeah, is struggling so much against Luki, but as he rightly should, I mean, you're playing against the brawler which can really pack a punch, and you've got sluggish movement speed. You've got one more gadget left to hand, but as soon as he's gone through that, he's just going to be a sitting duck. Huge there from Luki, keeps Filippo at bay, and now he's really cycling through, but low HP, surviving still, despite the portal hit. I mean, Luki's doing great, he really, really is, but there's a potential opportunity here. Gas jumps in, the pass is there, but Luki, oh, he missed it off the line! He really should have been able to stop that, despite the low HP, it would have been enough to stop the ball in its tracks. Instead, it was an opening, and one trick pony seized it. Well, Tomzy now has his super as well. Got the swipe, but doesn't want to be too close to Filippo. He is actually using Band-Aid, not, not, um, not Shell Shock, which is probably the smart thing to do now that it has been nerfed quite heavily. That's going to just try and walk up this map. Luke is not going to connect that 3k just yet, but Gas shouldn't be too much of a bad target. He is quite slow. Tomzy pushing well, has the swipe still, and obviously with Band-Aid, it's not going to be the best matchup, but super behind the wall. Filippo's just playing it slow. They know they don't need anything else. 30 seconds, and they'll be fine. Big hit there from Felipe with the gadget there as well for good measure, but Gas is going to be able to secure this defense. The walls are going down, surely. Ball push, potentially Cyclone, who can't really do much from that position with a Shally respawning in. And yeah, Felipe is running by Nate, by the way, as well. He's not even got the slow to hand, so clearly feels like that nerf was something of a change to the particular brawler. Luki is out of position here, can't do much at all. And one trick pony is now moving on to match point. And I've got to say, I feel like actually Humble have demonstrated that they've got the comp to be able to beat them. So I'm a bit worried now for Humble. 
I think if they keep the matchups like you say, Jeff, I mean, the, the B mid, Luki versus that Bonnie, is where this is won and lost for me, realistically. But one trick ponies in that last game really came out very, very aggressive early on. And that made a difference. Yeah, it really is that. And, you know, if Luki's not performing the same way that he was in the first game, then it's going to be an issue in the same with Cycle. And they don't have the matchups that they want off the start. You want that penny against the Mr. P because that's what succeeded in the first. And now instant push from Filippo. He says goodbye quickly to that. And now he's pushing forward again, using this clay pigeon to the best of his ability. There's a goal there. The soup of the shot. And it's in. One Dream Ponies go ahead yet again off the start. It's exactly the way to play if you're them because they've got a very defensive idea. They can buy down the clock and just try to evade a lot of what Luke is throwing out, really. Gas comes in. Oh my word. Everyone just dropped on the side of Humble. It could be over right here if Gas goes through. Tom's he's got mech. He pushes it back. The Filippo has got the super to hand. Surely waiting for the invincibility to run itself down. Gas the shot. Knocks them back. It is done. One trick ponies. Just left humble in the dust. He didn't even wait for an open. He was just like, right, if you're not going to give me an open, I'm going to walk straight through you with this super. Knocked them back, got them off the line, and the ball went in. Great stuff from One Trip Ponies. Considering how bad they looked in the first game of Brawl Ball, to come back, change your strategy, and win two in a row as easy as that, that is what makes a team so good. And my predictions are looking good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we get it, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> you know me, John. of 76% of people in the audience as well, I will say. I, I, I know, it's great. What are you doing, all right? It tastes so sweet. It tastes so sweet. <laughs> I mean, only I can have that kind of ego with the second game of the day. I mean, it was, it was still very much got plenty more to come here, but uh, it was a great showing. It really was, and a bunch of ponies did concede that loss. It was the best of the three in the Snapdragon Pro Series. I love that from Gas. You know, in any other instance, you'd think, why are they passing that ball back? But with the Shelly there in position, Filippo knew that he was able to land that. He was confident about it. You know, it's not necessarily a straightforward thing. I mean, it is for all intensive purposes when you're playing at this level of the game. But, you know, those are the moments that you feel nerves, even at the top. Because if you miss that moment, everyone is judging you for that. Because, you know, it's the last a play, isn't it? Let's be honest. To be able to have that Shelly, time it with the pass, get the super up at the same time to break everything open, you shouldn't be missing it. But that's why you've got to stay calm and collected. And he lands it, and it gave them the win. Lovely stuff from them, and I'm looking forward to seeing more from one Trick Ponies later. Yeah, I mean, I am as well. They're going to have a tough matchup though against Zeta Division. That is not going to be an easy one whatsoever. One Trick Ponies have still got probably the hardest matchup they can even get against them further forward. But if they perform like they did in those last two Brawl Ball games and the ones before that they did manage to win, I don't doubt they've got a chance. This is the thing for me now. Yeah, I was saying it going out of that first matchup that Zeta looked very shaky. And you know, for me, having just witnessed one trick ponies go up against a really accomplished team like Humble and come out on top, making substitutions along the way, being confident in their approach with the draft and also with their own teammates and going into those modes. I, I feel like they've got to be a bit of a favorite now, actually. But, you know, it's a long way ahead of us. Semifinals are still you know, not around the corner just yet. We've got to play two more quarterfinals matchups first and declare our MVP as well. Statistically, I mean, I've got to say for the majority of the sets, it was a very, very close affair across the board. And it's going to be Filippo who gets the MVP vote over at event.brawlstars.com. Great stuff from One Trick Ponies, like I said. And he really was a shining star. Yeah, I mean, he looked very, very good pretty much throughout. And I will say as well, you know, the rest of One Trick Ponies did also. We saw some great moments from Humble there as well. But at the end of the day, One Trick Ponies are going to be the ones moving forward. Humble knocked out of the competition. And that's sad for them. You know, they needed points as much as One Trick yes. Ponies did. They're in, you know, mid-table in Europe. And we know how quickly this can swap. The team below them now, if they win, if Foot take a win, if anybody below them takes a win, they're going to be moving above them. And One Trick Ponies, they're slotting onto the leaderboard nicely now as well. There's going to be a big shift today. There's no doubt about it. It's already in motion, like you absolutely rightly say. And this next matchup as well could be very key and vital to that same idea. Make sure you go to events.brawlstars.com right now to place your predictions between Foot, Esports, and SK Gaming. This one is going to be a banger. I put down the winner of this to go all the way today, putting it out there on the table. But go there now, place your predict. We're going to take a very, very short break, switch up the casting desk. We'll be right back after this.
welcome back to the Brawl Stars Championship. Welcome back to Teddy as well. Give us your thoughts from the sidelines on those last matchups. Pretty exciting way to start the day, right? Incredible matches so far already. I mean, the first one, again, AOF, they've lost every single quarterfinal match so far this year. They made it to the quarters, which is impressive enough, but couldn't get past them. And I mean, you got to feel for Team Humble as well, because they really want those points desperately, but it's going to be for next month. Yeah, well, I have no doubt that they will come back strong because ultimately when you've got that signing with an organization, you've got a lot of support behind you. So it's going to be Zeta Division and One Trick Ponies as our first semifinals match confirmed as a result of those three to one losses to Amapantese to Humble. But now moving on to SK Gaming versus Foot Esports is our next match. After that, Navi versus Reply Totem. Let's take a look at SK Gaming first. Now, there's been a lot of change-ups, a lot of switching ups with SK Gaming. Last month, they were with Jetson. Jetson has now left the roster. It is iChaos, OPE, and Yoshi. OPE, of course, coming over from Foot Esports. This is a big matchup. It's not just about winning. It's not just about points. This is about pride now. It's huge. GA is still with SK Gaming, just to be clear ultimately working a great deal on the content creational side and still working as a player. To my understanding of things, there has been a lot of transition, but I do praise SK for the way that they handled that. They went out with a video on Twitter. <laughs> okay, I'll show some love there to uh, a former colleague. <laughs> still very close friends, of course, there. Um, Hi, Trevor. I haven't quite ever seen him in that light, but it's a good look. It's a good look. Um, nonetheless, I did praise SK the way that they handled that. Going on Twitter, having a bit of an explanational video, and I think that that does make a big difference. Let's take a look at Foot. This is, again, a, a big rivalry matchup, isn't it? Time and time again, because Semantic was with SK Gaming last year. OPE has now left this roster. Lenan coming in, who's got a great deal of, of, of history and background with Drage, you know, from former Tribe Gaming EU and uh, Semantic as well, giving his thumbs up, keeping himself energized, of course. But this matchup, I've got to say, Teddy, it could go either way. And we've seen back and forth. It was Foot Esports in the Snapdragon Pro Series that got the win over SK. In the qualifiers, SK Gaming got the win over Foot Esports. And when you consider that both sides kind of want to prove a point, I think this is going to be very, very tense, actually. I think this is the most exciting match of the quarterfinals. Just so much history as well. I just want to point out as well, you know, what an unexpected lineup to see Lena playing with Semantic. Those guys did not get along the slightest for, what, two years? And then suddenly they are packed up together in one team. And so far, from what I've heard, it's been going great for them, uh, whether it's, you know, as a team or, or between themselves. So I'm really excited to finally see them play in an official BSC match. It's going to be a bagger. Let's see as well how the votes have been going down because it's always a weird one to tell over at event.brawlstars.com. It's sometimes very one-sided. It is going to be one-sided. And I don't think that that reflects this matchup. This, in my opinion, is probably going to be the closest of the matchups today. Whether or not that will be reflected in the scoreline, we'll obviously tell very soon. But 83% of votes are with SK. Now, Teddy, does that reflect the fan following or the reality of the situation upon us? I think it's... Probably more likely to be the former, just because, you know, I mean, SK have so much history within Brawl. They've had so much success as well, but so far this year it has been scrappy, to say the least. And I feel like bringing in a new teammate is going to be super exciting, but, you know, the synergy needs to build up. B is going to be our first pick here uh, for Foot Esports. But honestly, Ark, I, I think this is just such an interesting matchup, and I feel like both teams have so much to prove so far this year such big names that haven't quite made the mark they wanted to do in the bsc 2023 yeah sk for me are looking the best they've looked all year and considering that when you look back to last month or the month prior to that technically in the bsc you know getting that win over zeta division for them in that quarterfinal stage really did give them that that lift that reassurance that they haven't dropped off as many of the community were saying they were thriving they made it through to the grand finals you know that is a huge turnaround that was with Jetson 
This is now with OPE. And I've watched this roster with OPE be a bit slow to the mark, but then really start to flourish. And I do feel like this is going to be the month for SK personally. Wolfer Esports caused the upset. Very early drafts here of the Sprout and the Pam coming in. Risky ideas, to be fair, which can be countered later on, but actually going to be matched here by Foot. Bringing in the tick for more control to add on top of things here. Who do you think has got the upper hand so far? I mean, for me, it's relatively balanced. I think the B is an interesting idea for Split, but you know, give us your thoughts. Pam's going to be great here, right? Yeah, I think it's fairly even, to be honest. Well, no. Things suddenly get incredibly interesting. Edgar is going to be picked up by Food Esports, and we've seen what, you know, some players like Stetempo can do on Edgar. we also seen what people on ladder do with Edgar, and I don't know yet what you want <laughs> to expect. Well, this is interesting because Foot Esports really thrived as the back of the AQ pick against AR in the qualifying stages, which gave them the win. I, can't, I think it was maybe Brawl Ball. It was a diff different game mode for sure. El Primo coming in for SK. But honestly, if there's anyone who knows how to play against it, it's Semantic. I mean, he's a fantastic Primo, but OPE, I think, probably going to take the reins on that particular brawler. Um, it's going to be chaos in the sprout, no doubt about it. So it could maybe be Yoshi or him. But um, regardless, you know, I, I, I've got to feel like this is something that Foot have been putting into practice quite considerably so. The B is going to be a fantastic thing for um, for them to be able to really shut down with the Honey Molasses. But against the Sprout, which can take it out relatively quickly, I mean, it's going to struggle to find a lot of these angles later on in time. And with no real wall breaker aside from those tick heads coming in for them. Like, it'd be interesting to see how they make this B pick work. It's a bit out there, but I quite like it. Let's see though, as the first time we see both of these two rosters appearing in the BSC go head to head, the horns are gonna clash. Yeah, to be honest, B used to be quite an emblematic pick of, of Split when we used to see a lot of wall breaks. You know, you'd rock it with a, a Cold, maybe even a Brock, open up those walls, or a, a, a Griff works too. So many options. It's just not something we see as much anymore since we've had those unbreakable walls added to the game. So far, Semantic is going to go for a jump and get some value. Can he pick up a kill? Another jump now as well. But wow, somehow wow. he does make it through. He does go down as well. But it's a two for one that Foot Esports should be happy with. I, I can't believe he managed that. I mean, obviously the trade was there, but it kept SK off the zone, and that's all playing the objective power there. As OP jumping in, just about gets the Nun burnt down there as well. But uh, Chaos coming in now onto the zone. Get some time for his own consecutive touch, but the third didn't land, and now Drage, who is there with the Japanese characters, by the way, coming onto the zone and getting some time captured. OP is now going to be in a bit of a struggle here. He'll jump in for sure, but so far, it's so back and forth. I love it. Yeah, it's a great start here for SK Gaming. It's only a little bit of a lead, but I've spent a considerable more amount of time on the enemy zone, and that's the tougher one to capture overall. Yoshi still defense, defending Semantic on that right-hand side and has managed to slip through the defense, but he's not really able to get any percentages for his team. Goes for a jump onto iChaos, misses, but iChaos does not. The tick head will take care of the turret here from Yashi and there's no healing station available anymore. Still a little bit of a lead for SK Gaming, but there's plenty of time for Food Esports to try to turn things around. It really is. I did just keep up a bit shy there on that super, but nonetheless, he's well aware that OP is waiting for his moment in time. Semantic gets a great take down there onto iChaos. Yashi though still remains. Frey's gonna come in there. Didn't quite connect though with the last blast there, but Yoshi's going to try and force his way forward. Tick head there. Drake's doing pretty well under the circumstances to stay alive even. But somehow, SK do pick up the win. As you well, the, the, the moment there. Yoshi with the healing station. And now they will get the win eventually as they get the first one. One game going their way. Set to start for grabs. Solid start from SK. Honestly, I got a little bit worried with that sprout roll towards the end because that literally let the Edgar be, you know, free to capture their zone. And I thought, if that's the mistake that lets Foot catch up, SK are not going to be forgiving themselves. But so far, so good for SK Gaming as Foot is on the back foot. No pun intended, right? <laughs> it, it genuinely was. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that, Teddy. Uh, <laughs> nonetheless, one thing I had as a consideration coming in to this matchup for me was the fact that you know, SK Gaming didn't make it into the Snapdragon Pro Series Challenge Finals through Split 1. So they've been competing a lot throughout the last few weeks into Split, whereas you know, they did secure themselves that spot. And 
I wondered, like, looking back, whether that would go for them or against them, because actually having a great amount of time to competitively practice under a competitive setting goes a long, long way. And SK have been able to keep up that in that same idea. I got Peter Scrimmon's absolute tear. There's nothing that Burke can do about it so far. Now that another's coming in, that's the ideal person for it. But all that time has been wasted. He's still going. Uh, there's no one in the game right now that wants to destroy food as much as Ope, and he's definitely letting wow. show fantastic stuff from Ope. As right now, SK are in a commanding lead as well. Semantic coming back for defense, but Dan is uh, not really able to help out all that much to jump in on Yoshi at last, but the healing station is keeping Yoshi alive for an awful long amount of time. Eventually, Semantic does find him, but he can't really overstay is welcome in that right zone. Foot are catching up, but slowly. Order has been resumed, but for how long? That is the question. Smith jumping in is a very risky thing, but now Lenon coming in from the backside does get the pickup, and that should secure things, and now at least enough to be level Peggy. Semantic observing the situation, jumps in on the perfect candidate, which is the Sprout pick, and now OP should fall victim to this scrutiny. It's gonna be close, though, nonetheless. That zone is not Yet there, 3% now. Oh, a last ditch to turn with the wall, but it won't be enough. We are all tied up in this first set, and it's exactly what I expected it to be. Nothing but fireworks. So intense, so back and forth, and so close. Much to the contrary of that vote over at event.brawlstars.com being so one-sided, it's not always seeing play out, despite those insane plays from OPE, which were honestly player of the day worthy stuff. They didn't quite get the objective there, and actually Foot starting to show themselves worthy here. Good stuff from Foot. They're catching up, and this is their chance to either big first impression in this match. What an exciting way to start this uh, quarterfinal match as well. A Primo and an Edgar. That's why uh, things have been so dynamic so far. Yoshi is going to be clearing up Semantic on the right-hand side. This Rage is trying to farm those tick heads and it's going to have one place down already, but it takes some damage and it's not quite going to reach destination. So far, we're even as both teams are more heavily focused on defense and Semantic will jump in, finds one. There's a wall now to heal up and get back into the mix with near full HP. Semantic is so good at surviving in these sort of situations, isn't he? I'm gonna probably jinx it, but he is still going. He jumps into chaos and gets the kill, healing up along the way. He is the thorn in the side of SK right now. And again, with so much history between these two teams, you, you, you gotta realize that there's a lot of ego here as well as pride on the line. So, you know, it's going up against his former teammates effectively, as is OPE against Foot. So these back and forth moments mean more than just the takedowns. It's about everything. So much emotions coming into play for this match. And so far, it does seem like foot esports are able to deal with things as they have just a little bit of a lead. Yashi trying to hold on to dear life on that right hand side. Semantic is low, does have jump. It's not quite going to be wasting it just yet as Ope is able to take him down. A jump in from Ope again. It's some nice value. The burn onto the tick is going to get him low, but not quite enough to take him down. And SK Gaming nearly enough caught up. And actually, it's all even now. So close. Semantic should go down here. Realistic, but Yoshi's being so patient. Allowing him to heal might not be the play here, to be completely honest. As OP comes back in and forces their hand. 76% with SK, but this left hand side zone, which they need. We've got to time it just right. OPE wants that jump. Yoshi coming from the top here. Big taps from Lanan. Do secure it. Slow as well to OPE. He's forced to jump, but there's no one there to really contest it. Samantha gets on the zone and brings things back. Gets the difference for foot. Uh, Semantic able to even things out now. Goes for the jump onto Yoshi. Gets some damage. Is it going to be enough? Yes, the kill comes through. OP also not in the best position. The tick head connects and Semantic could deal with him, but he doesn't really care. He's going to go defend instead because it is SK with a 2% lead that Foot wants to turn on desperately. Now That's Richard it. shot. Is that going to be enough to slow as well? 2%, 1% actually going to be in favor of Foot and they will take this opening set. Wow, incredible stuff. You can see how much that first set means to Semantic. What an insane first set of this third quarterfinals match. 
so close, so little in it, honestly. I mean, this is what you want from a matchup in the EMEA region and for a best of five, we're just getting started. I cannot wait to see where this one leads. Whoever takes this, you know, like I said today, coming into today, I think might have their day as the grand finals. Just looking ahead at the competition, it's so far away, but you know, the gameplay is so close, so on point. There's not really mistakes being made by both sides to make it look as close as it is. Both teams are giving it everything they've got, and it's just the first set. And this is just a perfect match, to be honest. You know, there's this emotional side where we have such an interesting journey between Ope switching teams, going from foot to SK gaming. <laughs> the pride on both sides as well, right? Ope wants to show that, you know, they made a mistake. Just like foot want to show they did not, you know, and this is what they wanted yeah. to go for. 15 kills here for Semantic and Lena. Fantastic stuff on there and 400. Uh, DPS nearly here for Drage playing very, very impressively as well. But uh, th th those two teams, they're similar in so many ways as well. Whether we look at the points, both teams not quite in the leaderboards where we expect them. We have high hopes on, on both sides of the border. And right now, they have so much to prove and that they have to face each other in the quarterfinals is uh, it, it's just so much fun to watch. But only one team is going to make it through and winning a layer cake here and Bounty is going to get them one step closer to victory. I think what makes it so enjoyable for me as well to witness and to watch is because these two teams have got such a similar playstyle now that OP has been added to the SK Gaming roster. He really does, in the words of uh, Pedro, you know, over on Twitter, he fulfills the role which they were searching for and missing within their lineup. So now you've got these great interactions between Semantic and OPE and the controlling elements there of Chaos coming in versus Strage and RT versus Brawler coming in for Lair Cake as the bands for Bonnie, Ruffs and Shelly for SK Gaming for Tick. Gene and Max on the side of Foot and their first draft coming in with Sin as well. Lenan does like to go aggressive on Layer Cake with some tankier ideas, but obviously the draft leading up to that process might determine that that's the play today. Gus going to come in as that safety idea for the mid early on. Carl going to come in as the aggressive idea to add to it, and that's got to be that's got to be a Lenan pick right there for me. He was absolutely popping off on Layer Cake last time I remember watching but go up against this. And I think it might have been against SK over the uh, Snapdragon Pro Series. Well, they did get a sweep. It was a 3-0. It was clean. But managed to get themselves into that challenge season the result of a clean sweep against SK. But in the qualifying stages of the BSC, that's where SK bit back. So this is about getting even. Whoever wins this one today is going to have one up. And one up in the most important competition in Brawl Stories as well. So really important match here for both sides. The Daryl is a pick I do like. You know, the super is great at cancelling those uh, Carl supers as well. Carl, that was a very expected pick for Food Esports, to be to be completely honest. I mean, as you said, you know, you know, Lenan plays it fantastically, but overall on this map, it's just a great fit. You know, the, the pickaxe swings, they just work very nicely, curve nicely around the walls, get people out of position, and obviously that free blue star at the beginning due to the dash is just so much value and gives you a little bit of an easier time start on the defense, which is always very valuable. We'll have a Barley to try to unlock the situation as well from a distance. Does need to be careful, of course, from any uh, aggressive ideas coming through from the Carl, but I do like the Barley. I think it can find a good bit of value. There's obviously other throwers that can do a very good job as well here, such as Sprout, but Barley, if you are looking to take back that lead in the later stages, it can do a really, really solid job spreading uh, around the map with that super and just covering so much ground. Right, gonna come in is an interesting idea. I mean, I prefer it in knockout. I'm interested to see how Foot do fail with it here. The Carl is gonna be great going for the flying hook, but it's these tankier ideas that SK are so good with the control of that barley. It, it worries me a bit that if Foot find themselves in those back lines, that's where SK punish. You know, they are such a passive team in that respect, but they have now got the aggressiveness they have been missing for such a long time. They had great results last year by being passive, and undoubtedly so. But this year has been a change in the scene, you know? People are starting to realize that you know, being aggressive is where Brawl really, really lands the mark. Let's see, but on top, pushing down SK. 
Already a walking cane does connect with chaos. Oh, the follow up was perfect between Drazen and Semantic. Lovely style from Furt, but it is just the one star, the blue star in the hands of SK. Great crossfire there from Foot and obviously the gadget as well from Drage gets a follow-up connection onto IKOs, but Drage forced to fall back and leave that fight. Ope is able to wow. get a kill, can even find a second TP out from Drage, but Ope still stands and he's not going to be getting traded out. Yashi, in fact, gets the kill with a nice gadget popped just in the nick of time. And now four stars in favor of SK Gaming is a really, really good place to be. Just want to point out as well, Foot Esports did not go for that blue star. Interestingly enough, you'd think that, you know, with Lanel that Carl, that would be a free blue star. But they opted to not go for it, which I'm not entirely sure why. Why, why don't be cycling? Oh my <laughs> goodness! Gets that as well. I think yes, she got his kill stolen there towards the end, but nonetheless, absolutely popping off. And you know, it's such an enjoyable thing to watch because you know you're not just witnessing the the insane amount of communication between the teams internally themselves play out into the skill that we're seeing. It's like they're also inside the minds of their oppositions because they played on the side of their oppositions. None coming in over here with the body block, making sure that he doesn't get out. For, great coming in there from Drage gets the pickup as well, and I chaos trace out as well. I mean, it's. It's just so intense. Six stars, Arc. Six stars separating both teams. If Yoshi and Ikeos go down and it's clean kills with no trades, that would be it. But a <laughs> shield from Semantic was missed, and I think that pretty much completely annihilates any chances here for food. And it's going to be SK Gaming that strikes back as they take game one of Bounty. I did say SK on the back, leg, you know, back side of things. When they're in the support area, they, they just shut it down. I mean, the RT there with the separation between the body and the legs just, I think, it's wiped Lanan off the map. But let's see what they do with the blue star, because you're right. And they want, obviously, Lanan on the, on the lane side, I guess, to be able to scout early on. But more often than not, it's, it's a free star, but OPE is just happened. He's low HP now. Might go down, might get suffered for it. Lanan is struggling this matchup, and he really shouldn't be. Opie goes in, gets the kill. Five stars already for SK. Yeah, I, I, I don't know about the great pick either, to be honest. I mean, Drake has been playing it well, don't get me wrong, but I feel like they were focusing so much on dealing with that Barley that they maybe dismissed uh, how strong Daryl is as well. I mean, if you look at things, Ope has been the one finding openings, finding kills left and right in both games so far, and there's just no matchup that one-on-one -on -one Food Esports can win against the Daryl, so they need to play this together, and they need to play this smart. Yoshi is going to be low HP, but... Nice healing tonic from my kill is gonna keep him alive. And Ope strikes again with another kill. Not traded just yet, but eventually the crossfire from Drage and Semantic finds him. Nevertheless, it's another trade as Yashi is able to pick up the kill on the right hand side, and it's still six stars very much in favor of SK. I think they've got to be a bit more cautious around OPE, honestly. Sometimes I just feel like he's just going to absolutely run riot because of the positioning of foot. I think they've got to just try to suppress him a bit better and keep their range, keep their advantage, and sometimes get out of the situation, actually, because they can escape with stars by doing so. And that is trickling him down, but that roll is going to be costly, and when it comes in, I worry that he might be unmatched against it. The taps there from Semantic, keeping him low. There's still six stars for Foot to be able to just even draw it close, and even then the blue stars with Eske. They've got to go in now on the aggressive. Oh, huge TP from Lena actually gets one, but Yoshi is able to get the trade regardless, and this should very much be secured here for SK Gaming. A huge nine stars lead as well to close it out, and I, I, I think this game here just kind of ended in the draft stage for Foot Esports. SK Gaming just much more solid, much more consistent with that draft. I, I, I think there were some ideas here and there. I do like the Grey here, especially too, you know, to try to deal with that Barley. The problem is it did quite awful against the other two brawlers and they genuinely just had absolutely no solution for the Daryl unless they were going three versus one. And even those, they weren't really winning either. So just not much going on for, for that foot draft in my opinion. What a moment there from OP, but I, I agree. And I think Foot will be thinking the same thing themselves. And, you know, it's a bit of a GG go next moment. You know, the first set was very, very close. I mean, down to the wire close stuff. But that set, that was all SK. I mean, I mean, you know, Foot were literally handing it to them on a plate. 
They weren't really making all the hard work. And there was there was a way that they could win with that comp. It wasn't unwinnable, but it wasn't the better of the two. Seemingly so, it went very much the way of SK's playstyle in every sense of the word. And the takedowns, say the same story. Six for Yoshi, six for OPE. Chaos doing his thing nonetheless, and got the highest in regards to comparing. Of foot, you know, it's very much in SK map and mode, but nonetheless, that's where foot have got to come in and, and whistle them down even more. Because if you can get inside the minds of SK there, then you're going to leave them thinking, where can we actually win? Because that was our best set in mode. What, where do we go from here? Now, going into Brawl, we are all level again. And you just know that we are going to be bringing in some tanks here. You know, OP, going to want that max. So I think that, you know, I think Foot know that better than anyone. They're probably going to have to ban that one out. Shelly is a must ban here for me. There's no question about it. Let's see whether they leave Carl open because it's a great map for it. Yeah, max ban by Foot. Exactly what you've got to do against this. You know the players that you're facing. So you've got to eradicate, even if you want it for yourself. The Shelly ban, the max ban, and also the B. Great bans from Foot. Poco, B, and Crow ban for SK. And the first pick is at Ems, and I love that. Ems is getting a lot of wins recently now. It's doing really well. I mean, it's a very versatile brawler. Obviously, a tank counter as well, which things are incredibly scary to face, especially in draft uh, format. But Ems just brings so much utility. The slow is good to defuse bushes, open things up as well if you are uh, on the offensive. And obviously the gadget as well to knock back your opponents, keep them uh, away from, from the ball or from scoring very uh, often can be clutch. We'll see this too, as well as the Otis brought out by Foot Esports. Two very good picks as well. Otis is going to be filling up a, a similar role of tank melter, but obviously, you know, the mute providing a lot of utility for the team a great way to uh, create some sort of opening and still very very mobile very versatile usually uh, still the speed zone that's going to be the most played but the break in brawl is not unheard of either so i'm looking forward to seeing how they want to bring out that stew if it's going to be more utility based or more you know for the raw mechanics of the brawler to be a penny question mark here for SK in potential moment or a riskier tankier option against the Otis. I don't think much of it. It's gonna go with a riskier tankier option against the Otis. Buster coming in. What are your thoughts, Teddy? You watched from the sidelines when we saw Buster come in previously for, I believe it was Emma Fantasy. It did not do well. A different map and mode, no doubt about it. But, you know, a team's experimenting with Buster in competition setting too early. Is there a place for him in pinhole punt? You know, have SK got a plan up their sleeve here? Because they, they're very clearly comfortable running it, and there's still a chance for Foot to respond, but into a notice, it could be it could be risky here, right? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, the thing is, to me, I feel like he's kind of a ticking bomb, but not like in his advantage. You have three gadgets. I think his pools are incredibly important at, at pro level play because you, you need to close the gap, right? Once you run out, it's a bit scary to be uh, bringing in a buster and I'm not sure that's going to work out. If Foot can, you know, burn his utility out early on, I think they could have the advantage here. The Lou as well is going to be a great way to dissuade any sort of aggression and slow down the pacing as well. Just throw that super out near the ball or near key areas of the map and that's going to be locking SK Gaming for from defending those parts so I like the idea it's not the easiest brawler to play but so far the nice is tapping and the freeze already onto Yoshi is going to be claiming the first kill for food esports the second oh, wow as Lena picks up Ope and it's only a chaos left to defend but the respawns are coming through and I like that food are not impatient they're taking their time making sure they play uh, around that map control rather than trying to rush in a goal that they end up failing the Jukes of I Chaos there were absolutely insane. I mean, he was on his own one versus three and just bought so much time by not conceding a single tap. I mean, it's honestly something to marvel at, but they are far from out of the woods here. The Buster pick not really showing much so far. Trapped into the corner, but surviving on nonetheless. The trade is there, two versus two now. A time for a shield. Connections are being made. There's a mute as well. And Sebastian oh, finds the position oh, and gets the trick shot. The perfect placement. And it will reward Foot with the goal. It wasn't just for Flair. It was just simply because that was what he needed to do to ensure it. That was absolutely gorgeous. We do have a strong push coming through from SK Gaming. Ope was the kill. Surely that's going to be SK Gaming evening things out.
It was a minute and 10 seconds left on the clock. Even though we had an incredible play from Semantic just earlier, it is 1-1, we're all even. Look how quickly these takedowns are happening. Everyone is dropping like flies in the side of SK. Semantic comes in, secures it, and doesn't hesitate. My word, what a response. And as quickly as that, but demonstrate that I just don't think the comp is right here for SK. It can have its moments, but the aggressive nature of what Foot just keep throwing at this. I mean, on that right side, it is just OP gone. It is Yoshi gone. I Chaos is always left standing alone, and it's not enough to defend these moments against a team like Foot. Look at that aggression. Semantic was a two-piece on the left, and make it a triple. Just make it a triple. Semantic oh my slots word. it in. And 12 seconds. It's all it took for Foot to open up the scoreboard and SK Bank Gaming. They need to be careful. They don't want to be dropping this set. Wow. You say that, so I think it's about to happen. Uh, SK have got to start to be more on their feet here and, and just try to survive on longer because honestly, the way that Foot keep positioning themselves here and also find the scoring opportunities, it's, it was just, it's almost fun. I mean, we're almost finished. And, and it does not seem to look like to me that they are slowing down anytime soon. They've got the aggression, they've got the ability to just secure everything that's being thrown at them by SK. Now we're starting to see a little bit of a slowing pace and it's a good thing. It's about time, realistically, here. The SK are able to show that they've been able to hold on, but look, Samantha's been able to creep through! And as I'm speaking, they're low, but not out! They're still present, and they're scoring! The set has gone the way of foot, and we're moving on as quickly as that! Semantic bringing out some 2021s to action here. Like, I, I don't think I've seen that dominant, that impressive of a two set since 2021 and i mean what a pleasure to get to witness that the semantic is back and when it matters the most here really for foot for me <laughs> kind of bring it back around to what we were saying going into the match about whether sk have seen something in buster whether some of the teams that have been experimenting with buster today have since they watched this what a shot but he was slowed and he was about to die he had to get that angle to secure it there's no way around it it's not the hardest of shots for players at this level to make but boy oh boy does it make for some great viewing here at the bsc because you know when you're on the spotlight it's where your mistakes can show through and it's not an easy thing to keep that composure but that was the play he had to make there was no like you know question about it being flary or flashy if he didn't do that there was no goal so Fantastic stuff from Semantic and an all round a much better draft for Foot. As we said, you know, looking back into Bounty, it wasn't really the draft that they were looking for. SK experimented there and they flew a little bit too close to the sun. Yeah, I'm with you here. I, I like the idea, you know, I think there is some potential for sure. And I, we've seen Buster work here and there at times. Uh, this just wasn't quite one of them. And I, I don't know if it's necessary just the comp. I, I just think Semantic played out of his mind. And uh, Dreja and Luna as well were just very, very consistent throughout the set. Hitting their shots, winning their matchups. And I do agree though, like the, the Buster just didn't quite provide the sort of value you'd expect from uh, such a, a shiny pick. But Gemfort is where we are going to be heading next for set four. And now with foot in the driver's seat, SK, they need to cook and they need to cook better than uh, for Brobo because this is going to be an important draft coming up. Shelly M's and Crowban for SK, Stu, B and Crowban for foot. This is going to be a very important set for both sides here. For me, I think Pam has got a great place, but Tara going to come out for the first pick for Foot. I, I'm not sure whether it's a first pick brawler. Obviously, Pet Power now as a gear has really elevated Tara big time. Uh, I mean, 20% buff. And I think that actually applies to both the healing and the aggressiveness side of those Tara shadows. So if you're running the, uh, the healing shade star power side, then you can also have the aggressive shadows going with the gadget, which actually deal that same damage. From my testing, at least, I could be wrong. But nonetheless, oh, right. it's very right. versatile now. Yeah, and having that additional vision to have if you want it, this whole map is just going to light up. Ruffs, though, I really rate here. I mean, you have Ruffs, the whole map is wide open. It brings a different level of brawlers and options into the mix as well here. So I prefer that for me so far from SK. Let's see what they want to pair with it. 
interesting because I really don't mind Tara. I think she's in an all right place. It's definitely a Broly that has its play. But as a first pick, I think it's a bit of a statement. Like, I would be worried if I was SK Gaming and I'm facing a first pick Tara on Gem 4. <laughs> yeah. It genuinely feels like, you know, there's a plan that most people aren't necessarily the most aware of or at least used to just yet. A Jesse now to follow up here for SK Gaming. I don't mind that either. I think that if there's a, a gem grab map to bring it, this is uh, probably gonna be it. Uh, it is a brawler that's had some questionable results in the competitive. I, I wanna see how SK put it at play. I know that a lot of EMEA hate Jesse, right? But you gotta look across the wider picture of things. It's used a great deal in LATAM. It's used a great deal in Southeast Asia. Max are gonna come in for foot. That's a really big statement. And Buster for them, I mean, I'm still a bit on the fence around it. I would like to see it working out. So far, it's got a 0% win rate today. So um, <laughs> let's see how it fares for them. Jesse, I get. I absolutely get here, and it can work very, very successfully well. SK got the whole picture here to hand. There's not really much wall breaker here, and Ash coming for that reason exactly. That's what exactly what I was thinking. They can see the big picture, and they can go on the aggressive. Obviously, Tara can break the bush, but that's about it. So, you know, whoever's running on that tankier idea is going to be able to run riot potentially here. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting one because I do kind of like the the Buster here. Not because it's Buster, but because there's a max pair with it, right? Like, there's not much you can do once you have a sped up Buster that's just running at you. Uh, even maybe going for a pull, like, it can definitely find a lot of value. But the Ash is just going to be such a strong way to counter it. And I, I feel like Max and Tara, as much as they can keep their distance and, and take down an Ash in the right circumstances, it still requires a lot of utility, and that's a bit of a scary prospect. But let's see how it actually plays out. As so far early on, it does seem like Foot had a little bit more control, and that is low. Chaos is ever so slightly going to be surviving as Semantic finds Yoshi. And we have a trade as... At last, the Buster goes down on the right-hand side. It is a nice and early gem lead in favor of Foot so far, and the Wiggles from Drage are absolutely on point as well. It goes to a very aggressive start here. SK is struggling big time to find their momentum, their pace. Semantic's got super here as well. Anand has his two. Those seven gems are all with Foot, which is great for them, but if SK do manage to get a steal here, it's going to be dangerous. Bit of a desperate Tara there on the right hand side Lanan gets the pickup it's gonna be everyone dropping from the side of SK this does not look at all like the first set this is in all entirely for every step of the way SK have got to get themselves together this could be all over very very quickly if they don't so far near perfection from foot to be honest a master class from Drage on the max and the rest of the squad is doing a fantastic job as well foot esports on match point and SK Gaming. There's not a whole lot of wiggle room left. They need to win the next one and the next one after that if they want to bring things to set five. Otherwise, it's going to be another short ended monthly fine. Hate to say it, but that looked effortless almost. But, you know, they just absolutely trampled it. It wasn't even close. SK did not get a foot in the door at all. And look at that. Trace is tapping up Yoshi completely, eradicating him from all question in the mid. Surviving on. Chaos low, Yoshi low. SK have got to come back with HP and start to secure a kill left, right, and center realistically here. Gain that mid control, which they've been lacking all the time here. They're just not putting their strategy into motion. The teamwork here from Food is great. Akios is able to find some value. And now still standing somehow, still getting some damage, preventing Akios from healing back up as well. The slow from the Jesse turret is going to be quite brutal. Semantic is going to be susceptible to some damage here. It does have pull now as well. But he would rather use it once he has a good amount of HP. Otherwise, he doesn't get his super uh, charge back at all if he goes down. Let's see now. Is SK Gaming or... A bit more in the driver's seat, a slight lead. Semantic looking to go more aggressive. He's gonna go for the pull this time around onto Ikeos. But is that gonna be enough value? Ikeos is gonna go down. But control-wise, it's still very much SK in the mid. Yeah, the star thing to realize that they can find holes in what Foot are putting out there. 
And Yoshi, having that tower to hand, made a big, big difference, but he's got to earn it back and find the value that he found previously to it. And that's where the clustering of Semantic and Drake makes me worried, and that's why Drake's going to go down into Robotic Rats unless he face shifts, which he's got none of. My word, SK have started to up a gear. Just the nick of time, this is not over. Oh, the miss pool. That's huge. Semantic goes down. Drage is next in line, and that is going to be a team wipe for SK Gaming. Bringing this game back and locking in game number two of Gem Grab. It's still going to be match point for Food Esports, but SK Gaming just a game away from taking us all the way to a fifth and final set. Well, what that has shown SK is that if they gain back control, they are in a much better position on this map with this comp. If they don't obtain that control, they are going to struggle and potentially get walked over in this next game. So they've got to tread really cautiously now because they can't go over aggressive too early on. I mean, so they're double left and side lane. That's what they do. And they get annihilated. The Lord of Semantic had the exact same idea in mind and they come up on top. It's just genius, to be honest, right? Because the Buster Pool brings them all packed up together. The zone damage from the Buster plus the zone damage from the Tara is just going to melt them down. And that's how they win that early game this time around. And it's exactly what they needed, really. Well, they're now almost susceptible there with the shield on the right hand side so he comes from the left finds semantic just the nick of time so he survives that pull and now look at rage completely out of position chaos goes in for the killing blow he should that was a chance if he wouldn't have been enough this will happen previous to that Look, game is lost control sk hunkered down and that's where they turn things around bixby coming in but where is it going to lead and Drage can go aggressive now ope is not quite going to make it but yoshi is still up and his turret is a real problem as soon as he unlocks it for the buster to get anywhere up close. Not only does it scout him from afar, the slow just prevents any sort of aggressive ideas. And those gems on the buster, the most aggressive brawler of the bunch, is just not what foot are hoping for. Ikeos is low, a pool connects onto Ope. Ope is one shot. But he's still wow. stands for now. The missed shot as well from Semantic Lena. Just trying to hold on to some position here for foot. But this is looking more and more like a set five is on the line. This is Foot's plan B. They do not want the gems to be where they are, like you rightly say. And it's just allowing SK to buy so much time. Lena is going to go down here potentially as well. If that connects, which it does, they can run away with it. It's Semantic versus the world. And even with Atara. You've got to have Paul to cause the difference and he can't close the gap to be able to even earn it. Great slow there from Yoshi as well. We're going all the distance and this is one of those matchups that I would not want any other way. It had to go to set five. SK Gaming versus Foot. One of the greatest EMEA matches so far this year. Between the history that goes into this match between those two teams between those players the stakes as well it's two teams that have underperformed so far in the bsc we know what they are capable of they know what they are capable of it's time to show it and set five is going to decide who gets to you know give a shot at winning this whole monthly final they're not there of course but that's what they are aiming for and they gotta get through the quarterfinals first only one of those two teams can do that it's going to be bittersweet no matter, no matter what way you look at it, isn't it, really? Because the level of skill that both sides are displaying is phenomenal. The best we've seen all far, uh, far today, in my opinion, you know? And it's a really, really tough first quarterfinals matchup in that respect. Because, again, I just feel like both of these two teams so far to me have already demonstrated that they deserve to be in a grand final. Uh, that, that's just me spitballing here. But, you know, it's so close. And the fact that it could come down to just a draft in this fifth and final set, for me, is a tough pill to swallow. I Chaos, Yoshi had great games. Nine kills apiece, five across the board, though, for foot. These are really high scoring rounds every step of the way. And it's just micro moments that determine the separation. You know, foot in that last set, that last game, rather, they just lost that control, but after that, the gems were all over the place and they had to just try to keep things alive and going, and it wasn't enough. 
SK now have just had that valuable momentum now, just getting set off the set to bring things back to level. The fifth and final is where it all comes down. The SK were in this position last month, but then again, so were Foot realistically there. You know, they went all the way with Reply Totem and got the win in the quarterfinals. It was SK that went all the way with the Sator Division and went all the way to the fifth and final set. Both of these two teams went all the distance last month and both of them came out on top in their individual matchups. Who is going to come out on top today in this one? So much on the line for both teams as well. Foot right now is seventh in the leaderboard. It's just barely inside the LCQ spots. SK not quite on 10th place. It does help that Team Queso and FA Mr. Doza are not qualified this month. So that's two slots that they can easily try to catch up. But it only happens if they capitalize, right? And this is their opportunity. It's uh, all lining up very nicely for SK Gaming. But foot, they don't want to let that happen. Our bands are coming through here for out in the open. We'll see the Eve Brock band out here on the, the side of SK, as well as the RT and then foot esports taking out the Max, the Bunny and the Squeak. I like those bands so far. There's plenty of very fun ideas to bring into the mix. Gus, of course, has been one of the staples of this map. I'm also thinking about Piper potentially. And when you think of Piper, you also think of Nani. Those could also be uh, ideas for out in the open. It's a great first pick, 100% of the way. It's a great map for Sprout as well. And I know that SK would like their hands on that if they get the pick or penny could be a good shout too but just for me is definitely up there as one of the highest first picks with the bands in, in, in play realistically here brock was a great band i love opening up the mid on this particular map and just allowing everyone to go straight through meg is the play for sk apparently i don't know it's still very early days to tell where the megs dropped off and gene but they were very quick picks by the way so sk apparently have got what they are looking for in this situation bring it back to foot very swiftly because ultimately it gives them less time to have to think they have got to be able to respond with something to be able to defend against the tankier option Meg didn't historically even before the nerf they have a great success rate in knockout pretty much everywhere else so you know, in this later stage not being in mech can prove pretty costly in those final moments when the gas is closing in you really got to stay in that one and shelly oh. comes in for foot and that is a big response to that very idea yeah, I wasn't really expecting a Shelly on this map. I mean, Shelly, I still think, is in a great place. Very, very strong still. But out in the open, it's quite out in the open, as the map says. And you'll have to close the gap to find the most value, especially against a mag that can beam you from afar. Let's see what their final pick is. Could still try to go for some more damage. Maybe a B could be on the menu here. But it's going to be a tick, actually. More control-based. And tick heads are going to be a great deterrent as well from any sort of the aggression that the mech might want to bring in i i'm worried for sk and and i chaos looks worried for sk might i just add in the camera when that shelly short space he did look like instantly mortified actually almost as if they you know but maybe hoping that Foot wouldn't run it because SK did in the qualifiers and that's where Foot came unstitched. Grey gonna come in. It's a great map for it. It is a very good grey map, but it's gonna be on the tick for sure. I was hoping that that is enough for it, but you know SK are looking under the, the, the heat right now. They don't look quite as clear and comfortable and we'll find out very quickly who is gonna make the opening mark. Whether this is gonna be a close final fifth set in what has been an amazing series, whether one side may have just found some magic, and my mind is on the Shelly. Man, this is such an interesting one because it like, I don't know why my gut tells me I prefer SK Gaming's comp, but really, I don't know what to expect from Foot Esports comp. So that might be the motivating factor here as Akios is gonna be busy opening up the map, making sure that the Shelly is the hardest time possible getting up close. So far though, things are lining up very nicely for Foot Esports with just a bunch more control and they have great ways of dealing with pretty much anything that SK would wanna throw into their face. Semantic was a super as well, probably gonna be playing the slow, which is gonna be quite scary. Actually, never mind. maybe not. Maybe he is uh, running Band-Aid, which 
would be quite interesting. Not necessarily the one I would have expected. Yeah, we still had a bit of Band-Aid coming through today, actually, in fact. I wasn't too sure that the, the, the nerf was big enough to warrant it, but a great TP coming in from Chaos. He's in the mix <laughs> just long enough for the Clay Pigeon shut down of Semantic. And now it's a two versus one, Yoshi versus the world. And I don't see Yoshi coming out on top. He's going to try to get in mech form. Semantic's being very patient. Drake's trying to get super. It was pretty much always going to go their way. They just wanted to, to squeeze out that little bit of utility before the final blow. Now, the only little problem now is that there's no more gadgets for Semantic. And that's been helping him get those snipes from afar. Pretty much turning Shelly into a sharpshooter. Not going to be possible. And you can immediately see that the pressure is not quite what it was to Gene Pool as well. It's going to be scary, especially combined with Yoshi Super. Just going for pull and then a swipe. That's going to be an instant death no matter who gets pulled. We do have two supers now for foot as well. And the tick head is going to be catapulted over to the enemy side. Not really going to be getting much results with that. Break there from Semantic. I mean, obviously, no one there. Just simply just to allow that channeling, that space for his team to be able to utilize here. OPS, Paul, Yoshi, and Chaos all have superstar hands. So, it is who are a little bit behind in that respect. Yoshi gets the pinch from the left hand side, getting great value for it. And a swift annihilation of Semantic. Big swipe from Yoshi. Nowhere for Drace to go, but into the gas. All tied up in the first game. My goodness, a match point on the line for this final round of knockout and chaos has tp but there is a ticket as a defensive measure a lot of aggression and semantic finds open yoshi trying to get the trade there is some low hp players on the side of food but somehow all of them survive and it's only yoshi left alive and he doesn't even have his mech anymore I can't believe that SK came out on top there, to be honest. It felt like, like they were just going to be all going down in one swift flow. He's going to try and get into Metal now. It's not going to be enough. Semantic with that super is going to absolutely flatten him. And Spook can just stretch a little sigh of relief here. They've got on to match point, And it looks for the most part convincing. I don't think that SK's comp is out of the question here, might I add. I think this could very much go the full distance. But so far, a result semantic because he knows that there's still work to be done I, I i think that one of the potential win conditions here is if foot managed to win the first round without using as many gadgets on semantic well he's not gonna get the chance to let's be honest here as he goes on really early on i i think it could make quite the difference but so far it's not quite looking like that's gonna be the case he wasn't expecting both players to jump in and therefore ended up going down early with esports in a little bit of a pickle now. I think it's a great strap from SK. A yeah, very daring one. It could have backfired yep. big time, let's be honest. But nonetheless, in the start of a refresh of the round, you know there's no utility there. So you've got to eradicate semantic before he has something to work with. And look at Lenan. Solo here. A sweep there for SK and a glimmer. They've got to be able to do very much the same idea again. Just isolate semantic, get him out of the question. And this could very much be match point, match point before our very eyes. Yeah, this is looking very good for SK. The gene pool available as well. The connection is found unless there's an incredibly clutch gust super to just extend the life of whoever the target of that pool is. It's going to be scary. They do have a ticket as well. The shield is going to be popped now by Semantic. The ticket gets pulled. That's very big. Ope low HP as well. Yoshi 4 is back and it's going to be Drage to pick up the elimination onto Ope. Now suddenly it's a 3 on 2. Yoshi closing the gap but doesn't quite get the swipe off. His mech gets destroyed just in the nick of time. And Foot Esports are most likely going to be a round away from taking this one home as Ikeos is already making a run for the gas trying not to feed that Shelly Super. What a moment for Foot securing themselves and the abilities in their minds that they are literally one round away now from knocking down their biggest rivals. It's not even arguably so. The big shield and Semantic going super aggressive. The Clay Pigeons as well. And our Chaos is almost down. Gets some heals off the back of that TP for sure. And the healing from OP go a long way. But look at this. Foot can smell blood. And they're going for the jugular. Foot Esports looking to finish things right here, right now. Don't want any 
Double match point business and Lenin finds first blood. A chaos goes down. Zope TPs to the right hand side. He does have a pool. This could be their opportunity to bring things back to a three on two. But with a Shelly pool, a dick head, and a gut shield, this is looking very challenging for SK Gaming. Quite the uphill battle. Can they make a play happen? It'd be huge from OPE, but it's trickling down HP. 250 misses the pool as well. Tick is going to connect it. It's a three versus one. Yoshi, it is over. And Foot have got the spins and the pins. But most importantly, the win. They go through to the semi final. <laughs> and as I'm saying it, IRL spins from Semantic. You love to see it. Great energy, but what a series. SK did not give it to them lying down. They fought their hardest, but foot, go through. One of my favorite matches so far this year, for sure. We can't say it enough, but the history, you know, even for Semantic as well. He used to be with SK. It was a while back now. We sometimes forget it, but he used to be a part of SK. SK that have had a tough year so far, and this monthly final is not quite going to be it, though, but... We've seen so many uh, signs of progress on their side, really. Uh, if you look back at their, their beginning of 2023, it, it, it was very, very rough. It's looking better and better day by day. But Foot Esports are going to out-edge them this time around as they take the narrow 3-2 victory, locking them a spot into the quarter uh, semi-finals, rather. I agree, it's, it's been a tough year for Semantic for sure, as, as well with the Snapdragon Pro Series, you know, qualifying with SK and then missing out on Japan Masters because of the roster change. So great to see a big smile about their face, but Foot are still craving that monthly finals win. And I said coming into this one that whoever won this series would go all the way. I think it could be Foot. I think it could be Foot today. If SK got that win, I was gonna say the same for them. I'm batting for both sides. OP there with a rough game, but his supportive role was very much present nonetheless. It was just an outdraft for me. Foot absolutely landed the magic and got the stats to match. Yeah, it was a lovely final draft there from Foot. Absolutely loved it. Overall, this match is an incredible one, to be honest. If you guys are just tuning in, I recommend watching this one back. Semantic is going to be the community voted MVP over on event.brawlstars.com. I mean, he had a fantastic series. Just that two set for me was enough to grant him that title. Very fitting, isn't it? Isn't it? I mean, going into that matchup, Semantic, he found some magic, didn't he? Do you know why? It's because of the juice, Teddy. That's what it was. <laughs> Look at him guzzling at the bottom of that can, searching for some winning magic. Found it with a Shelly. It's fair to say. <laughs> he was really, really looking to have an edge. They found it. But again, you know, commiserations to SK. I thought they put up a winning fight here today. Thoroughly deserving of a semi finals and just came a little bit short. Yeah, exactly that. I mean, they, they fought really well. Ope also just very recently joined the team. And so far, they're looking solid. I mean, this could have been a grand final worthy match. Just not quite this time around. And I'm sure that next month they'll come back even stronger. Well, there are hearts over at events.ballstars.com that are being made and some being broken. That's for sure. Teddy, welcome to the winning side. I think Trout's down today. We're, we're neck and neck now as a result of that one. But what a close one. This next one, I feel, could be very much the same story. Navi, last month's monthly finals, or the month prior to that. It kind of feels weird to say it, but you know, nonetheless, the April monthly final champions of Navi go up against Reply to those who are craving their first. MMA, Cube, and Angel Boy for Navi. They were able to bathe in riches last month with their win. And their first win actually in the EMEA region in the BSC. They were on cloud nine. They just surprised us all. Coming in big with their quarterfinals win against Dogs the Lobster, a semifinals win against Team Kesso, but their big grand finals win against SK Gaming. And that was a huge moment for them. So they have got so much backing behind them, not just the Navi Nation, might I add, because they come out in all their numbers, but They've got that ability in their brains to come in very, very confident. Reply Totem. I mean, this Teddy is the team which won the Mobile Masters in Japan for the Snapdragon Pro Series. They became the champions of the world there. I mean, 
it's going to be one of those moments where who's going to come out on top on this one? It's such a tough call. I mean, can you believe that Ripley Totem has yet to win a monthly final this year? Like last year, they were so good, so strong, so dominant. They're still very much good, don't get me wrong. I still think they might be the best team in the MEA, maybe after Zeta. But it's a really tough call. They just haven't quite managed to get the performance we kind of expect from them at this point. Uh, at least in the BSC, as you said, at Mobile Masters, they performed admirably well, taking the whole thing home and beating the world champions in Crazy Raccoon. So I think they're coming in hot for this one. I think they have a lot to prove still this year in the BSC. And as much as I absolutely adore Na'Vi and want to see Na'Vi succeed, I'm, I'm siding with Reply Totem. I want to see some uh, Joker action and uh, the Maru Maori duo at play as well. Well, I do agree. Reply Totem last year had a phenomenal run, but it wasn't until July when they actually got their first Grand Finals win. Will it be June for them this time around? That's the question. I, I do worry a bit for Reply Totem. I'll be honest and I'll tell you why. And I don't keep banging on about Stat and Pro Series, but realistically, we've seen a lot from Reply Totem from that very scene. And they, they won Mobile Masters. Great. They did, I mean, they, they were champions. Like, there's no doubt about it. And at land setting, they were phenomenal. But the question for me is, have they fallen off a little bit since then? Has this honeymoon period extended a little bit too long? Because they didn't make the challenge season through split one. They're, they're, they're having to re-compete you know, now through split two to try to get themselves in and even qualify for that stage now. And the results haven't been the greatest. I mean, they've got one grand finals win in this cup stages of six in the Snapdragon Pro Series to the two of SK and, and Humble and One Trick Ponies and others. You know, they've got to really today prove to me at least that they have not fallen off the top. You've got to remember, last month they left in the, the quarterfinal stages against Split Esports. That was their worst performance to date. Can they turn things around today? Because so far, it hasn't been smooth sailing in the BSC. I'm with you. I'm absolutely with you. I think it's uh, one of the teams that still has a lot to prove this year. Now, with that being said, they are second in the EMEA leaderboard. So <laughs> true, like, they true. Have, they have something to give me that. <laughs> but not all that much either. And now we are third. My point is that they're neck and neck right now. And it's only about 30 points, I believe, separating both teams roughly, which means that this win will potentially help Na'Vi catch up and just, you know, get an extra comfy spot in the BSC for the end of the year. As, I mean, both teams are looking very solid for both Worlds and the LCQ. They want to ensure and the only way to do that is to get as many points as possible, especially when you can take them away from your close competitors. Well said, well said. Right, Totem, put on Twitter the other day actually as well, that they have got every finishing place so far this year, except that grand finals win. So is it their time today to be able to do so? Oh my word, what a poll. And that's there's a lot actually for Reply Totem here, I feel, because Navi Nation have got the numbers behind say. this. Yeah. Normally, Navi's polls are 90% as a standard. You know, 95 to 98 is pretty much where they will always inevitably sit. So actually, a lot of fans coming out here today for Reply Totem, and clearly a lot of their recent accomplishments backing that very idea. So Spike fan for Navi, bit weird for me. Barley and Ruffs, Barley band, Shelly band and Ruffs is more my kind of flavor here for Applied Totem. But hey ho, maybe Navi have got something tankier up their sleeves, hence that first M's pick for Applied Totem, which can shred through the safe as well as just have that safety insurance policy against those tankier brutes. Anita pick brought in one of the iconic Navi picks as well. Even when Nita wasn't as meta as she's right now, because don't get me wrong, Nita's in a good place. She's pretty strong and it's hard for me to admit it because I don't like Nita. You hate but it. <laughs> she is in a pretty good place and she is finding some really good play pretty much only in high set competitive level, occasionally maybe in Pro Bowl or, or here and there in Gem Grab 2. Uh, but Hot Potato is absolutely uh, the sort of map where you want that Nita in. It's going to be very strong at using the, the speed gear and the bushes, get up close and get some nice shots around the corners as well. 
but that bear, if it gets to the safe, it's going to be dealing a ton of damage, a shield with it, and if you're facing too many tanks, potentially the stun instead to play more defensive. It's very versatile, it's very strong, and it fits in a pretty similar role to Jesse, which is interesting to pair them up together. It's pretty rare to see them together, although Jesse does counter uh, Nita just a little bit, you know, if the bear is close up and the, the bounces uh, of the, the shots can, you know, be quite problematic. That is not going to be the case here. Dynamite's a great place actually for it here on uh, Hot Potato. Navi are oh, bringing out that awful comp that you get in Power League time and time again to stomp all over you. Reply to are not the team to play it against. I feel like they're going to be the ones actually which are going to be able to counter it pretty well. Leave the Nita, you know, without super on the safe and just focus on getting their damage in. But it is still a bit of a concern. Search for defense. I completely understand it. They've got to be very, very cautious. Ultimately, th th this is going to come down to the, the Jesse and the Nita to really just try to shred through things as quickly as possible. No hyper bear on the safe, no doubt about it on that star power side. Shocky as well, ideally, or spark plug rather than recall spring. Jesse's got so much ability to just absolutely annihilate the spawn side. And to add to that, they haven't got much range. That's the thing. Edgar going to come in for assassinations is edgy. I'll give it that. I mean, they're going to be looking for the dynamite pickup. That's, that's where their primary focus will be with that Edgar. Hey, Edgar has a 100% win rate so far today, so... Yeah! Oh, actually, I didn't watch this morning's show, so maybe not, maybe not. Don't quote me on this one, but in, in this show, he has a 100% win rate. In the and, sense, in the sense. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how well he's going to be doing against Surge, because, like, I would gladly pick a Surge into an Edgar. Also, the knockbacks from the M's are going to be pretty much exclusively used for the Edgar anyways, is the Jesse and the Nita don't necessarily want to get all that close either. So, I want to see it, but if anyone can make Edgar work, it's going to be Angel Boy, because he has been such a threat so far this year on those aggressive brawlers. He already was a big name in the previous years of the BSC, but I feel like so far this is looking to be his year. Yeah, he's been phenomenal, hasn't he, on those bus picks. Which, what, I thought he might actually maybe even bring in on this one, but look at this. Reply Totem have stormed this left-hand side, broken some space to be able to see the crossover there with MMA, and again, depriving him of that super. This is all about defensive, and I think now, yeah, Reply Totem need to just spread out a little bit here, get a bit of this clustering away of things. Look at that Joker just absolutely clearing house there. Now they have got to match this pace. Uh, good stuff from Reply Totem so far, Navi on the back foot, but we do have some util to work with, another Adgar jump. The turret is never going to be seeing the light of day, at least not until the respawn. And Angel Boy eventually does find Mari. Should be a pretty straightforward target. So far, every second that goes by is going to be favoring Reply Totem. They're happy to hold on to that position as they do still have a 43% lead. Yeah, no damage whatsoever so far for Navi. They found Joker. The jumping from Angel Boy is good. He's creating so much space, honestly. And everyone now needs to follow up behind it. Cooper's got super as well. MMA does as well, but that could be a waste of a bear. And it is. Mario will take care of that. Easy pickings. Oh, Cooper's value though as well. No super though. If he had super now, it would have been absolutely devastating. But the damage nonetheless is coming in finally for Navi. Starting to make this comp work. Uh, it was a tough death for Maru, putting in so much work just to die from a uh, Jesse bounce. But that happens. Nevertheless, Reply Totem still was over double the HP, almost double the HP on safe. Comparatively to Navi, to jump in from Angel Boy. Again, a free kill there onto Maru. But a jump in from Maru is going to give him a taste of his own medicine MMA as well. Can't quite commit there in the mid, and they're stacking up on the side of Reply Totem. Just got to make sure they dodge those shots from the Jesse, but Maru is going to be putting an end to her life. As No, he gets some nice shots onto the safe and doesn't really need the extra damage. He just needs to keep them at bay, and he'll do just that. Reply Totem securing game number one. I think they never can bring it back. I think this Edgar pick is such a good one. It's great against the M's in certain positions. It's fantastic against the Dynamite. I mean, it's a matter of time, I feel, before that is going to prevail to actually give 
what Cuban MMA need to get the connection on the safe. Let's see though. Replies have been playing it great. They are not unaware of the situation at hand. Look at the value. The value of Angel Boy there. The leaving Maori. I don't mind it necessarily, but we need Cuban a and MMA to have super, which they don't. So the damage is going to come in, but it's not nearly as good as it could be. Yeah, actually, I mean, it's fairly even, all things considered. I mean, the problem here for Navi is that since Angel Boy got pretty much all the kills and all the value, they had no bear, no turret, and that means no damage on save. The stun not quite going to connect there either. Angel Boy with some nice jukes. Maru does have super. Looking to get that kill onto Angel Boy. He will miss the jump, but the follow-up shot is going to connect and claim that kill. In the meantime, Joker is melting down that blue safe, and Navi are in a world of trouble. Yeah, it's over. It's, it's done. Uh, and Joker's been absolutely tearing with the M's. Maru's on max stacks on the surge. This was chalked, done, and dusted. Reply Totem, start things off on a high. It's exactly what you've got to do against a team like Navi, who are fresh off the back of a monthly finals grand finals win. They are the reigning champs. Reply Totem want to be able to say the same next month with a grand finals win this month. Yeah, I sometimes have this feeling, you know, with Navi that their drafts are like six steps ahead, but actually it's a circle, so they're really a step behind. And that was one of those instances, you know, where I, I, I think they tried too hard to deal with that Dynamite, which, don't get me wrong, is a, a threat on this map, especially facing uh, against that Nita and Jesse. But at the end of the day, uh, it just didn't really find much value elsewhere. As Joker, I mean, we see it on screen right now, was able to easily dispatch him and Merit an even more one-sided matchup. Reply Totem was a great draft and a very strong execution as well. Yeah, Joker was the threat for me, actually. Uh, I'm curious to see what the stats will say as well, if it says the same story. I think that Angel Boy played phenomenally well, but it's just that awareness of Reply Totem to not feed into the Jesse and the, and the, and the Nita. You know, when they've got those supers to hand, being really cautious around their positionings for it and preparing themselves to be able to counter up against it. Mary had a great round as well, that second game, no, no doubt about it there. And here it was just all over. But Reply Totem, or always one when it comes to draft to being able to handle the situation. Look at Maru as well. Didn't realize he got at that many kills, actually. Almost, no. Yeah, wow, he's flying. Absolutely flying. Angel Boy with a seven. Five to choke, two to Maori. But Reply Totem can see through that kind of. I don't want to say sort of needs to just eat cheese because it's not necessarily cheese, but they are a team that can see it coming and they know how to handle it. And Navi might have been underestimating them a little bit in that first set. We'll see going into Bounty up next dry season whether they'll do the same or learn from it. Dry season is going to be a very, very different map. Obviously, Bounty as a whole tends to be just a little bit more passive, but that's the kind of game mode where Navi comes in and changes the expectations. I want to see some aggressive ideas again. That is what tends to be the most successful for Navi. So far for Reply Totem, though, None of those in mind, as they are going to go Ruff's first pick. Just very versatile, very standard. Standard, Not a brawl you can really hard counter on its own. It's going to be a gene to match it so far, as well as a Mr. P. So a bit more classic here on the side of Navi, the Mr. P that has recently been uh, making waves in the meta, where it hadn't been really seen for a very long time, but it's been played and it's been successful here and there. Yeah, I think we've seen more Mr. P today than we have the entire year so far, right? Um, and the win rates seem to be reflecting some of the hype. I don't know whether it's a go-to thing for me yet. Yet. Uh, I mean, maybe it will develop a bit more. But so far, so good. Shelly, though, is where my eyes are always at, you know? If that brawl is not banned, you should be picking it, realistically. I mean, it's, it's basically viable everywhere. I saw SK Gaming playing it in Quals on Kaboom Canyon, and they still got the wins. Uh, I mean, if you can play it on Kaboom Canyon, you can play it anywhere. Mandy coming in for Navi, a brawl that I'm not a fan of. I don't rate her. I don't think she should be played here, but 
nonetheless a very strong super a, a devastating super but you gotta line it up and you don't get it frequently so if you miss that open opportunity and your opposition just are able to foresee it coming or are able to juke around it you haven't really got much in your kit that's going to help. Maybe you can find some angles here and there to really kind of suppress the situation, especially on a map like Dry Season in the back spawn areas, maybe. But I don't know how much of a fan I am of this, to be completely honest. And uh, the Plyo Totem have got all the abilities to break the map. Navi have got none of that, except for the gene pools here and there. So it's a risky comp. This could be Reply Totem taking the set. Let's find out. I do like this trend of seeing more and more often the Shellies to try to deal with Gene Pulse, right? Because if you pull the Shelly, I mean, it's the Gene that dies, realistically. Uh, so those sort of ideas are becoming more and more common and more and more of a go-to. So far, Blue Star was easily won over by Reply Totem and Joker is finding some good value as well with his shots, getting closer and closer to his super once he gets one and he does right now this could be the way to find one if not more openings it's gonna be a miss but they still find a kill onto cube that had to funnel away and i snipe from angel boy to get the trade but nevertheless it's still a two-story lead in favor of reply totem they found a nice little spot isn't he angel boy there just really tapping the shots and keeping reply Totem from a bay but they find themselves in this position again could prove costly now to sit behind the wall now the gadget pop potentially for MMA didn't come actually so interesting to see but they can just sit back and allow navi to make the push with angel boy having no super they can't really do much behind these walls too much maybe a gadget here and there can help but let's see another portal and now the gadget pop is there now the push through not so much really the players are not standing their ground and 30 seconds down on the clock cube does have a pull and one kill is all it takes if that kill is on to Maori. With some trades here and there, things could still very much change. Supply drop plays down. And so far, Joker is getting more and more tanky. The super from Joker is going to be missed. The second one he whiffes, but it does buy some time. Super from Angel Boy only finds one connection. That's very important. Otherwise, he would be able to chain supers. But that's not going to be the case. The pool is onto a sandbag. Maori finds Cube and Reply Totem take a game number one here in Bounty. Exactly what I was worried about for Navi, honestly. You know, the sandbags there just going to really counteract the gene. There was only one man he super the entire game. He got some damage onto the roughs. That was it. No follow up there either. And Reply System have got a comp that's not only good on the offensive, but good on the defensive. It, it fits both molds and it worked out perfectly for them. They didn't look like they were really struggling too much. Nearly. Spirits there from Cube. Oh, what a takedown, actually, into Maori. Early clay pigeon pop of the gadget from Maori will give some good range, but so far it is the lead with Navi, and that was kind of surprising to me. Maori got a bit overextended there. Yeah, I, 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 I don't want to say unlucky because technically it's just like bad placement. It, it, it was a split second, really, you know. The sandbag, I think he expected it to tank it, but he didn't have the chance to move yet, so he got prioritized for that Mandy shot and ended up going down. Gadget from Angel Boy not going to find a connection just yet. Navi still with that one star lead from that opening kill. Joker is low HP, but some very, very good dodges. And MMA is low himself. Cube is tempted to go for a pull, but it's a Shelly with super. And my friend, doesn't sound like a good idea. Yeah, I wonder whether he's going to do it at some point. If they can whittle Maru down, you can take down the Shellys with super regardless. It's not undoable, but... It can be something which can be heavily memed later looking back on things, so they wouldn't want that. Big taps though there from the Gene side, keeping Reply Token clustered. Might be to their advantage though, so they are running field promotion on the rough, so they're actually gonna benefit off the back of those moments. Nonetheless though, just a one-star differential here, and it could be all it takes. Stroke is low here. That's the survive on Maru trying to find it. Oh, that's the super we're waiting for from Angel Boy. They're extending the lead now in the final, in the final moments. It took a game and 80% of the second one to really see that Mandy at play. But it seems like they found their groove as right now Angel Boy is sitting casually on five stars as Navi pick up a dominant win here, evening things out one each for this bounty set. Interesting stuff.
I wasn't expecting it to be theirs, to be honest, especially when you look back at the last game. But OK, I'm listening, Navi. I'm listening. Tell me more, you know, because realistically, I think the reply to comp is more of the safer one. I, I feel like that is the one that should more often than not kind of survive through to prevail. But they can deprive Angel Boy like they did in the first game and maybe not can see that early death. Oh, Maru, as I'm saying it, could be history repeating. They back off now, but that was a bit of a shaky start. The blue star is with Totem, and they are back in their spawn where they want to be. Yeah, that is very different. And, you know, that is the re repeatable success formula that they did have in that first game. The ability to get that blue star and make it out alive, giving you the lead and enabling you to play defensively in game two. Navi were able to get the kill after that blue star was picked up and replied to them not quite as efficient on the offense as they were on the on the defense. Gotta get a bit of utility behind this realistically there. A couple of shots here and there. Yeah, Mari now has supply drop over to Joker. So be careful to pick it up. Hitting up now, Maru. And just sit behind this cube low here as well in the mid. Angel Boy gets a lovely gadget. The follow up. Oh, great juke from Joker. He needed to make sure he landed that timing, and he did. So these gadgets from Angel Boy are all exacerbated now. They've got to go the aggressive, and Cube is overzealous there and gets punished for it. Big, big snap there from Maru. The gadgets follow up. Reply Totem are now feeling the groove. Angel Boy is close to a super that could be huge if he gets some tags across the board, maybe even some kills. He's not there just yet. Maru has a super as well to try to dissuade any aggression on that right hand side, but he got, does get tagged quite low HP. Needs to be very careful here, because five stars can quickly happen, but Joker finds Q. Maru is just running down MMA. Angel Boy is going to be his next victim, and Maru finishes the game with five stars. 11 for reply to him, a flawless game as they win over this second set. Two sets to zero and Navi are starting to really feel the heat. I hate to say it, we talked about it, you know, back in April, but Navi do have those moments when it comes to drafts that are sometimes questionable. Six steps you know? ahead, one behind. Yeah, that very thing, you know, and Reply Totem are not the team to take prisoners when it comes to drafts, you know. I would argue that they are possibly one of the best teams in the world when it comes to drafts. So there's not really anything in which they're going to you know, not expect, not see through, you know, and they're getting it right today. You know, Navi are not really displaying to me that draft awareness. And the question, therefore, you know, back to April was, you know, what was the drafts like for their oppositions? And maybe it was more of a reflection on their lack of knowledge. But you know, Reply Toaster at the moment are just showing that they are ahead of the game, as they always tend to be. This could be the first sweep of the day if Navi do not pull up their socks. Yeah, yeah, I think one of the win conditions here wasn't necessarily the draft. I think field promotion was really important because yeah. it only really comes at play when you're playing defensively, right? Because otherwise you have to spread out to take more map control. That wasn't quite the case here in this third game. Same for the first, right? They could play defensively, get super buffed up, and then suddenly it's a lot harder to take you down. And that's more of an execution problem, really, because, you know, they have to adapt properly on the side of Navi and fight harder for that blue star or try to turn around the lead earlier into the game because the longer it takes, the harder it gets. Hot Zone, up next, Parallel Plays. A map that we've seen recently coming back in to the flow of things. And I'm really grateful for it, you know? I really do love this map in Hot Zone. It plays out very differently to a great deal of others. Some B-mid ideas. Look at the bands. That, that says a lot to me. We saw, you know, a lot of Sam in North America and EMEA last time around. Max coming as the first pick. Ash, band, is Mr. P and Sam for reply to some Leon, Jesse, Stu. These are outrageous bands for anywhere else. And that's why I love this map in particular. Lou still around, remember? Shelly coming in for Navi. And that might not be a bad thing for them to finally cotton on to the fact that, you know, it is probably one of the best brawlers in the meta. There's a reason why 99% of the time it is banned. But to pair it now 
We've got to also have something to counteract a lot of this you know, speed from the max, some control, some range. Personally, I think B's not a bad shout, but RT can be a good one. Body going to come in for them. Yes, something along those lines. It had to be. So I quite like the way it's shaping up, but what have Reply Totem got off their sleeve here, Teddy? Yeah, I like the max. I really, really do. Just very versatile and ton of team utility while still being that incredibly independent and strong brawler as well that's able to create space on its own and win duels. I do like things on the side of Na'Vi as well. I mean, you know, if you can't beat it, just join them with the uh, Shelly being brought in. We'll have a Barley at last here for Reply Totem. Can find some good value, especially uh, on the defensive side, at least early on. Can play it mid too. You can also play more aggressive with it, but a bit less typical, I, I, I guess. I don't mind it. I, I think it is a fairly decent pick, not the flashiest, however. I'm hoping to see something fun here, and I think Nita is going to be quite a, a fun one to bring out as their final pick on the side of Reply Totem. Navi, this is their chance to hit hard with some strong counters. I don't know about the Nita. I'm not sure whether it has a place here myself, but it's not terrible. Just wasn't the, the rounded brawler that I was expecting for the comp on the side of Reply Totem, to be honest. But I can get, I think it's got a place here. Uh, the Max as well. Not too bad in the mid for sure, and obviously, you know, time is of the essence when it comes to parallel plays, so having everyone get back into the actions is crucial. Willow gonna come in for Navi. I can understand it. I, I don't think I'm a fan of Willow on this particular map uh, and mode, if I'm honest. Um, but it can it can cause some havoc, you know. It, it can also find it quite easily on the left-hand side to kind of seek through the bushes. You know, it's more of a problem that I expect in Brawl simply because the mind control there gets so much more value. Yes, you can use mind control in Hot Zone to get your opposition away from the zone, and that can be very valuable, let's be honest. But the timings for it, they're kind of niche, and more often than not, for me in parallel plays, it's aggression, which is rewarded more so than control. But they're going to go up against the, the Barley, I imagine, in that particular matchup. Let's see how it fares. Yeah, I'm very curious about how this Willow is uh, going to come into play. I feel like, in theory, Barley has the better matchup, just purely in their thrower mechanics, right? But yeah, utility-wise, it's uh, very, very different. Uh, Navi was one of the teams that embraced Willow the most at release. It's been a while now since release, and we're not seeing the most Willow plays. Nevertheless, they could still make something happen with it. On the right-hand side, they are gaining ground consistently. Maori is going to end up going down. Angel Boy was a great pickup onto Maru, and this is looking incredible right now for Na'Vi as they have presence in both zones. Reply Totem in none. Big miss as well from Angel Boy there. And Joker was able to survive on in the meanwhile as well and really should have gone down. Maru going to tick down 600 HP on the left-hand side. But now that zone at the top right has already been captured by Reply Totem, so they can start to go more on the aggressive. But now have Navi also. Maru, very low here. And should be going down a bit fast. I think Q's missing a couple of shots here. Some nerves potentially showing here as the breakthrough from Joker is there as well. And he is now on the zone. Bring back MMA and Angel Boy to have to deal with him and buying valuable time. Uh, very well done by Navi. 18%. In their favor, as Reply Totem is trying desperately to make something happen. Shelly is definitely a problem. Cube is hitting, it, hitting a lot of shots as well from afar. And Maru goes down, has time to place a bear. Potentially dangerous here for Navi as MMA is mind controlling Joker, but I mean, he's just gonna end up going down as soon as the mind control ends. And now Sunlayer Reply Totem are catching up, and it's a bad timing here for Navi as well. Because it's getting closer and closer to the finish line, and Reply Totem, they could fully commit to that left zone. If they can take down Angel Boy now that they have the lead, they will have the advantage, but a kill there, and that should be enough to even fix out. The Barry is still there, though. Joker's still there as well. 3% in favor of Reply Totem, but their entire structure has fallen apart. This is what Reply Totem is so good at doing, is just keeping Navi in the back. Now Q's broken through, found a bit of space. There is time. Now, with everyone coming here from Navi, that it's Reply Totem in trouble. 
Now, Mario gets the takedown. There's still two members on his own. There's the mind control. The value actually from that is worth it. And Maru just going off into the zone, shooting his teammates. It's to the pleasure of Navi Nation. Nice win, but I don't know how convinced I am that it's going to last in the long run. I think Navi got a little bit of an opening and they seized it. Good for them. They're going to get another now, though, to even bring back a set. And they are behind. They have not got one on the board yet. It's a very tough spot. And I don't know if this is the comp to do it. I hope for their sake it is. Yeah, I feel like Reply Totem, they figured out, you know, how to deal with this Navi comp a little late. And if they manage to do a better job and defense early on, it could be a very different story. Uh, only time will tell. As Angel Boy gets a super off onto Maru, Joker bumping speed, trying to close the gap there onto Angel Boy. Instead, Cube will get the elimination and has super now as well. Maru goes down, big shot there from MMA. And so far, so good for Navi, a strong start again. Cube's going to struggle a bit here with the lack of speed. Yeah, and he will get taken care of. There comes out for Angel Boy. Can't really do much about it with that shield. Now all three members of Reply Totem starting to push their way forwards. And it's still MMA, the backbone at the moment with this Willow pick that I'm still not sold on, but has been getting some good values, some good moments from just keeping the control and waiting for the moment to really shine with it. Cube's still struggling against that Max. As you know he's going to. You know, it's such a slow, sluggish thing to have against you. But Navi are in the lead. Let's not forget, the aggression is all Reply Totem as it should and needs to be. But so far, Navi have got some time and they are back on that zone. Yeah, that two on two on the right side is just not really in Reply Totem's advantage because throwers are usually going to be in a 1v1 better on the defensive side, which is why the party has been struggling so much against the Willow because he just can't really close ground even if he gets some damage. There's just not much he can do to actually commit and the two on two on the zone has been going in favor of Navi regardless. 2-0 for this set and seems like uh, MMA wanted to check at what time he was supposed to start winning and it was about that time o'clock. <laughs> I mean, I just don't know how sold I was in the draft, you know? And for all intents and purposes, Navi shouldn't really have won that for me. I, I'm, I'm still very much open to Willow there being a shining star. I, I'm still not sold. But I'm more open to it. But, you know, the Bonnie and Max matchup, that's a Max matchup win every time you look at it. Is, is it just the Shelly? You know, is, that's the thing for me. Because it's Shelly now at that point in the game. That was that was a great Willow moment. That's where those things can connect and work wondrously well. But it's very niche. The scoreline there kind of really catered towards it, right? But other than that, it's all about just keeping that control. And I don't know. I know. I feel like Reply Totem should have ended it there. And they've given Navi a chance, and that could prove costly now. I agree with you. I, I mean, I think the draft was quite an oopsie here for Reply Totem. <laughs> we'll see if they manage to just be a little bit more consistent with their drafts for the remainder of this uh, series. As Navi, are we looking to switch things up? A nice set of Hot Zone for them, and trying to ride off that momentum, getting into set number four maybe even push things to a fifth and final. I mean, those stats say, that, say exactly what I was talking about. You know, Cube had an awful round. Gave out the least DPS, one kill to his name. It was effectively a three versus two for Reply Totem, in my opinion. Um, you know, so they've got to now, going into Gold on Gulch, go back to their winning ways. You know, look back at those first sets, see through those drafts and, and you know, I thought they had a good drop. That's why I'm a little bit concerned now. But nonetheless, Tick going to be their first pick coming in. The band's being great, which is a great one to have on this map. Grom, I think it's great too. And Max. But Navi, Gus, Max, and Gray as well. So showing some signs here, some similarities. And, and Shelly coming in as the first pick, as we saw in the previous set. And we know how that previous set went for them under those circumstances and the gene. Let's see, though. It's, it's actually quite a difficult map to make Shelly work. If you're going to use your super, then you're going to potentially take away your own bush if you're being pushed upon your spawn side area. And you want to obviously maintain that at all costs. Uh, you know, speed gear going to be of the essence in that respect for Shelly here. But 
it's not necessarily as straightforward. You are buying time. You are wanting your teammates to survive through until the gas closes in. So let's see whether Reply Totem can be able to go on the aggressive a bit more with their comp. Eve coming in to match the tick, which is a bit of an overtime idea. An RT, not a bad idea. I think it's very standard stuff from Reply Totem for Golden Gulch. Yeah, I think one of the questions for me as well was that Shelly pick is going to be how it's going to be used and how much value they're able to find in the early rounds without burning through their entire utility. We saw in the previous match, SK Foot, that when Shelly was using Knockout and they end up using all three gadgets in the first round, they'll probably win it, but then there's nothing left in the tank for rounds two and three, and that's where it gets really dangerous because closing the gap is the big challenge for that brawler. We'll see Sprout as their final pick to get uh, access to a thrower, get some shots over walls and, well, some more walls into the mix as well to block off areas. It's definitely a solid one here. I like to draft on both sides. I'm a little bit worried for Reply Totem and their ability to deal with that Shelly. Yeah, I am too. I like the Sprout final pick. It kind of had to be for me. Interesting that Penny is now starting to fall back a little bit because we tend to often see teams gravitate towards that here, but love the skin, by the way, that Maro's running. It's uh, definitely lighting up the map. But will it light up a win for a prize system? That's the question. Oh, huge gadget from Cube. Could, he could have got the kill there on Joker. I, I think there's a bit of also wave coming into play there because he had that one in the back. As far as I was concerned, the range surely was enough for him to be able to secure it, right? I think so too. I was pretty much thinking the exact same thing. But I guess it wasn't quite meant to be here for Navi. Joker Mero trying to close the gap. Cube is uh, in an awkward position. Will feed some of Mero's super. Ultimately, doesn't matter the most just yet. There's some nice flanking from Joker on the top side of the map. And he goes down. I think the gas actually doing just enough damage to take him down. Cube has a super as well. This is troublesome. The dickhead is going to be heading his way as well as the hatchlings. It's very messy, but it's a 3v1 and one that Maru should not be allowed to win. Navi pick up the first round and they seem to be on a bit of a win streak now. Look at this. Creepy with the right hand side, but they are spotted. I was worried if they were going to get through and yeah, Cube is so dangerous, right? So the amplified shots of the RT is where they need to be landing. MMA has one now, but it will relinquish itself in just a few moments. Oh, and that's the tap up again from Joker. But this is why I'm worried. You know, the Navi are starting to gain this momentum now. We've got that first round. It's still very early days in this set, but they are playing the comp well. You know, I like the idea of double stacking in that right hand side or triple stacking as it was and buying down the clock. Ventral Spirit's now coming out for MMA, giving everyone a bit low, just keeping them clustered. You know, that, that's kind of the way you, you want this for Navi as the time goes on. They've got all this utility, all the supers in the world, and I, I think they've got the bit of the edge now. Yeah, it's looking good for them. I agree. The gene pool available as well in combination with the Shelly super are going to be quite threatening. Joker is a super of his own, but that wall is going to be locking Joker and Maru out of the equation. It's a three on two, though. Maru was a gadget. Cube goes down somehow. Reply Totem turn around this situation. And now suddenly they're a round away from a match point. But let's see. MMA has got pull. Will he try and use it early on and be bold in that respect? We'll wait the timer down just a bit. Ideally, I kind of want to see Navi make that play. And it's going to be a tough thing to see if it goes wrong, but great control from Maru. Shots raining down to Cube, just forcing everyone down to this bottom left-hand corner. And much needed healing puffs there from the male to Angel Boy because he's taking a lot of shots there from Joker. Be cautious in that respect. Cube creeping his way forwards, wants to create some space, and I don't doubt that that is the way forwards. So far, Applied Totem really are shutting down a lot of these angles. And he can't really find the moment to pounce. Dickhead still in hand here for Maru. Because Cube overstays his welcome on 
the top side of the map. A nice shot there to connect from Joker. Tighead is going to be placed down at last. Angel Boy is low. Murray going for a wide flank, even into the gas. A two on three. Angel Boy now in a 1v2, and he's not going to be able to win that one. Reply Totem on match point. And now V. They need to step up here. It seems like their comp definitely has the capability of winning this one. But the execution needs to be cleaner. And I know they got what it takes, but it's time to show it now. Here we go. Sprays for Navi might not be enough. They need a win. And Reply Totem can sense that this could well be their moment to escape the curse of April and get through back into the semi-final stages where they like to be the most comfortable that we tend to see them. They're getting on the more on the aggressive now, pushing through big taps from Joker, who's really landing there. Everyone on the side of the nerve, he has got an amplified mark above their heads. I'm surprised for that reason that Joker's not popping Gadget there. I think yeah. he did in the end, but like, you know, it's a perfect time for it. And they were taking so much time around it, but I think Navi have come a little bit unhinged. They've got to go back to some of these plays that were making them shine through, but control is all with reply totem. There's no doubt about it. There is an early gene pool unlocked by MMA, and you know how deadly those can be. Cube also getting a bit aggressive. Needs to be very mindful. The thick head that's coming in now that will be taken care of very nicely by Q, Maru was an aggressive jump, gets melted down, and the warrior is a problem. They're low HP, Joker slipped through, but is that enough? A 1v1, oh! and a gas is gonna be settling it here in favor of Navi. What a clutch moment, but again, you know, <laughs> Angel Boy survived on. There's a great wall, but it's a bit too close for me, considering that replies didn't have got match point, and Navi haven't got a game yet in this set, but, you know, those moments you gotta embrace and try to replicate as best you can. Great value there from Major Boy. Has now a wall to hand. Might choose to use it early even, because the way that Reply Totem are separated a bit, they might be able to secure something from it. Still getting great splash. Maru, ooh, surprised that the pull wasn't there from MMA, but with splash damage, there's so many supers on the side of Reply Totem, and that gets me worried. The sprout wall is also not going to be the best we've ever seen here from Angel Boy. Needs to be very careful with the next one. He's going to call it back. Doesn't have unlimited gadgets either. Vengeful Spirits go through. Only connection onto Joker. The gas does find some value there, but Joker still finds Cube. MMA with the pool finds Maru. It's a two on two. And Maru is low HP. He's going to fall Joker now in a 1v2, but the gas again is going to be what settles it. And this time around, the seats are reversed and Reply Totem around away from winning this quarterfinal match. Fantastic stuff. Patience, perseverance. The whole package. Reply Totem are one round away from sealing it. And what a turn it will be for Navi, having gone from monthly finals champions of April to first to leave in the quarterfinals. Let's see, they've got still a great comp for it, but they're not really able to survive these final moments in the gas stages. Reply to some know it, posing in as well. We need to see more from MMA, we need to see a pull, an earlier pull. Make it an early three versus two, but there's been very reserving with that. And I just hope it doesn't come back to bite. MMA does have his sheen pull. Can it be as impactful as it was in round two? It wasn't enough, but it for sure gave them a huge boost and fighting chance. There's a kill, MMA. He's gonna get some more value, but it's Cube to settle it. And again, we'll be going to Navi. I believe that was set as well. Strong stuff from Navi. Now, I, I, I hate to dwell on it, but like, you know, towards the end, it's the final round. You can pull with the gene. You're not going to lose any, right. any utility for it. You know, it, it's not going to be a problem in that respect. But they didn't go for it. So I think being a little bit cheapish on the side of Navi here, you know, and I want to see more aggression from them because you kind of have to against the Fly Totem. You've got to match that vibe and obviously not be overly so, but they are doing that now. 
So be a bit careful. They are giving away a lot of value in terms of their HP, and that's going to feed supers left, right, and center. But very much a different situation now. Is this is kind of what you want to do against reply systems? Separate them out and try to make it that early three versus two. Sprint wall plays down. Apologies, I thought it was set, but not quite. That's just how strong Navi were looking at that. They had another game already locked in. Some tags from Joker from afar. Nearly tags all three again. Not quite. And so far, things seem barely even. No supers available on either side. As the gas is starting to spawn in. First on the bottom and top, now on the sides as well. And this is where things can get dangerous. Maru is going to be embracing those walls for now. Maru locked in a two-on-two. -two, a scary one as well. There is Cube. He had that super, so realistically, there was nothing that Reply Totem could do at that point. And a round is picked up by Na'Vi, just one away from taking us to a fifth. Yeah, this is what Na'Vi can do sometimes, and then they just claw it back somehow, some way. I think Reply Totem now really do need just to nip this in the butt and get this one done. We saw it last time around. They do find within themselves to persevere. It's, it's one of the great qualities actually about Navi. They never count themselves out. And when they don't have a great month, they do come back stronger. No doubt about it. Let's see though, now. Reply Totem have got something to muster up here. They're only two rounds away from locking themselves in. But that one round that went the way of Navi now really could be such a costly one for Reply Totem if they do not shut this down. Underestimating the Shelly has been one of the biggest mistakes any team has done so far in this CMEA monthly final. And this game might prove that right once again. Oh. A free kill onto that tick. Joker is next in line and Navi are bringing this one to a fifth and final set. Checking the time again. And it's time for set five here as Navi take us all the way. It could be time for their semi-finals appearance if Reply Totem do not get this one under the radar and back into control. I mean, they're running away with it at the moment. Uh, that final moments of Angel Boy, by the way, were phenomenal. Ban the Shelly, Reply Totem. You've lost both sets by not banning it. I think you've got to now at this point, unless you get first pick and then you can maybe like gamble with it. But you know, they really can't afford to make that same mistake. And that, you know, it's the elephant in the room, as far as I'm concerned. It comes down to the skill at the end of the day and their ability to handle the pressure, but I just think you can't be you can't be leaving that brawler open right now in the draft. It's just too strong. All right, I'm gonna be quoting someone. I'm gonna let you guess who I'm quoting, right? <laughs> this could be the first sweep of the day. I believe that a very smart, very intelligent, very knowledgeable <laughs> caster I know once said that, and uh, personally, I vouch for the, very much the same ideas. Um, but it might not be going that way. You know, this might not be. And for, for my sake, what I will say is I'm glad that that's not the case because my prediction is Navi. So as I lost the predictions with the previous set against Vert, I said that the winner will still win today. I still stand by that. But it went to the fifth and final set, which goes to show how close and how hard those predictions for those two particular matches really were. Let's look at the stats. Look at that on the side of Navi. Doing very well, might I add here. And I think I was the only person to predict them to win this set. So let's, let's see how this one fares. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, Angel Boy playing fantastically, Cube as well. On Overall, for Na'Vi, has been very much a team effort, and they've been able to find great success with it as well. I, I still stand by what I said. Reply Totem need to stop underestimating the Shelly. It's two sets in a row now, and I mean, if this draft goes the same way, I wouldn't be surprised if they get reverse swept. It's been two consecutive sets, you know? That's, that's the worry, and this is very, very similar to what happened back in April for Reply Totem versus Foot. And it's happening again. Oh. It was a reverse sweep then, and it's the same story. Shelly's open, pick Shelly. It's one, two sets prior to this, and Reply Totem didn't ban it. 
And I hope for their sake that that was the play, that was their plan, you know, because I called it happening and it's happening. I, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's going to be a mid-pick now. Uh, they've got uh, the abundance of choice for their mid-brawler where they want to go with the, the... I'm assuming Crow's mid there, but it could be, obviously, like, the Gene. It could be the 8-bit. It could be running aggressive lane pro. I mean, crazy things have happened, but what do you make of it so far? I don't like what I'm seeing, Ark. <laughs> I really don't. I just think that, you know, like, for example, Gus is good. Like, Gus is strong. But I don't see how he's higher in a priority list than, than Shelly. And then again, I'm not a pro player, you know, so there are probably reasons, but we've seen what Shelly's been doing so far for, for Na'Vi, and we're going to see it again. And I'm really scared of it. But Reply Totem, hoping they prove me wrong, Ruffs is going to be brought in. Definitely not a bad pick. Love some Ruffs action. But I don't know if it's going to be enough. I don't know. There's some scary prospects. They've got the final pick on the side of Reply Totem. RT going to come in for, yeah, something more of a staple diet. I imagine that would be kind of like the mid controller. I might prefer Gem Carrier, but Penny going to come in. Has fallen off a little bit, just a touch, but still so versatile in terms of meta. This is going to be a banger for Reply Totem here for me. I mean, you know, it just has to be a, a, a winning draft for them. Oh, they're going home early. So... I don't know how I feel. I mean, they've got an opportunity here. I definitely feel like they can go on the aggressive against some of this comp. But I don't feel like so far, I'm siding with it. Whether this final brawl is going to change my mind, I, I, it doesn't. I, I, I was going to say, doesn't. let me guess, let me guess. Did it change your mind? <laughs> <laughs> Saved you there, right? I mean, I rate bow. I love playing it. It's a great brawler that I think is very underrated. But I just don't feel it works in this scenario here. I just, it's great on ladder, it gets great results. It's definitely fallen off as a mid, which I'm assuming it's taking here. I'm asking a lot of questions here, Teddy, because I'm a little bit confused. It's not the reply to some draft that I was expecting. I just don't know what, what, what they should draft either. You know what I mean? Like you're facing a Shelly, as you said, something aggressive would have been nice against the, the comp for the most part, but uh, like against the Shelly, you can't really go that aggressive. And RT as well is going to be melting you down up close once he gets his super, which seeing how much he's tapping already is not going to take forever. And already a first kill there from Cube. I, I mean, I don't want to call it now, but I kind of want to call it now. I see Navi going to the semifinals. Yeah, well, I saw, I saw them going to the semifinals from the beginning of the day, but you know, they... <laughs> this might be Let's the see. shortest match of the day. <laughs> Let's see. I, I mean, at the moment, there's definitely fair to say that Joker's struggling in this mid against the cute matchup against the RT. Now that Angel Boy's broken this entire left hand side, it does provide some space, and he's now struggling 17 HP, taken care of. This is the time to push, and Reply to him, know it. Great sandbags there from Maru, and it deflates a lot of what Cube was, you know, had up his sleeve, but you can catch up some lost time. The supply drops now coming in as well from Maru are really quite crucial. And let's see how a Joker's going to respond with that in mind, because they need something up their sleeve. They really do. They are behind here, but they are now starting to get some of their flow together and catching up. Yeah, it's definitely looking better, but the setup time was long. And that can be quite problematic because even though they've had control for so long, Navi still has a commanding lead when it comes to gem count. That is going to be a problem here for Reply Totem, especially as Joker gets melted down, forced to fall back and reset. Cube in the meantime is still able to keep the pressure up. Reply Totem are catching up at last. They really have found some more mid control. The mines will also slow down any progress, even if Navi find an opening. They won't be able to push up the mid as easily. The slow there onto Angel Boy is huge. That locks in a kill for Joker. Some nice troops from Joker as well, but he's low HP himself now. And Cube is not quite able to finish him off. That's gem number 10 and a countdown locked in for Reply Totem. A weak one though, because now if he can tie it up by picking up the next two gems that spawn. Yeah, but oh my word, Cube got so over comfortable there. There's no time. Well, that's, they managed to get a reset somehow, but like, I, I just don't see how they lose mid control here. MMA is too low. He's not the ideal gem carrier realistically here either. Gadget pop from Angel Boy, jumping from Maru. They stole it. Now they had this in the bag as far as I was concerned. They really did. And they blew it. That was so clutch. 
for Reply Totem. They needed a miracle play and a miracle play they got. But is that something they'll be able to repeat? Moving into game number two. It's match point now for Reply Totem and hope uh, that MMA knows it's match point o'clock now. <laughs> yeah, they got to turn the set around. I mean, the way they started it, I feel like they just, it was looking like, like you said, you want to call too soon. I think Cube also could have gadged it earlier towards the end of that last game and actually got the, the gems to drop, but I need to look back at the replay to see for sure, but, you know, that would have maybe made a difference there. I mean, uh, if they were not with Joker, it could have made somewhat of a difference. Slow there, big slow there for Mario, jumping, great synergy now. Reply to the start to communicate. They've probably been a bit quiet. They've been losing back to back, and it would be fair to say that they're probably, you know, feeling the front of it. Now, showing signs of life, at just the right time. Maybe it's not too little too late for them now. Four gems, mid control. Mario in a great spot. Let's see how Navi respond. It's a much better start on the side of Reply Totem. Maru is a supply drop. Going to be opening up the walls. Need some sandbags now to help him out. And Cube was careless. Bad communication on the side of Navi, and their gem carrier goes down. The gems will be retrieved by MMA, but certainly not ideal. As Reply Totem have a little bit of a lead, and Cube again. again gets stunned. Yeah, that should not happen at this level of play, whether it's the nerves or I don't know what. It is a problem here for Navi because Reply Totem are close to the finish line. Not again, Cube, please, thank gosh. <laughs> My word. It, it, it's happened time and time again. It wasn't just then, but it's happened a lot. It's, it's got to be very much more careful around those mines you know you can't continuously trigger those six gems now to the eight there's two in the mid here for reply totem so mary having jump here is very much something to keep an eye on here he could prove a saving grace and has time and time again big taps from cube now onto joker some space on the right hand side mary finds it sandbags go down now they are oh, in a world of hurt it's done it's chokes reply to steal it yet again and everything not one from their mistake the bow diff from Reply Totem, the mines that undermine any chance of success here for Na'Vi. Reply Totem are moving on to the semi-finals and Na'Vi are out in quarters. They did make it to first place last month, or the last monthly final, I guess, in April. This time around, it's gonna be an early loss that sends them home. Oh my word, I'm going to get a lot of stick from Traveler when it comes to predictions, but <laughs> let's stay on topic. I feel like the draft there didn't really... I don't know what to make of that fifth and final set, I'll be honest. I'd love to look back at the Twitch chalet to see the discussion for it, but uh, I wasn't sold on that being a winning comp, and, and I would put oh, it down to more so the mistakes of Navi, you know? More so their mistakes rather than, like, the reply to them just playing phenomenally well, because they were capitalizing on Navi's, you know, ignorance around the situation more often than not. You know, Mari was timing great runs there. The mines, uh, we were questioning Bo coming in as a pick, uh, and actually the amount of value that Joker got from those mines was you know, undeniable. I mean, I, I, I'm with you. I, I don't think the draft was very much a reply to Adam's favor. I think I personally prefer Navi's draft for this one. But the yeah. execution is what it kind of came down to. And I, I think some of the nerves maybe came up. Like, you shouldn't die twice in a row to bow mines as a gem carrier. That is a big blunder. And something that at this level of play, I mean, thank God Reply Totem punished them for that. Yeah, like you say, it comes down to the implementation, and those stats don't lie. I mean, there was so much more on the side of Reply Totem. Joker, the MVP, I mean, that's not a rare sight to see, is it? That's quite a frequency, but he is the first, I might add, to always say that regardless to how much attention is placed upon his shoulders, it is a team game. He'll be the first to say that Maru, and Maru did a fantastic job there as well, but Nonetheless, votes for you guys over at event.brawlstars.com. He is our MVP for today. Yeah, he's had an incredible series. And I mean, the team effort, as you said, was real. I think there's some, you know, ironing out to do with some of the, the drafts. I still think Shelly needs to be respected a little bit more by Reply Totem. But yes. we'll see throughout the day if they make those uh, adjustments. 
I thought that was the final nail, I'll be honest. And, uh, you know, because the previous sets leading up to that were that pattern. They didn't ban it, it was picked, and then now they got the win. So it seemed fitting that they win. But nonetheless, we are four quarterfinals down, two semifinals to come. What an eventful day has been so far in EMEA. Our next matchup will be Zeta Division up against One Trick Ponies. I cannot wait for this. Zeta are on their revenge arc, so to speak. They went out in the quarterfinals last month, so they are looking to do better this time round. We just saw Reply to them take the win in the quarterfinals as our final matchup, and we're going to see a bit more from them as well in a little segment coming up from them. But I'll catch you in a bit. Right, coming up now. Look at the latest results, for example, Worlds or last year Worlds, the Japanese have been dominating the scene, but I think we can definitely have a chance this year and try to beat them. I hope you guys are prepared because this year is going to be Europe's year. Not a single percentage so far captured by Tribe Gaming in A, and each and every one of them is trying to be the very first one to step on one of these circles, but it's just not happening. Zuan looks to pinch things in on the right side versus Maori. They're out of luck on the left side. Maori taken down over here, but Maori has so much health. Despite all of the fire that his Livy and Zuan have to offer, it's just not enough to take these guys down and reply totem 100 to 0% on game number two. Joker needs to hit some shots out here, but Tyrant's juking him so, so hard. Maori on the right side doing his best, but it isn't enough. Tribe Gaming in A. They take back the momentum and they take set number one. Yeah, Maori down the left hand side has to be cautious, but everybody's he's very low. Can't really make an aggressive push, but Reply Totem have to remain in the mid. Tyrant very low and it's all down to Zulan as we see him drop down the bottom as well as Libby. He's round the back for four seconds on the clock and Reply Totem, they might be doing a tribe back to them. If Tribe wants to stand a chance, Maru's going to be there to get the damage in, but I don't think Zulan can get the finish as Libby sliding down the left hand side. They're actually going to be flying hook in. Doesn't get the kill, maybe a little bit premature, maybe too aggressive, and that Reply Totem are going to be taking this one home. 2-2 in gem grab, gem fort, and Reply Totem fall back strongly to bring it to where it is now. But actually now going in, Tyrant's going to go down, and it's actually Maru going to claim all of the gems, take them back to Reply Totem's side. Does actually have the answer, got the spin on top of him, and can't get the reset just yet. Do the shots find it? They don't, but still, 10 seconds. It could be possible as Livy needs to stay alive on the right side. He does have a super in, but no health. Tyrant continues to push things in on the right side. Zulon trying to do whatever he can, but he's just out of range. And Reply Totem managed to take back the entire set. It's going to be a huge thorn in the side for Tribe Gaming NA. They have to dedicate two brawlers to take him down. And should he get that super, it's going to be extra troublesome. Maru almost even getting the takedown onto Tyrant. As Livy also on the right side, now jumping forward, taking the aggro approach. Maori immediately punishes that and looks to finish things off with Rocket Rain down from the right side. Side. Just a single jump in, a single super in for Maori could do it. There is the jump from Joker, and they take set number three. It's a comeback for Tribe Gaming in A. How is he going to get out of there? He has no super. The dodge has come in. Maori needs to be shut down. He's out of range. A takedown for Tribe Gaming in A as they run back with a countdown. Tyron, the absolute beast, coming in clutch for Tribe Gaming once more. He did it in the second. He's doing it in the fifth. Here he is. Spin as well. Super dropped on top of him, but they're too far ahead. Set number four. Here we come! Tyrant keeping Tribe in this one, they're not able to avoid a couple of those curveballs though, and that's going to give control to Totem, they're starting to aggress, Joker's got the 3k, he's got the kill, he's got the slow, the stick around comes in, Tyrant falls, as Libby falls, and Joker extends the lead to two! The biggest enemy right now is the lack of visibility of their enemy, Reply Totem know this so, so well, they're keeping Joker on that mid area, Maori now around the right side, can't receive the pass, just 15 seconds left, Reply Totem beating out the clock, an easy goal into the left side, and only if Tribe Gaming and A can bring this back in the last 10 seconds, can they stop this domination? This is going to be it. No chance of a Tribe victory. They remain the eternal second. And Reply Totem add another first place to their tally. And a crown, the Snapdragon Mobile Masters champion. Say hello, everyone, to your Snapdragon Mobile Masters champions.
big dreams into action. We got to mix action with the passion. Oh, oh, oh my word! What an incredible moment! We got to turn big dreams into action. We got to mix action with the passion. Time short, no time for the action. Be the first and last to make it happen. We got to turn big dreams into action. We got to mix action with the passion. Without further ado, let's get rolling. Welcome back to the Brawl Stars Championship monthly finals for EMEA. We've just had some absolutely insane games, especially those last two uh, quarterfinals. They were absolutely phenomenal, but we saw some incredible teams crawling through that upper bracket as well. Teddy, why don't you walk us through what we've seen so far? Well, it started off with Zeta Division taking a strong win against Amo Fantasy. They did fight for it, but Zeta prevailed. Humble also didn't quite manage to take down one trick ponies this time around, as our two last quarterfinals were both incredibly close. It came down to the fifth set as Foot Esports just narrowly beat out SK Gaming and Reply Totem were able to defeat Na'Vi. Yeah, always here at the Brawl Stars Championship, and specifically in MEA, our predictions, they never really go too well because everything's absolutely up in the air. We've been predicting all day long, and so far, at least for me and Ark, not so good. You seem to be doing a little bit better, Teddy. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I feel like quarterfinals two and three could absolutely have gone either way. I still think Ark is a madman for going Navi against Reply Totem, um, but I understand where, you know, we, we could have made some mistakes in, in quarterfinals two and three. Yeah, I mean, it's understandable to be fair. You know, they came off the, 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 the last monthly final with a big win. We pretty much went with what we saw at Masters and how well Reply Totem perform on the global stage. But I think for the next two, they're not that clean cut. I think the bottom one's definitely a bit closer than uh, that top one as well. Zeta Division, probably the clear cut favorite, but that uh, foot versus reply token game will be very, very close. As always, if you guys want to get your predictions in as well, make sure to go over to event.brawlstars.com. Place your predictions. We've got bling, coins, and everything going on over there. Some exclusive pins this month as well, Teddy. Absolutely. So it's the best viewing experience for the Brawl Stars Championship. And then you can flex to your friends that you have pins that they probably don't. Yeah, definitely so. Well, the next matchup is going to be One Trick Ponies versus Zeta Division. Absolutely phenomenal match coming up here. I think Zeta Division coming into this one as probably the heavy favorites. And I think I can get behind that. Jiro, Meow, and Naoi being the roster have performed so well today, so well throughout the rest of the year. And they're looking to try and guarantee themselves their third monthly final win of the year. Yeah, so far Zeta Division has been the theme to beat in EMEA. They've been a, a, a giant in the region, really. It was a bit of a surprise when, you know, Zeta Division dropped their East Asian teams to go for this particular roster amongst all of that. Never really found mainstream success. But this year, it's been their year winning both first and second monthly finals of the year, April. It wasn't quite the run they were hoping for, but they're back to claim that title back. And I mean, One Trick Ponies is in their way and I wouldn't want to be in Zeta Division's way. Yeah, definitely not. It seems wherever Zeta Division goes, wins seem to follow. But One Trick Ponies trying to disrupt that today. Gas, Filippo and Lars, they obviously did come out on top against Humble in their quarterfinal. So probably a bit of a closer matchup between that one and Zeta and Amo Fantasy. So possibly they're coming into this one just that little bit warm. Obviously had a bit less of a break as well, so the thumbs might still be warm. But this team, they have had their ups and downs this year. At the moment, they seem to be on their ups and they've got some much needed valuable points towards that leaderboard, considering I don't believe they were even in the top 10 coming in today. So much needed. And winning this will put them in a great position going on for the, for the second half of the year with uh, World Spots and LCQ. Yeah, I, I think you're being a little bit too generous. As much as I love One Trick Ponies, I think it's been quite a bit more downs than ups so far in, in 2023. And I mean, as a matter of fact, they're 11th right now on the uh, EMEA leaderboards for the BSC. And they got about a third of the points that number 10 has. So it, it's been a tough year. It's been a very tough year for One Trick Ponies. But as you said, they are a team that is incredibly capable as some very skilled players. And I think they just haven't really had their moment in a monthly final just yet. They're here, they won their quarterfinals match and they have some momentum to ride on. And I, where I do absolutely agree with you is that they are on their up right now. And this is their moment to strike hard. 
I was going to say, regardless of the rope, though, I kind of feel like this might be a Zeta Division sweep as much as I want to see, uh, you know, some really, really solid games. I just don't know if one-tree ponies are at the level to be able to compete. Draft coming in, though, we're going to be on split first. Shelly is the first pick, Griff, Willow, and Squeak as bans from Zeta Division. And on the other side, the Ruffs, Barley, and Stu bans from one-tree ponies. They've got their first pick coming in next. But from what we've seen of Shelly so far today, the nerfs that she received didn't really mean too much. Yeah, I mean, we've still seen her being played incredibly much, and not only is she being picked a lot, she's been winning an awful lot. So uh, it's been a threat, and One Trick Ponies better be ready to have a B, which is going to help get that big time damage from afar. The Pam to throw in some longevity with the healing station and be able to just survive a bit more, not just herself, but her teammates as well, of course. You know, two picks in a row for Zeta Division, and there's plenty of options still to go for. Jesse is going to be an interesting one here to bring into the mix. Not entirely sure what it's setting up for just yet. Maybe a thrower could be an idea as well. Barley and Willow are out of the equation, but there's still space for a tick or a sprout, in my opinion. Well, we'll see what they do choose to take out. I'm not 100% convinced by the Jesse, but obviously against the Pan Turret, it's pretty good. Putting the last is pretty good as well, so you can't really complain too much. We did see Tick come out on top in the last time we saw this map. It was obviously Foot against uh, SK Gaming when we last saw this, and Tick was actually the thrower that was victorious. One trip ponies, obviously we've got Willow and Barley both out of the way, um, so Sprout is still on the board, uh, and it might not be the worst of last picks. Yeah, I, I kind of like it, to be honest. So far, there's kind of nothing to necessarily deal with it. Plus, having a thrower is massively going to help deal with Ooh. any molasses or even with uh, healing stations that are going to be set behind walls. Dynamite is a spicy one, and I don't think it wins the 1v1 against Stick. What I do think it can be very good at is taking care of a Jesse turret that is out of reach and maybe keeping the Jesse at bay. I don't know. It's a risky pick, but I feel like if you're facing Zeta Division, you got to take some risks. You got to take your chances, and set one is the perfect place to do that. Yeah, I was about to say the same thing. You know, they're not coming into Swan the favorites by any means, so they need to take these riskier drafts because not only you know are they are they a less skill team, they've got less synergy because Zeta are kind of just at the top tier of everything at the moment. They're going to need to take some take some. Uh, deep dives into some different comps. So we'll see if it does work out for them so far. It's a 50-50, you know, both of them getting their home zones. It's just a question of whether or not now he can make use of the Shelly and take the win. And he does a wonderful job of that actually super and clay pigeon to get it done. Lars is coming to the rescue though. The tick head is going to be aggroed by the healing station. It's a short-lived healing station, but it does prevent a tragedy from happening on the left-hand side. Gas has super as well, which should keep Naoi just a little bit more at bay. A one for one trade on the right hand side. Naoi is aggressive, but the slow is too brutal. He goes down, and the tick head is not really gonna find any value. Filippo on the chase, looking for Meow, gets some value, but Naoi Ooh. super is out of the bush, nearly gets stunned, but not quite. Zeta Division so far, it seems like a little bit of a breeze. Yeah, Jiro's got another turret in the hands as well, and Meow dominating this left-hand side, completely open as well. He's going to be too shot if B comes anywhere near him, but so far, he's just keeping him at bay. Lovely stuff from him. Right side's already guaranteed, left side 3% off, and Zeta with a flying start. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a typical Shelly game, again, by the looks of it. <laughs> I... 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 I mean, my assumption is that in scrims, it doesn't do as well because there's not as much pressure and more skillful brawlers, you know, where hitting your shots matter a lot, are able to keep her somewhat at bay, keep their distance away from her. But when it comes to a monthly final and everyone is going to be at least to a certain extent nervous and stressed and under pressure, it becomes a lot harder to hit those shots as consistently. And then the Shelly kind of just shoots in your general direction and melts you down. But that is just my theory so far as, uh, as to why we've seen so much Shelly success. It's a good start from One Trick Ponies this time around, getting some capture time on both zones. But the map is getting opened up now and 
Now he is starting to get more aggressive as well. I mean, only just now have Gas and Jiro started hitting shots. It was a competition of who could miss more, I think, rather than hit more. Because it wasn't going well for either of them, but so far Gas has actually pushed onto the side. A little bit of help from Dynamite, obviously breaking up that wall as well. But Pam going aggressive now. <laughs> just narrowly stay alive to the side of Meow there, and that's a scrap so could be missed by Lars. Now he's trying to make the aggressive play and have something happen, but so far it seems like one-trip ponies are in a much, much better position as they're getting that aggressive side and just the home side needed now. Yeah, that's looking fantastic for them. Now we're gonna get melted down as well. Filippo just having a run at it. Meow not quite gonna get stunned, and the tick ahead is gonna be able to still find some value, but all it's gonna do really is Take down the honey molasses from uh, gas. Filippo looking to close the distance as Lars is pushing up to the zone as well. He does get slow, takes a lot of damage, ends up going down. And gas also not in ideal position, even though one trick ponies at such a dominant game, it's only a matter of 20% now. Yeah, I just love how much faith Zeta Division have in their teammates to be able to get the work done. They're just holding this left hand side. Well, not very successful anymore. <laughs> and, Zeta, uh, and now he was just trying to get that right-hand side done, but it looks like one-trip ponies are going to take this one. But, you know, they had the faith in their teammate. They knew he was going to get the work done. They tried to hold the left-hand side, but after the B uh, went down on the right, they kind of crumbled on the left as well. So a bit of a tough one, making it 1-1 one, one now, and this could be the start that one-trip ponies need. It was much better, absolutely. I got a bit scared towards the end for one-trick ponies because they had a commanding lead in enemy territory as well, right? As you said, only their homes are left to capture, and that took an incredibly long amount of time to get through. But eventually they got the job done, and we move on to game number three, the decider here for Split, as Garrow is pushed up incredibly aggressive and still hitting shots against the bee in the bush, just hoping to buy up some time doesn't matter if he's not in the zone either he's just preventing any further aggression from gas yeah really nice from both Maui and Meow here as well they played it so passive but Filippo was just holding his uh, his stun for so long Jiro and Gas just trying to take each other out now and it's actually gonna be Filippo who helps out first and gets the job done on the right hand side Gas now holding the right hand side just as he wanted in the previous one now he needs to use this movement speed to his advantage with Clay Pigeon coming through as well but it's actually one trip ponies who have been getting the majority of, uh, of both sides here yeah, it's not easy for Gero here to play the dodge duel when he doesn't have any bushes that hide his position. Gas is low HP, the Trike is not going to connect, and Gero is not going to whiff his shot. See, the division was a small lead, but it's looking better for sure, as the turret is creating some more space. Buying some more time, but only so much as Garrow is going to be slow now. The charge shot does find its target, but it's only a one for one trade at the end. Now he is going to get stunned. Good value there from Filippo, but Meow was a clutch last arrive. It's going to stay up for a bit longer and try to keep that right zone from being captured by Gas. This is where Split gets a bit sketchy when they're trying to go for both sides, but Gas just auto him towards that head there and it's going to pick him up anyway. If it stays like this, they are going to be taking the win. A little bit of a pinch across from Meow. Nice stuff from him. Super available as well. Dynamite's not hitting the most shots in their band. They did activate as well, adding a little bit more percentage. They're just trying to hold that right hand side now. Zeta have the lead. They have all the control and they don't really have to push anywhere. Yeah, the problem is a single good fight here for One Trick Ponies could do the job. As the right zone is going to be very pinchable as they kind of have no way of taking care of Filippo on the left now. He has uh, taken permanent position on that left hand side. Meow has a super, so does Garrow. That could be the opener here for Zeta. 25 seconds left and slowly but surely one trick ponies are gonna have to make a push for it and they're going for it now Lars pushed forward but a tick head is gonna find a connection and that is huge now they have a chance to put pressure both on the right and the left side and gas on his own there's nothing he can do Zeta the vision will be picking up this opening set one trick ponies gave them an incredible fight but it just didn't quite cut it yeah, Zayt played that really, really smartly. It was just 
they just played it passive until they needed to make the push and they never really needed to. So it was actually one trip ponies who kind of just pushed into them. They went for a bit of a flank. Shelly was always going to be waiting there. Supers off, tickheads coming in. They get the takedowns and they just slot into the zone and take even more of a lead. So really nice stuff from Zeta Division there. They just the smarter team that they've got more synergy and that's just how it that's just how it is you know they are probably the best team in europe at the moment yeah no i, I i'm with you there i they looked really strong uh overall I, I think otp was doing a very solid job but as you said you know at the end of the day they needed to take some really tough decisions towards the end and say that the vision they were in the driver's seat just having that lead earlier on in that final game and they could kind of just set up the pacing of that end game make sure that you know if there's too much commitment to one zone Zeta can just move on to the left because they have enough of a lead that suddenly one trick ponies need to both keep attacking the right and go back to defend the left and that's just not really going to be happening some good openings and OTP, I, I think they were waiting for an opportunity at the end. It just took too long to find one, so they had to just kind of rush it, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it seems like a lose-lose situation no matter like what they were going to do. They maybe did leave it a little bit too late. 25 seconds on the clock, and they're already at 10% behind. They're going to need to get everybody killed, get 10 seconds on the zone, 15 seconds on the on the zone to be able to take the win, and you just left that a little bit too late in my eyes for one trip ponies there. So Zeta Division going to be obviously with the, the more dominant stats. Well, actually, on average, probably fairly close. 665 for one trip ponies, 749 for Zeta Division. Do have that little bit more DPS as well, which doesn't surprise me considering how well uh, we saw that Jesse play just holding down that right hand side and tick as well does usually qu get quite a lot of DPS on a map like this. Yeah, I think that if anything, even though Zeta did end up picking up this first set, OTP definitely showed that they are a threat and that the percentage we saw uh, everyone, you know, uh, the result of everyone's predictions on eventofbrawlstars.com is much, much, much more narrow than what it uh, did seem to indicate because so far it's a solid performance from OTP. Just need a couple more plays to go their way and they could absolutely pick up a set two or me maybe even the entire match. They got to set themselves up for success first and that draft on field goal is going to be instrumental towards that. Yeah, they really do need a very, very good draft on a map like this. We know Reply Totem, uh, uh, Reply Totem, sorry. Uh, Zeta Division are usually very, very good with their drafts. Inzo helps out with that quite a lot. And the players, extremely knowledgeable about the game as it is. We're going to see a Poco first pick from One Trick Ponies. And honestly, that's not what I expected. Looking at the bands, they've clearly wanted that from the start. M, Shelly and B, all pretty good against that, those kind of Poco tanky comps. So I'm not surprised they got rid of those. But Zeta Division, they've actually kind of, I feel, maybe assisted them in it. They've banned out the Crow themselves, banned out the Shelly and obviously uh, Max is probably quite good with the poker as well, but banning out that crow definitely assisted what one trip ponies are going to want to go for. They're going to go with the stew. It's pretty versatile, not going to be the best if Poco does choose to slot in with some tanks, but obviously Zeta Division have got this last pick, so it's quite difficult for one trip ponies to, uh, to just go for a very, very tanky comp without considering something else as well. Ooh, we'll see a Griff at play. Not the brawler that we see the most at the moment. Sometimes we see teams try to experiment a little bit with it because it did used to be a staple of the meta and it fits in that similar role that brawlers like B and M do where they're fantastic against tanks, but they're still very much a threat against anything else, really. So having that level of versatility with some wall breaks thrown into the mix as well, which most anti-tanks don't really have much to offer, uh, is, is going to be a very interesting addition to their comp here, as we'll see a Bonnie joining the ranks of one-trick ponies. Not a bad pick here at all. You can play that speed gear in your bush in the mid, play it very safe, and then as soon as you have that super and you see an opening, go for that jump in, and more often than not, uh, it will result in one, if not more, kills in your favor. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, I, I do like the Bonnie pick. Pairs fairly well with Poco. If you get some heals just before you jump in, you can have a decent amount of HP in the other form as well. But Carl's going to be their last pick, and I do like it. They've gone pretty versatile here. They kind of forced maybe a Griff out of one-trip ponies and then pivoted that little bit more. So now if Griff does choose to break up, Bonnie and Carl are still going to be able to do a decent job, and Poco maybe will struggle just a little bit. They're actually going to go for the Buster because they're going to have this, uh, this gadget that's going to be sucking them in, taking them out of super, stuff like that. And uh, if used correctly, it slows them down and it allows the teammates to, uh, to hit them up as well. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't mind it, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I think it's 
a very decent pick on this map. I want to see how they actually uh, put it at play because so far Buster has been uh, bringing out some questionable results so far today. But Zeta Division always come with a plan and have uh, faith in their ability to execute it properly. I think that looking at the draft, it seems fairly even to my eyes. Let's see how it plays out. Yeah, if I honestly kind of prefer the one-trick ponies comp. I don't know. I just don't know about Buster here in, in comparison to some of the brawls that we're seeing come out. But there's the heal as well. I, I don't know if his teammate didn't tell him the heal was coming or what, because I think he could have walked that in if he was just a little bit more ambitious with it there. But Jump comes down. Felipe not going to be able to get the heals off there. But this might be a walk as well. Paul comes in, though, and the takedown's there. Great defense from Zeta. But I'm still thinking maybe they could have had an earlier goal. I, I think so, too. I mean, I'm not 100% certain. Also, there could always have been the, an earlier pull from Naui, right? to get the ball uh, away from Shaku. So I'm not entirely certain, but I, I was thinking the exact same thing though, that maybe there was a, a play to be had there. Nice pickup from Filippo, but is that enough to score? Pass now to Shaku, short shot, and the dash from Garo is not quite enough to dive onto that ball and save that goal from happening. One trick ponies to open up the scoreboard. Yeah, that really was beautiful. You could just see it in motion there as the flying hook forward. Nubi had his super, so could execute a goal like that. But Zeta, they need to think fast because they've got this tankier comp. If the map starts to get broken up or something like that, then it's going to be in a bit of bit of an issue if Stu does break it up that a little bit more. But now he needs to be cautious. Out comes a nice grip super there. Shouldn't be too far off cycling it. And he does actually get the cycle, but no value out of the second. Lars is low, just hoping to get another tag or two for his super. And it's going to be... Fat those. Actually, no super just yet. The train now. Is that enough for the card to defend? No. The pool is on point from now. Preventing any attempts from saving that goal. 40 seconds left. And we're all even. Yeah, nice super from Meow. Does get the trade yet again, but Jiro's actually going to go down. Jump comes up, there goes the pass through, but no, they both get taken quickly down by a beautiful super and a beautiful buster shot. And as quick as that, it flips on its head and Zeta Division take game one of Brawl Ball. We've questioned a bunch of buster picks so far today, whether it was at the draft stage or after the set was done and dusted. This time around, I mean, I have full faith. <laughs> Full pay. That was a convincing buster. He was the key element in their defense, saving up those goal opportunities that one trick ponies had. And in their offense as well, pretty much, you know, single handedly securing both goals. Yeah, I mean, here's another one as well, but this time it's actually for one trip ponies waiting on the clock just a little bit, which doesn't seem too meaningful. We're still two minutes and 10 seconds on the clock, but every second matters clearly uh, to the side of one trip ponies here. Nice super coming out of Meow yet again, just a couple of sprinkles off another super. He throws out once more, gets the takedown. The heel comes out. That should be a pass forward, but actually he goes down. Now we can't get it either, and Jiro's left all alone. One pass forward and it would have been a goal, but nobody could grab the ball. Shaku is not healing up as he's still trying to scout Garrow. He's not able to do so. A shield pop by now and now. And Zeta Division slow things down just a little bit. There is a heal available for the Poco, so if Zeta gets over aggressive, there's going to be the solo screech plus the heal coming through, and that should defuse any aggressive ideas. Unless now he can somehow find an opening somewhere. Things are looking challenging. Some nice damage onto Shaku. At last, uh, Super from Lars comes through. Now he does end up going down, but HP-wise, it's low across the board. Just no opportunity to close it out here for Garrow. And one trick bonus, his defense is still holding up very strong. Yeah, a minute left on the clock now, though. Super comes out of Meow there, gets the takedown, might be following up onto the Carl as well. He's low as well also. Bonnie just gets the super shot out. Jiro's still aggressing, gets one. Now he gets the other. Can Jiro make it out? He does just narrowly escape that Poco shot. May have survived it anyway, but it seems like Zeta Division are just trying to hold control now, waiting for their third member, and Lars over aggresses. A uh, big pick up there from Garo. Plays by mistake. The shot and pool is not quite going to be as graceful as the previous one. One trick ponies with 25 seconds left. All they need to do is defend that ball, but it's not that easy of a task. Now he has shield as well, and Filippo is gonna fall for it. Takes a lot of damage, and eventually now he takes him away from a distance. Garrow 
Uh, super as well. It's only Lars left alive. They're aiming to take him down here. They'll do so successfully. A shield from Naoi. The pass can be outslotted in, and he does. Zeta Division bring it back and direction overtime. Beautiful closing second goal there, and the only person with the super is Meow. These unbreakable walls aren't going to help him out too much, though, and he needs to try and get a successful super off or at least aim for a goal. Shots coming through, Jiro desperately in need of his, always his mobility is going to be absolutely terrible, and that's not where you want us to be. Good super, uh, Meow doesn't really get much on the return, but Jiro's going to waste his super once more as well, and still a bit of a stalemate, but it seems like his one-trip pony is moving off that little bit more. Yeah, it's definitely looking better for them right now. The ball is in a troublesome situation. Filippo is actually going for the jump there. Meow with a super. Is that enough? The pass to Shaku and nearly defends it. But it's not enough. Shaku slots it in. Beautiful teamwork from one trick ponies. And they're still fighting for it as they pick up this game. Yeah, that was a difficult one. I mean, they just need to have a much better start, I think, for Zeta Division. Great plays by One Trick Ponies out there. They, they they seem composed from the majority of the game. The ball remained in the corner until the closing seconds where we saw the equalizer, but they just couldn't hold on in that overtime. Giro playing this great now, cycling supers like nobody's business, but Filippo's aggressive. Yet again, it seems like they might get an early goal here. Filippo still in that portion of the map, and all of them go down, and One Trick Ponies yet again make the move. Over aggression early on here from Zeta Division and One Trick Ponies making sure to punish it. A dash in from Shiaku. Try to get a nice off angle. Miao is pushing up via super, but so does Shiaku now. The walls are going to be opened up and now we, I even missed it, but he goes for what I assume was another shot and pull and One Trick Ponies unable to defend it. I mean, I don't understand how the Zeta Division have such a poor start, and then after the goal, they just instantly spray into an offense. The jump coming out of Filippo, though, can't get the bounce back off that shield. Jira is still maintaining his aggression, which is surprising considering this car's got the super and maybe overly aggressive, but does come out on top of that. Stays alive, and Jaku very, very low. He's going to fall 3v2 now. Jira not in the best of healthy positions. Yeah, getting tagged up quite heavily. And scouting from Filippo. A goal here would be huge for both sides. And Seth is on the line. And beating Zeta Division would be an incredible challenge for One Trick Ponies. But doing it if they're two sets behind would be near impossible. They need this next goal to be theirs. And so far, they're setting themselves up for success. Garo goes down. Now he's trying his best to defend here. And the push is deflated successfully by Zeta Division's defense. Lars still gets a super, is going to use it. And a kill onto Naoi. Zeta Division looking to take back some center control, and they're doing so very well. Oh, that's beautiful from me out there, and a great move by Jiro. Maybe the super shot can be found. Just sneaks it in front of the body, and that's the set as quick as that. The game's just turned on its head. They go from defending to scoring the set winning goal within about 10 seconds. Beautiful stuff from Zeta Division, and that's two sets up now. As you said, that might be past the point of return for one trip ponies. It's gonna be extra difficult for this one, but they've shown signs of promise. That is certain. You have to remember as well that One Trick Ponies, it's been a tough year for them so far in the BSC. They haven't really been able to find much much success not qualifying for a bunch of monthly finals. And then the ones they did, they didn't exactly go for it either. So this is an important match for them so far. I think they are playing far beyond most people's expectations, but they don't really care about people's expectations. What they care about is locking in some more points so they can go to Worlds. And so far, they're not doing that just yet. I mean, a lot of people won't have expected them to even get to the semi-finals. Never mind put up a fight against Zeta Division, which they are doing. They might be two sets down, but they've played very, very well. And uh, obviously people not expecting this. Zeta Division might not expect expected it either. And that might be uh, why they're a little bit startled by some of the plays that One Trip Ponies are making. How explosive were the starts from One Trip Ponies as well? Getting them some great goals. But in the end, Zeta Division, they're just more calm, more composed, and they play for those late games. Stats-wise, it's fairly one-sided, but still competitive enough. I think that one-trick pronies were, were more of a threat with their positioning, and 
obviously damage is going to be high when uh, you're facing a Poco that just keeps chaining super after super because it takes so much more damage to just take down a player. Filippo still was 11 kills matching Garros and Miao just was at 300 DPS sitting on top of the throne for now. Can one trick ponies turn things around in set number three? Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. It really is. And I mean, one trick ponies, they've got the capability of reverse sweeping a lot of teams. Do I think they've got the capability of reverse sweeping the number one team in EU at the moment on a map and mode like Bounty Dry Season? Probably not. That's at least my point of view. I just feel like it's one of those modes where if you're in control, if you're calm, if you're very mechanically skilled, then you're going to be fine. And I think that is three things that describes Ace Division perfectly. Yeah, I'm absolutely with you. I think that uh, in theory, they got this in the back. But, I mean, if you listen to most people, in theory, the first two sets would have been expected to be much more cleaner for Zeta Division and One Trick Ponies. Whether or not they had the comp, or if, you know, it was a similar matchup, or even if they were out comp, they were able to find some success. They just gotta be a tiny bit more consistent because winning one game in each set and then having the third game be incredibly close like that, that's just not enough. You need those two games to be in your pocket for it to really count on the leaderboards. Yeah, well, Gene going to be the first pick of Zeta Division. RT is coming in from One Trip po One Trip Ponies is their first selection. And I do like the RT. I think the Gene's extremely good as well. We saw Gene being played, I think it was into a Shelly by Navi, and it, it didn't work, but they're not playing against a Shelly, at least yet. We got that Brock as the next pick from One Trick Ponies, and I do like it. You're gonna be able to break up the map, mold it to uh, to what you want, and I think maybe that's why we won't be seeing the Shelly. If they want to break up, play the RT, play the Brock range, then I think a Shelly being a short range brawler, at least for the most part, they probably won't select it. But it seems like Zeta Vision still have faith. Yeah, um, I mean, I feel like we've seen a lot of people trying to deal with Shelly, and where in theory they should be able to. But again, you know, with the, the nerves that comes into play when it comes to monthly finals, the pressure and the incredibly quick decisions you need to make, it is a brawler that can suddenly become even more threatening and seems like Zeta Division, they're happy to still bring it in regardless. Well, I do kind of like the Gus as well. Providing a shield to the Shelly, obviously going to be very, very good. and. Gene, not so much. Don't think they've got much of a, like a, a shield to Gene synergy there unless you're pulling someone extremely tanky in and he needs it. But definitely providing that to that Shelly, letting, letting her get in a good position, should I say, is going to be very, very instrumental. But in comes the roughs. And I honestly don't mind the one-trick ponies comp at all. They've got quite a bit of range. They've got the power-ups, probably playing field promotion as well. I don't hate it. Yeah, I don't mind it either. I, I, I think those comps are going to be a lot of fun because, you know, uh, three different throwers being banned out uh, means that you need some other ways around the, the, the map to open things up and find opportunities. I feel like both teams definitely have their claims with their comp. I'm going to be favoring Zeta Division still because I feel like Shelly is still going to be a threat. And I think same applies to Gene, you know, they're not exactly hard countering him either. So if he can hit the right pulls, he can find some good value. Yeah, well, Clay Pigeon off the start, allowed him to get the blue star. Gave him that range needed to be able to actually have a say in these matchups. Zato with this leader, not in a bad position whatsoever, really. Shelly Super behind this wall, you can't complain about that. As soon as someone comes aggressive, they are going to get hit with it. But the wall breaks from Brock, very, very meaningful. Yeah, that is uh, one of the instrumental keys to success here for one trick to pony that you were talking about getting those wall breaks will make a world of difference just removing angles for the shelly to be posted behind especially with bushes as she's already incredibly fast but speed gear makes her ridiculously fast still the blue star making the difference and at last to pull it doesn't matter if you're an RT and one of the hardest brawlers to pull because, you know, incredibly tanky, a super would melt down a gene. You have a Shelly, and that Shelly's gonna take you down easily. 
Yeah, that was a lovely pull as well from Naui there, and they did obviously manage to get gas as well, extending this lead to the five, so... Wonderful position yet again for Zeta Division. If they maintain this lead, they're going to be heading to match point, but that pull is actually going to be missed. Ventral Spirit's coming in, they're bringing in low. No Clay Pigeon available, but the super and singular shot from Meow will finish that off. Extends the lead to seven. And that's just Meow and Naui down, and you're going to have this back. So not over for one trip ponies just yet, but they need to make their move. Yeah, they're still trying to break through on that red side, but unable to find the right opportunities just yet. Meow taking tough angles, trying to play it up close. The Super Aria is going to be a full whiff. No connections whatsoever on that rocket rank. Filippo still trying to white flank on the bottom. They do find Garo at last, but there's no follow-ups. Five stars of elite there for Zeta Division to lock in their first match point. It was just really nice from Gero, I will say. You know, he just held two of them back on the right-hand side alone in that last push. So, definitely a commendable performance from him and allowed the other two to just stay out of the way of the RT because an RT, unless you're in close range, isn't going to be able to deal with both of them that fast. And obviously, they needed pretty much a team wipe, even obviously with uh, Jiro down if they wanted to take the win without taking down Naui and Meow. So, see who comes out on top of this one. It is match point for Zeta Division now. And this is probably going to be the win, but we'll see if one-trip ponies can pull something out of the bag. Blue Star and the Vengeful Spirit Snipe to start things off, and that's what they were looking for. Yeah, that was a lovely, sneaky little Vengeful Spirit there, making it through the defense of OP. And able to claim a big kill. Can one-trip ponies regain some control? And that's the wall break, but a pull from now he connects. That's huge. Filippo does get the trade, so at the end of the day, it's only one star making the difference. Yeah, and obviously blue star in the hands of one Traponis as well. Going to be an advantage, but not so meaningful now. It might be a little bit later on in the game, but a minute and ten. Still available for one Traponis to get this singular star needed. And we'll take the lead if they do. Now we're just trying to work towards a super. Obviously, the synergy with Meow that he has is going to be very, very explosive. But in come the taps from the RT, forcing a Clay Pigeon out to try and push him back. And those healing puffs from Jean going to keep Meow in the mix. Yeah, that was the last Clay Pigeon as well. So no more safety net like that available for Zeta anymore. And with only a one-star difference, if there is a chance here for one-trick ponies, ponies, it, it's going to be this. They have the positioning for it. The problem is going to be that Shelly Super combined with that gene pool and our shield as well for Garrow. And yet, no real opportunities just yet. Meow getting tagged up a little bit, but I'm pretty sure he still has his band aid in case of uh, more trouble. Yeah, shield forced out though from that really nice Brock Super from Gas there. Last game he whiffed it, this time he actually hit some valuable connections. Gonna miss that Rocket Rain though. Meow's very, very low incendiary. Almost brings him down, but Bandit keeps him in the mix. Paul comes in, but Artie can drop his legs. Doesn't get anything out of it. The takedown's there, but they need another three anyway, and Gas alone can't do it. Zeta Division take the game. They take the entire match. Lovely stuff from them. They're gonna be going on to the finals to face either Foot or Apply Totem. A very solid, a very convincing performance coming through here from Zeta Division. One trick ponies in the two first sets definitely gave them a great fight for it. But in set three, it kind of felt like they were out of steam. And yeah, at the end of the day, Zeta Division just did what you'd expect them to do. They are going to the grand finals. They're still trying to get that title back of monthly final winners hasn't been the case since March, but everything is lining up in their favor now as they lock in their spot for the grand finals. Yeah, and you know, I will say between these two teams, the, the, the scoreline didn't really reflect the matchup too much. We saw two 2-1s, two and then obviously this one was a 2-0, but the games were close anyway. You know, we saw one troop ponies fighting back, but just not hard enough to be able to bring it home. They were only three stars down in the second one. Obviously, it was a bit of a bigger gap in the first, but they looked very good still, and I have high hopes for them making the last chance qualifier um, through this year, because I feel like maybe Worlds is a little bit out of reach from the, for them, unless they get maybe two first place over the next couple of months. But last chance qualifier is more than in grabs for them. Uh, statistics wise, though, 0, 2, and 5. Jiro not getting too many kills, but he held his lane pretty much perfectly and won 1 and 1 once across the board from the side of one trip ponies. Yeah, that was, I mean, it was exactly his role, to be honest, you know. Uh, staying on that right hand side and, and creating uh, 
not necessarily creating space, more like keeping space, right? Playing defensively, not letting anyone push up too close, not letting anyone flank. And in case he gets overwhelmed, they just lane swap because the Shelly was so much of a problem. The Gene was so much of a problem. And see that the vision honestly played it perfectly. Like it was really strong. One trick ponies just out of answers at that point. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot they could do wrong, to be honest. Like, they just played everything pretty perfectly. Looking at the MVP, though, it is going to be Meow. Great, great stuff from him. Wonderful performance all around from all of Zayt Federation. And to be honest, a massive com commendable performance from One Trick Ponies as well. They managed to pull their way through the quarterfinals against Humble in a very, very close game. And then they have just sadly taken a loss against Zayt Division. So sad, sad for them. But they've got some points on the board and surely going to be moving into that top 10 now. Absolutely. Making it to semis was quite important for them, you know, as I said earlier, they are in 11th place and there's some of their position that didn't quite qualify even for the monthly final. So they are catching up for sure. Yeah, it really is great from them, to be honest. Like, I think they deserve, you know, at least to be in this top 10, uh, you know, having a bit of a say in who's going to the last chance qualifier because, you know, with two months left after this, they're making semifinals in this one. What's stopping them from doing again and getting themselves one of those last chance qualifier places? But the main thing they need to focus on is getting through these next two qualifiers, getting to the monthly finals, because that's where the big points lie. Absolutely so. I mean, the competition in EMEA is absolutely crazy. The entire season has been uh, absolutely wild. And this final semi-final, Trav, is going to be, uh, I mean, an incredible one for the books. Foot Esports versus Reply Totem. Man, that is quite the semi-final, isn't it? This is probably going to be one of the best games. This is final quality. And Foot Esports, if they manage to make it through this one, they're going to have had three final quality games. They were against SK Gaming, did lose 3 2, oh, did beat them 3 2, sorry. And Na uh, Navi did get beaten by Reply Totem 3 2. So we now have this phenomenal match, I will say, as well. And this bottom half of the bracket is so, so stacked. So to see these two teams face off against each other is going to be an absolute treat. Semantic, Drage, and Lenane versus Joker, Mori, and Maru. This is going to be an exciting one, Teddy. Yeah, oh, I believe all of us for our predictions went with foot esports. Now, there might be a little bit of hopium in the <laughs> air here, because in all fairness, I feel like this match is pretty even. Foot, I feel like, are in a better place right now, but overall, Reply Totem are still like, in the, you know, if you look more at the big picture, they've been more the better team. Foot esports, they're looking like their best selves to be completely honest they struggle to really you know find the comp and the, and the, the roster ra rather that works for them but they have it locked in now reply totem though they haven't had to make any changes this year joker maru and maru is still looking pretty much as strong as they did a year ago yeah, I mean, they have been looking good pretty much all the time, Reply Totem at least, because they never really get worse. They've always got this very, very solid roster of three of the best players in Europe. So if everything else fails, they've always got the mechanical skills to, to lay back on. And it's, you know, it's the exact same with eSports, three incredibly skilled players who they can just fall back on. You know, we did see a bit of a roster change for eSports, and that was the big grudge match we saw in the previous one with OP leaving and uh, Linane joining. It's it, it, some, would, some would question it, but I personally thought it was quite a good swap. And clearly, thanks to the results we've just seen, they clearly backed it up and I think now that they've got that out of the way and they're going to focus a lot of their their, their, their preparations on that first game they might struggle a little bit but I still did side with Foot Esports a lot of you guys at home didn't yeah 18% is not a whole lot and I think I can understand why Reply Totem would be considered as a favorite by most I mean you know considering their fantastic journey at Mobile Masters, taking the whole event home. Plus their history, right? Whether it's in international events or in uh, the EMEA BSC, they've been the better team. But right now, looking at their form and how desperately they want those points, I feel like Foot might just narrowly out edge them, but there's only gonna be one way to find out. Our draft is coming through here for field goal. Shelly is banned. And that puts a smile right on my face. It puts a smile on mine as well. I'm sure you'll be pleased to see me to ban that out of the way as well, because I know how much you hate that brawler. Bonnie going to be the first pick, though. Um, I do like it. We saw it in that previous uh, previous set of brawl ball as well. Didn't really work out, but obviously with it being a different map, should be uh, a little bit of a different um, style to it, let's say. Willow coming in next from Reply Totem, followed by Astu. So they got a bit of throw, they got a bit of mobility. I don't mind it. Yeah, I don't mind it either. I think that uh, this two is going to be able to 
just give them a, a good fight, no matter what position, no matter what matchup he ends up having, just very versatile to that extent. Willow, I'm not as much of a fan of, but we did see some good plays with it. And we know how strong it can be in Brobel. If you pass the ball to your opponent, then mind control him. You can literally just walk it in and there's not all that much your position can do about it. Yeah, well, <laughs> we know how dangerous this Edgar has been. Uh, with in, in the hands of Semantic a little bit earlier on in their first game against SK Gaming. It's a really nice pick from them, and they have a lot of faith in this brawler. So, I, uh, you know, I, if they have faith in it, and if they played as well as they did earlier with it, I have faith in it as well. Footy Sports with their last pick coming in now, though. Question of what it's going to be. Surely going to be a side lane that's playing Bonnie through that mid, and with Willow, it's going to be difficult to contest. But they're going to go with the Sam. Play that uh, tanky unit along with an aggressive assassin such as Edgar. I don't mind it, but also Reply Totem with this last pick should have a good answer. Yeah, this sounds like Lana, you know, was tired of playing Tick and Pam and those brawlers that you didn't really use to know him for, and he's going for one of his iconic picks. I don't know how it's going to work out, though. Sam is a brawler we don't see a whole lot in competitive at the moment. And Primo, it's one way to deal with it for sure. Well, you know, we did see an Edgar do decent against Primo a little bit earlier on, obviously with Semantic playing it still. But Sam, probably not going to do the best against Primo, so they're going to have to try and get these matchups right, ensure uh, that, that they get the, the moments right as well. Edgar's got to jump on Willow when he, she doesn't have a super, same with Primo. They can be issues, and obviously the mobility of Stu is always going to be an issue as well, but Semantic's got to use that range and make sure that he doesn't... Um, feed Mario I'll say and the same with everybody else as well just maintain that range let the tanks and assassins do what they do best on this side long range matchup early on should be favoring Drage down in the mid it is going to be semantic again on Ooh. that ad guard but oh an attempt of a trick shot there from Lena which I mean it's still going to be an easy goal for foot but a little bit a little bit scary a little bit dangerous that was that was wild. Like he just he just left the right end lane and just ran as fast as he could. Oh, oh. the play from Totem there. That is the teamwork that we love to see. But the shot doesn't get off. Semantic can't clear it. And Totem as quick as that even things out. Yeah, things went wrong on so many levels there for both teams. But the last mistake was food since Semantic has gone in and Mari somehow wins that matchup. A nice gadget there popped by him but now somewhat unsure of what to do there does have a pool for maru maru does have super as well and jump in from semantic but easy dash out for joker another jump from maru a trick shot pass that's not quite gonna make it to destination as a nice pushing forward trying to stay alive but the poison takes him down before he can catch his gloves back this is so scrappy. I love it. It's great. <laughs> just tanks and assassins running at each other, jumping, trying to do trick shot passes. It's great to see what Synergy D seems to bring out. But a little dash down the side here from Joker. Can't quite make the play. But Lenane choosing to just rotate up this right hand side lane. So Mantis going to jump in. Going to be uh, you're gonna be using that gadget to avoid it. Passing the ball back now. Lenane trying to find an opening. Maybe if Trace can get a jump here, they can play it through. But not connecting any shots. And does get that super. Th uses it to get his knuckle busters back. And Mario just protecting it now. Uses the gadget but can't get the kill either. Yeah, things are incredibly messy this game. Both sides embracing the chaos. But now there's a big chance to score for Reply Totem. Jump in from Maru and the shark shot from Maori is what does it. Reply Totem taking the opening game. Well, we started strong for four esports. They did just go aggressive down the left hand side, completely leave the Primo and then made the plays. But as soon as Primo got super, it became a little bit of an issue for, for foot esports there and Reply Totem just seemed to walk over them. So I'd imagine that's what they'll be playing for yet again, just getting those Primo supers and dominating through that. Well, the good news for Foot is that there was a lot of room for improvement. The bad news is that honestly, there was a decent amount of room for improvement on the side of Reply Totem as well. They're the ones that ended up winning that game. Drage is gonna fall to the poison. And now, maybe with a charge shot, it's gonna go for the speed instead. And honestly, I don't blame him. Nearly gets a trick shot in again, but it doesn't quite pay off. And this time around, he doesn't have his teammates to lock in that goal afterwards.
Yeah, you know, Maru trying to make the one-two play here. Nice shot down the middle, gets the jump off as well, and he lands perfectly in time to knock him out of the way for the ball to slide through. Reply Totem, take a 1-0 lead yet again. Unbelievable team synergy there. Pass nearly goes into Drage, but Maru does manage to get the ball in the end. Sweet trick shot pass. The eye is burning down. He does have enough HP to survive that encounter. He needs to be careful now as he pushes up, is able to find Maori. Trying to heal up, Ooh. maybe a charge shot, but no, Maru catches it just in the nick of time. Another attempt there, but no one can really reach that ball just yet. And it seems like Reply Totem are in the driver's seat. Yeah, well, a little bit of an opportunity there for Lenane, but he couldn't quite get the shot off. But Dre hitting some nice shots now. Followed there as well. But Primo's there. Gets the jump off yet again. Might be able to get another. Goes for it. Gets the wall broken, but a quick response from Semantic. Manages to get back. And that returning Knuckle Buster goes straight through Joker as well. Gets some damage down. Resets his healing. But still, 45 seconds on the clock. And Reply Totem in the lead. Now this is looking great for the Italian organization. But the jump in from Semantic, trying to find some value, get some heals off from Maru. A pass here potentially could be huge. Drage does go down and now trying to get the ball, but again, Maru catches it just in time. And even though Lanai is able to heal back up a little bit and stay alive for the time being, he is playing a dangerous game. Maru should be able to oh never mind not quite take him down just yet 10 seconds left though and that's a real problem the charge shot from joker is just gonna get that ball on the other side of the map and there's no chance on earth here for food esports to capitalize reply totem we'll take the set i mean it was good from both sides we saw some great moments from both teams where reply totem just had more of them and uh, some of those primo jumping plays are going to be where you're going to be scoring. And that's exactly what they did. Just jumping forward, making the great passes, ensuring that these the, these trick shot passes and stuff don't go wasted. Because if you're wasting supers for the sake of a pass, sometimes it can pretty much cost you the entire game. But for the most part, Reply Totem made use of them. And it kind of just seemed like for every time they had a chance, Primo was respawning with a super or something like that. See, that is a great attempt there as well. That's why I was talking about those supers. And he managed to get the kills regardless, but wonderful attempt nonetheless. Yeah, they kind of had no way to deal with that Primo, you know, when he was going to jump in, they either have to fight him off, and usually that means that they lose two players, or they have two very low HP players, so the rest of Reply Totem squad can just clear them up, or it's just an instant goal, like this time around. So it's a very, very tough goal, and your defense needs to be near perfect, and look at those stats, 300 39 DPS here for Joker. It's 11 kills and leaps away from the rest of the competition. Yeah, I mean, Joker's just played that so, so well there, clearly. And I mean, Foot Esports, they haven't got bad stats either. They've got good DPS, good kills, but it's not about that. It's about getting those goals in the back of the net. And I mean, to be honest, Reply Totem just had better stats regardless. Every single one of them had better stats than every single one of Foot Esports. But at the same time, it really wasn't about that because we saw some phenomenal moments from both teams and some great goal scoring opportunities either side reply totem just took better use of them yeah absolutely i mean the primo was just getting so much value even when he wasn't getting kills which he was getting plenty of just those supers near the goal area whether it's someone passes to you or yourself pass it's a huge threat and your position has to do something they have to react and that's when your teammates come in and clear things up, create that space that you need and those goal scoring opportunities. Yeah, well, this has got to be an answer back for Footy Sports in this next set. Otherwise, Reply Totem will be running away with it 2 0. You want it to be that 1 1, especially if you're Footy Sports, you can't really rely on the reverse sweep, especially against a team like Reply Totem, who are just so organized, so good at what they do. We're going to be heading on to Ring of Fire in Hot Zone. And to be honest, I really like Reply Totem on this map. They always seem to have some good drafts, some some very calm, composed uh, plays, and that's exactly what you need on a map like Ring of Fire, where it's just so hectic. Draft opening up. Not quite that map, but you guys saw what it was a second ago. Max, I'm gonna be the first pick here, matched by Atara from Food Esports. 
We have the Pam that follows up. We're just going to quickly go through the bands as well. We had Shelly, Stu, and Penny Band out for the side of Foot Esports. As replied to them, Band out Crow, Lola, and Ruffs. And that is an incredibly quick draft. It's like they all know exactly what they want to be playing here. And it doesn't surprise me either. I will say though, you know, we saw a few missed pulls from Semantic coming out in their game against SK Gaming. So let's hope he either repairs what he had going on or if he's getting letting someone else play it. But Reply Touch, we've got a great comp coming out. Lou, incredible. Uh, and, and, you know, the same with Max and Amber as well. Great synergy together also. But this B, Pam and, and Tara, it's also very, very good. If Drage can keep his range, not feed the Lou as much as I'm sure Mori would like to get supers, then they might come out on top here. Yeah, I, I like both comps. I think personally, I prefer Reply Totems just a little bit. I mean, I think the combination from Amber with the Lou is just so much zone damage and control around that zone area that Foodies boys don't quite... Are, they're not quite able to match that with their current utility. We'll see how many valuable pulls Semantic or whoever ends up playing the Tara is going to be getting. But it's going to be Lana. I'm, I'm not entirely sure about the tower pick. Yeah, I don't mind it, but maybe that's just some kind of bias towards uh, towards Tara in general. I just love the brawler. Maybe that's why I like it that a little bit more, but obviously did receive a few buffs in the previous balance changes, so could still be decent and getting some good progression on the map now as well. Places those shadows from beyond. And uh, now some great, great control, and Lou hasn't really had that much of a say. And now it has bought that could be absolutely massive. You can find one, if not more, and it's gonna be zero this time around, and instantly the shadow is gonna be taken care of as well. Maru has another super, he's gonna burn down those bushes and even gets to burn to land onto Semantic, some good value. Drage is popping off a little bit, gets a nice two-piece, and Joker narrowly avoids that massacre. But maybe not for all that long as he's taken all the way back to below a thousand HP. Falls back to heal up a little bit. Back in the action now though. Lenin trying his best to hold on to that right side. But overwhelmed by that crossfire between Maro and Joker. Food Esports with such a massive lead at that point. Reply Toad, they have absolutely no room for mistakes. Yeah, really nice shot there from Drake as well. He's just popping off. You know, B is his brawler. That's just how it that's just how it goes. Lene trying to work front of the super now as well. He might need it to break this position. Super play style by Semantic, and that's gonna heal both of them up really nicely. Needs another 3k as well. Collects it but not manages to hit. Finishes that one off anyway. Tara Paul coming on in, gets the takedown, 10% lead and reply to should just sit in spawn. They're not gonna win this one. Foot Esports take it, and that's their answer. That's what they needed. Love it. I love the aggressive Tara as well on that right hand side. Just behind those walls, there's not all that much they can do to try to push her away. And has been doing a very good job at being a threat. Even though his pulls haven't been the most impactful, just his presence and the uh, scouting capabilities inside of that bush are very, very valuable to food esports. Let's see if they can repeat that success or if Reply Totem are able to switch things up a bit. Yeah, it's all about not feeding that Lou, and that's what they did so well in the last game. They're getting so much damage on him already. He's fallen to 1,325 HP, and both of the players of foot are still so healthy in the mid lane, not really taking much of a slow down from that either because of the heal uh, from the speed of the bushes, should I say, sorry, of his speed gear. So pretty much just normal speed there, but 30% already to 10, and Joker just trying to get some shots in, get the speed onto Mori there as well, but they're just gonna fall back and try evade feeding in this super. Food Esports again with the better start, but it's not completely over just yet. Let's reflect on him, get a nice loose super into the zone, and Maru will uh, oil down that right side of the map. If anyone gets too close, it will be quite deadly. So far, it does seem like Food are able to with up more and more control and now he's pushing up. He does end up going down. Maru sneaks up on the right hand side, but is not Ooh. able to set the fire off. So right now it will just be slowing them down a little bit. My totem able to get some more percentages, but still have quite some miles to go before they catch up. 
I mean, Dre just playing insane. It kind of just seems like Lenane's just pushing down the side for no reason a lot of the time. Semantic going to try and take down Maru. Gets the super on top of his super. Should pretty much out heal it. Slow comes in from Dre trying to ne negate the value coming in, but the burn was onto him. Lenane's going to need a big, big super here to turn this one around because Reply Totem are now the ones in control. They have the lead and they have the control. Yeah, it was a bit of an uphill battle until now, but it seems like Reply Totem really have found their groove. Question is, can they keep chaining those supers? Seems like we'll get another freeze onto that zone, and that basically means that for these sports, can't even get close to it. The healing station is going to last for about a quarter of a second. Everyone is low on the side of Reply Totem, and that might be the saving grace, but another super for Maori slows down the progress that foot can do and reply to them are getting percentage after percentage in the meantime final team wipe as reply totem will take that game and know things get real for foot esports even though this set is tied another game and suddenly foot are two sets behind yeah this this is make or break for the foot esports here really they need to take the win or, or, or they're going to be two sets down and maybe even beyond repair uh, i feel like the name just needs to try and connect a few more of these supers be a little bit more cautious with his positioning and stuff like that but he's going to go left side this time i actually quite kind of like it. instant control as they weren't expecting it yeah the little change compared to his routine in the previous two games was more than enough to catch them off guard and capitalize a freeze will come down at last. Drage also low HP. They want to clear him up, but he's staying alive for so long. Luckily for Reply Totem, the charge shot did not come up through in time. Oh dear. And they were able to take him out. It's been quite scrappy. But Foot Esports, with a little bit more control, are able to build up a healthy early lead. Yeah, Lenane lucky that they did have control anyway, and that Tara Super didn't really mean too much. Staying in control, Drage picks up the right-hand side as well. Samantha can just sit narrowly on this zone, and Lenane's still getting the left-hand side uh, taken down as well. So really nice stuff from Foot Esports so far. But they had this lead before, and they lost it just as fast. It's a very valid point. Joker's struggling on the left, and Tara Pool is going to seal the deal. Lenane gets healed up in the meantime, is able to get a kill, and... Pretty much gets out of there untouched as the Tara Shadow nearly fully humes him back up, and it's a problem. They need to deal with it, but another pull comes through, and that's another kill, another Shadow. And then now getting another kill. Foot Esports lock in that set, and Semantic is happy about the results for sure. I mean, being happy is going to pretty much project your team in the right direction. You know, it's, uh, it's a position that they like being in now. They've just taken that one so, so flawlessly. I think it was like 100 to 20. So now going forwards from this point on, not only have they got the momentum of the set, they've got such a flawless last game that they're coming off the back of that going on to Crystal Arcade and Jam Grab, they should be pretty good as well. They've just got to get yet another good draft. I like Natara for the most part, but it was just a lot of missed supers and a lot of the control really didn't mean much until that last game. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I feel like they really gave it their best shot uh, with that with that Tara, and I feel like the reason they won wasn't because of the Tara per se, but once she was set up in in the back line and once she made the right adjustments in her position, I mean the the, the success really spoke for itself. Yeah, it really did. I mean, it's uh. It was a tough one for Apply Totem to lose because I think they, they, they did have a good draft, you know, and there was nothing wrong with what they brought to the table. They just didn't get enough loose supers in a couple of those games, the first and the third, obviously, as they did win the second, mainly because of those speeds from Joker and those, uh, those, those uh, obviously, ice breaks from uh, from the Lou. And in terms of kills, Drage and Lenane absolutely popping off there, eight and seven apiece. A lot of them will have come for the last game from Lenane and Semantic. You know, you can always count on him to just be that healer. You know, he was just playing the pan, playing it slow, getting some decent DPS with that as well, bear in mind. Two and six is very very good oh absolutely i mean it's great ship damage you know and you're happy to trade that damage off as well because you have a healing station that heals you back up your opponents don't so a lot of value to be found there and i think he did a fantastic job moving on to crystal arcade here for gem grab at set number three there's lots of things we can expect to see here 
Put our heads down. In the mid, we have some sharpshooter ideas that are very popular, but I was about to get to it. Uh, my favorite option is going to be this two, the speed zone. Just incredibly useful as a whole, very versatile as well. And just that extra mobility is perfect for a mid that is just a little bit more closed off than on certain other champ gap maps. Yeah, and I mean, with Max Band out of the way as well, pretty much the only mobility you're going to get. So I like it. I do like it. Spike going to come in next from Reply Totem. It's just one of those versatile picks. You know, you're never really going to have a bad matchup, but a lot of the time you're never going to really have an extremely good matchup unless they play into your hands with the draft. Penny following up after that as well. I think more of the same. You know, it's just very, very solid. Placing the mortar down, salty barrel in people's faces. Uh, it pretty much adds a fourth man. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of Penny so far today. It was one of the brothers we saw by far the most in uh, the, the last couple months. It did get nerfed uh, month after month, or rather balance change after balance change. So it's not quite what it used to be, but it's still in a good place if placed right. We'll see another Jesse. Like, I think so far in EMA, we've seen more Jesse than Penny, which is pretty crazy to me. Yeah, well, I do like a Jesse, I must say. I feel like it's a very, very solid pick on quite a lot of these maps. Crystal Arcade, I don't know if it's really necessarily one of the ones where we've seen it. So I'm still intrigued to see if it's going to be having enough of a say as I kind of hope it does. Because Spike and, and, and Penny, obviously you've got the Life Plant, you've got the Solid Barrel, the, the Mortar, a lot of things you can bounce off, which is going to be very, very good. We're going to see the M's coming in as well. Now we're back to Reply Totem for their last pick. Semantic Blown as a Kiss. I'm not sure if I'm a little bit scared of that or, uh, or if I enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. It's up to your own interpretation. But <laughs> we, as a final pick here, I like quite a bit. Seems a bit more normal than, you know, like the Jesse, for instance, which I'm assuming then would be played lane and it's too mid, or... Because really, Foot Esports went with three different potential mids, although, I mean, M's is at least likely to be mid, I guess. Yeah, no, I think so too. I think Jesse's probably going to be slotting into that mid versus uh, versus that, that, that B, I'd imagine, Penny down one of these sides. Uh, it's just whether or not the Penny's going to get values it's going to need control because there's no wall break except from the stoop. So he's pretty much going to be choosing what gets broken and if it does it at all because he might have brought speed zone in. Yeah, you were right. He did, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was just like, it takes a second, you know, when there's so many different mid options to really understand what the idea is behind it. But so far, the idea seems to uh, be working quite well for Applied Totem because they have so much mid presence and it is something i like quite a bit in a draft that you can go for comes like this where potentially depending on what your opponent's draft you can switch gem carrier and it's something we're seeing more and more often and that might be something to consider considering uh, uh how awful of a start things are right now for footy esports reply totem just in a really good position can footy esports find an opening yeah, obviously with this fertilizer, it's going to be quite good down the lane if you just get these heals off against pretty much any of these, especially when Semantic wants to go aggressive, but they just seem to just be in such a clump. Two gems drops on the fall there as well, and one more from mid. It's going to be the countdown starting, and Reply Totem as quick as that. 10 to 0, have the count. For these sports, was a couple more seconds to interrupt, but no opportunity, really, as Joker is far out of reach. Reply Totem taking over the lead was that first game of gem grab under their belt yeah we really do need to see something special come out of foot esports now off the back of what they did in the previous set such a dominating performance in that last game to what we've just seen there the complete opposite where reply totem 10 owns them in gems uh, and the game finishes with the shortest amount of time possible they need to make something happen a very defensive speed zone just for this back line from semantic and it seems like he might be trying to pinch down this mid early on first uh, uh, this time yeah a bit of a different plan two players mid this time around and give away that left hand side it does seem to pay off at least in the early stages but the setup isn't quite complete here no mortar available for maru just yet nice shot there from maru getting the shot to spread through and finding that double connection but not able to really cap light just yet a one for one trade in the mid but lana is holding that position Quite well, the turret is going to be slowing down Maru. 
the mortar is also enough to dissuade Rage from overextending in the mid. He needs to be careful and he knows it. Maru gets tagged up and eventually the mortar does go down. Yeah, they're pinned back now and it's pretty much even with that one gem on the floor. It's going to be 5-5 five to five, and Joker should start to extend it now. But quick pushback from Drage with some great jukes and a swift push from Semantic as well. Getting his control back also. Yeah, Reply to them have caught up quite nicely. And another nice pickup from Joker. Big kill onto Drage, able to steal a couple of gems as well. And nice teamwork here from Reply Totem to ensure they keep Joker alive. However, Drage finds some nice snipes on the right hand side. Nevertheless, it's still enough for Countdown as Maru picked up a gem on the left. Joker, a gem in the mid. And that's still the 10 that Reply Totem need for their countdown. A couple more seconds left for Foot Esports to try to interrupt the slow from Jesse. Not quite gonna connect. And Reply Totem run away with set number three. They're taking over the lead and now just a single set away from going to the grand finals to face Seda Division. I feel like we haven't even seen any gem grab after that. That was so, so fast from Reply Totem. I mean, for Esports, they had a bit of a say in that second game, but the first one, 10-0, instantly finished. No real pushback whatsoever. Second one, we saw some things here and there from for Esports, but just not enough to show us a convincing performance that they're going to be able to bring this one back. Shooting start up next. And I know I said this at the previous one, the momentum that Reply Totem should have should carry them through this. I said that about for Esports last time when we saw the complete opposite, so I'm just going to backtrack and say completely wrong. We might see a set number five. Yeah, we absolutely might. I mean, so far, you know, taking some perspective and looking at how many games both teams have won, because yes, we know it's 2-1 in sets, but in games it's five for a play totem, only the two for Foot Esports, and the sets that Foot Esports have been losing, they haven't had nearly as much of a say than Reply Totem uh, uh, did in the, in the sets that they lost, or like the set that they lost to Foot Esports. So, so far, a little bit of a trend to that regard. Foot Esports is going to have to be incredibly careful with this next draft, or it may very much be their last for this month. Yeah, and I mean, they need they need a good performance as well. Foot Esports as talented as this roster is, are in seventh coming into this month on the leaderboards. Top three go to Worlds. I believe it's top seven go to... Uh, uh, to to the, to the last chance qualifiers. They're still not in a bad spot, but you know this this kind of talent on a roster wants to go to Worlds instantly, skipping the LCQ. 230684, so reply to them all day long. 23 DPS from Lenane. Yeah, I think you make a very valid point, Trav. Uh, just to clarify as well, because of ANR not qualifying for this monthly final and Ammo Fantasia dropping in the quarterfinals again, Foot Esports, they're looking to maybe even make it all the way to fourth place today. But obviously, the more successful they are today, the more they can capitalize and the more points they can take away from their uh, opposition. This is really their chance to maybe even get close to, to the top three, if not in it. But they need those uh, victories. And right now, it's just not there just yet. They need two sets in a row to make it all the way to the grand finals, that would be huge points wise. Yeah, I was gonna say, technically a number one could slot them into the top three, right? Navi went out early as well, so they're not gonna be in a bad position if they do manage to win this one. And even if they lose it, not terrible either. They might even slot into that top five. Uh, so we'll see how that outcome does play out as uh, we head on into shooting star on Bounty. Obviously, Foot Esports are behind by one set. This set could determine who goes to that Grand Finals face-off against Zeta Division. Reply Totem in a much, much better position to do so. Bands coming in. We've got the Gene, Bonnie, and E from the Foot Esports side. Tick, Gus, and Max from the Reply Totem side. So I imagine we're probably seeing quite a lot of uh, uh, bands aimed at the opposing teams, considering they'll have a lot of information on each other. But Nanny's going to be the first pick, and I really like it. Yeah, I love it as well. It's uh, just incredibly strong against Piper and any brawler that deals a lot of damage. Uh, just because of the return to sender that is completely... Uh, I, I almost want to say broken. Um, it's situational, but at this level of play, uh, it can absolutely win you uh, normally unwinnable matchups. It's very, very strong and a brawler like Piper that is also really popular here is completely nerfed just by his presence. We'll see Joker go for the Sprout, as I believe Tick was banned, so there's going to be a limited amount of possibilities when it comes to throwers if they want to match that on the side of foot. We'll see the RT as their sharpshooter option, and 
it's just going to be better against Anani than something like a Piper because your damage is a bit more divided. You don't hit as hard per shot, and you can always pop your gadget later on if you want to finish off your opponent. Grom will be brought in to match that thrower energy that Reply Totem brought with uh, their Sprout, and they, they just didn't really have any other options, Trav, don't you think? Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it, it's as you say, pretty much the only throw we saw. Um, ticks banned out of the way. I mean, Dynamite's a possibility, and um, just not really good enough on Shooting Star. So we'll see Bell come in as their last pick. Nice stuff from for Esports. They've got a very well-rounded roster, a lot of range coming in as well, but I just feel like maybe that mid might struggle a little bit if Joker's able to avoid quite a lot of these uh, quite a lot of these shots. We do need to see that mid grass broken down by a grumble. Yeah, I very much like that. Leon is going to be their final pick. It is great at, for instance, popping that return to center from from Semantic. If he does use it, then Maru just sprays in his general direction. He'll be taking basically no damage back. The invisibility also enables him to really catch off guard, whether it's a Grom or the Bell, even the Nani. If he gets close enough, he should win any of those 1v1s, potentially even 2v1s. If he gets, you know, say close to um, the Grom and another Brawler, he kills the other Brawler first and the Grom is quite defenseless up close. The real question is, is he going to be able to sneak up like that, close to his own position? That is uh, a bit more difficult to answer, but he is getting some tanks from afar. However, Semantic definitely returning them 10 times harder. The Reply Totem are able to get that blue star to secure them the early lead. Yeah, I mean, we almost saw Semantic take down Maru, but Joker comes from quite nicely. The return center did almost bring him down, but we see the peep already, and if he can act fast, that might bring down Maru. I don't think he's going to charge up enough now that when he does get the heels off, but a follow-up from Lene might get it done. No shots connecting just yet, and Maru does get hit by one. Me uh, Mark can be missed, sorry, by Drage from the right-hand side, and Joker trying to aggress. Not finding anything so far, but Semantic's marked up. The gadget doesn't bring him down. Return center was popped just in case, but wasn't needed. That kill just about enough to give the lead back to Foot Esports and oh my did that need that desperately the trouble is not over just yet three stars now in their favor as they got a kill on that left hand side I'm not sure about that Leon pick it was a bit of a worrying one to me during the draft process and so far it has yet to really deliver Joker getting absolutely melted down in the mark onto Maru is also a huge problem. He needs to play it very safe as he's taking a ton of damage. Joker nearly going down and the wall comes down a little bit too late. Not there in time to tank for him and this is looking quite dreadful here for a play totem. Yeah, nice push there from Maru though and now it's only knocked down to three so Semantical and Aiden, the game's turned around. Brought very, very low. There's the RT shot, the gadget as well. The wall stops anything from happening. The bounce is still going on. Joker's low, but Semantic not finding anybody in that invisibility. Need to go aggressive, but another one falls. RT still left for the taking. Can they get the kill? Semantic uses Super Bowl and Aiden can't find any shots and Reply Totem are going to match point. Unbelievable comeback from Reply Totem. I thought that surely Food Esports had that in the bag. But Reply Totem hitting their shots, finding those precious connections. A wide flank from the Leon as well to just create some space. And eventually they were able to find an opening. Blue Star again gonna be locked in on their end, but a neat low connection there from Luna. Able to claim that kill. Drage on the right side winning his lane. And suddenly it's again three stars early on in favor of Foot. Well, shots coming down now. Joker's very, very low. Samantha's got the super. Maybe pair it with a few shots from Lenane. He might be able to get a takedown, but so far Lenane's not finding the most success. Drage is the one who's really hitting a lot of those shots, and a few nest eggs placed down on this right side might be able to find some more. So, plenty of time here for Reply Totem to do exactly what they did the previous game. Good dodges from Joker down in the mid, and a nice pickup from Maori. Nestec gets popped as well. It's the, the right timing to do so. 
So there's no opportunity really to capitalize. The wall will be used there by Joker to tank that beat. And that will give him absolutely none of his super back. A nice pickup, but the bounce shot from the belt to claim that trade. And again, even things up, but Blue Star is still in favor of Foot. Yeah, Mark not going to be here. And Joker throwing some shots out towards Drage. So just Blue Star at the decider at the moment, so Joker needs to be very, very cautious about not extending this lead even further from for the Foot Esports side. Semantic marked up, but it was a return sender, so didn't take too much damage from it. There's the invisibility, but he actually gets hit by Drage. Unfortunate for Mario, but still going aggressive. The names there for the take, and he does get it, and that's the lead back in their hands. But the trade should be there. The wall perfectly placed, and he is going to survive just a little bit longer. Can he avoid it? He does, and the survival's there. Reply Totem running away with it. The wall's placed as well, and surely no chance for Foot. Incredible Leon plays there from Maru, absolutely toying with his food. And just showing as well, you know, the power of that new uh, gear on Leon. That extra second was huge there in getting the right position and messing with his opponent's brain. Beautiful, beautiful plays there. And that settles it. Reply Totem are going to the Grand Finals. I mean, we're going to have a good, good matchup there. Reply Totem versus Aether Division. Semantic looking quite sad as those points were very, very necessary for their hopes at going to World Finals directly, not through the last chance qualifier. Obviously, they still have got two months to make that happen, but this would have been a big, big boost for them. And now it's going to be a, a, an ever-growing lead for the top two teams. Reply Totem and Zeta Division making the finals yet again, and they're going to be moving further and further away from the rest of the pack. Yeah, it feels like we're kind of back in you know, at square one, back at the beginning of the competition this year where we had a Zeta versus Reply Totem Grand Final. And it was Zeta that took that one home. It was Zeta that beat them in March in the semifinals. So far, Reply Totem, I mean, they want revenge and they're looking very, very strong today. But I don't know if it's going to be enough to finally take down the Titans of the region. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. But looking at the statistics from this game just now, 2-2-2 two, two and two across the boards from Foot Esports. Decent amount of DPS in there as well in comparison to what we see from Reply Totem. But they get the 5-4-2 and two, and it kills what matter, not that DPS in a map and mode, well, a mode like Bounty, should I say. Decent DPS from them as well. Maru taking the least, but actually making the most clutch play. Certainly so. I mean, Reply Totem overall was just a very, very solid performance. And who better to take the MVP here from the community? It's going to be Joker, of course. I mean, he had the best final set out of the three. And overall, just did a really solid job. It was very much a team effort here for Reply Totem and setting themselves up for success together. For the esports, they gave it their best shot. But this month, it's just not quite going to be it just yet. I'm sure that they'll be very grateful for all the points they were able to farm. But I don't know if that will be, uh, you know, enough to satisfy their desire to win because we know how competitive those guys are. Yeah, it really is. It really is a bit of a tough one for that team there. But at the end of the day, <laughs> what is this? What is this? What is this, eh? This is unbelievable. This is kind of I don't know what you mean, I mean Trump. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> so, so for a bit of context, though, for the viewers at home, every month I get a lot of stick from this man in the middle about my coffee mug. I love, I love my coffee mug. It, it, it's great. But I've upgraded, Trav. I've upgraded to a new one. Do you like it? <laughs> <laughs> I should do better like it, I'm not gonna lie. At least I'm represented in the studio. Um, I waited for months for that moment. <laughs> unbelievable, unbelievable. <laughs> oh my word, what a uh, exciting day it's been. I mean, honestly, I, I replied to him, I've won me over now. Uh, at the beginning of today, I wasn't really feeling the vibes, but now I am definitely, definitely feeling the vibes. Exciting stuff from the sidelines, absolutely so. And uh, foot just didn't quite look the same today. In terms of their previous performance, they were struggling a bit. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I feel like overall, they just didn't quite manage to bring back the same energy that they did against SK. They didn't look bad, but 
Uh, Reply to them are, are, are in a good place right now, and it shows. Well, let's take a look back through the day. It has been a very eventful one. Zeta Division did fantastically well. They only dropped a single set today with their sweep in the semi-finals, no less, getting stronger along the way. And they're back where they like to belong in that grand finals up next. Humble did okay against one trick ponies, but one trick ponies obviously faltered a little bit in that semi-final stage is still, I think, did fantastically well. SK Gaming and Foot, what a matchup that was to start things off as that third quarter finals match. And it led through to Foot. It was just not quite making it through to the grand finals. Reply Totem got the revenge from April's monthly finals. Navi, no. One of the April gr no, grand finals winners, the, the champions of April, went out to Reply Totem in those quarterfinal stages. So we have got our grand finals set. It's going to be State Division up against Reply Totem and a chance to see how we're faring and where our heads are at. We're a bit split, actually. Trav, going to have to come to you first. Zeta, talk us through it. I mean, I don't know what there is to talk you through, to be honest with you. Like, they seem to have been Reply Totem's kryptonite this year, and I think it might happen again. Through a lot of SPS Cups, through the monthly finals, through pretty much everything we've seen Zeta play against Totem, Zeta have come out on top. Teddy as well, going to come to you on this one because we're on the same page here. Uh, I've got to say, at the beginning of today, I, I mean, I, you can see I was going with Navi against the, uh, that, that fourth quarterfinals matchup. Reply Totem looked very good against Foot. They've been great in the competition. I felt like they had maybe slid off a little bit since Mobile Masters with SPS, just simply because they were in a honeymoon period. You know, they weren't looking quite themselves, but today they are looking very fierce. Yeah, I, I mean, as you said, we're pretty much on the same page. I did have Reply Totem beating Na'Vi, but I didn't have them beating Foot in the semi-finals. But now, as you said, they look strong enough that not only do I think they're capable of winning it, I, I kind of hope they win it because they deserve revenge at this point. They've lost to Zeta too many times in the BSC and this cannot stand no longer. Yeah, the only time that we've not seen this clash happen was April in the monthly finals where Reply Totem went out in the first round to SK Gaming. We have got the grudge match on our hands and I love it. In February, it was Zeta Division with a 3-0 sweep in this very stage of the competition. And Gero, Meow and Naoi will be absolutely looking to replicate that here today, Trav. Yeah, they really will. And I mean, I don't doubt that they'll be able to do it. You know, my prediction was their way. And I think they've got what it takes today to down Reply Totem. They really have been an incredible team all year round. Looking to make this their third monthly final win, which is just a big, big thing for them. It pretty much locked them in to one of these top spots. I mean, it doesn't lock them into Worlds, but in terms of points, they'd be looking extremely good for it with two months to go. That seems confident, Teddy, but you've got to remind him that in March, you know, Zeta was a 3-2 win against Reply Totem. So in that second matchup, they were, win. you know, closing the gap, closing the gap. So where, 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 you think, you know, where were your thoughts with this one? Because, you know, I mean, I don't think it's been quite one-sided. I think but I, I think it could be Reply Totem's month, but, you know, what are your thoughts, Teddy? I think that Reply Totem, you know, after Mobile Masters beating the world champion team and still finding some pretty great success throughout the year here, like, yes, it's not 2022, but I still feel like they got what it takes and they're hungry for it as well. You know, is it a division they were able to already show their worth so far this year and Reply Totem still needs a little bit more of a push, I think, here in, in the MEA and today could just be that. Well, it's going to be an absolute banger matchup. There's going to be no doubt about it. Obviously, Reply Totem really are looking to secure their first monthly finals win of the year. And you know, they got that last year in July. So it's not too far off the same sort of time that they really started to pop off now. And I feel it could be theirs. Zeta, though, of course, have held the, the, the trophy of month by month for two months running. Faltered a little bit last time round, but the in which they thought to do is no longer to be seen. Navi going out in the first round. It's an open door now, realistically here. And this could be the time. Crab, you think it's going to be Zeta? Teddy and I go in with Reply Totem. But there can only be one winner. Trav, you and me going to take the reins on this one, I think, for the grand finals, if I'm not mistaken. We'll catch up with Teddy in just a bit. 
Parallel Plays and Hot Zone is first up. We've seen some weird and wacky drafts. Looking at the uh, tally as well there, the predictions over at event.brawlstars.com, 63% siding with Zeta Division here, 37% on the side of Reply Toes, a bit sweet there. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people have faith in Zeta Division. I'm not sure if it's because they, they still think it's the Zeta Division from last year, but we do see them coming out on top of a lot of predictions pretty much all year round so far, at least. And honestly, regardless of whether it is or not, I'm happy to be backed by the community. 67% on my side. I think I'm pretty happy about that one. But Jesse is the first pick. Uh, I'm, I don't mind it. I've been saying I like him quite a lot. But I haven't really seen on this map. Mr. P, however, we've been told this meta by Bobby, and that means something. Yeah, I'd spent as well a lot of pros saying that it's it's now the meta. I'm not sure, convinced it's the meta. I think it's definitely now meta worthy. We've seen more of Jess today than I can remember as well. I mean, that brawl is popping up a great deal. And in the hands of Reply Totem as well, they must mean business with it. Be going to come out with that Mr. P pick. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, right? You pick Mr. P first, and then you know that your opposition is not necessarily going to be going for it. Um, I really like that from Zeta. Like, their draft is kind of just mirroring their strategy here. But Jess is a great thing to have on defense, you know? I really rate that tower on this particular map. You also have to have some range, some aggressiveness to be able to match alongside with it. I mean, Sam is available here as well. It's a bit of a tough call to have Sam going into a B, but we have some Stranger Things, and I don't know, I won't put it past them. Carl gonna come in. There's a bit of a safer pair of hands, no doubt about it. Who are you kind of siding with so far in this uh, draft trap? I mean, it's a bit of a tough one. I think if Zeta Division managed to, I don't know, I was going to say pick up a thrower, but pretty much only Dynamite that would be valid left. So uh, I don't know how I feel about it. Willow's going to be very, very good, I feel, along a lot of these walls and with Barley Band, the way it kind of amplifies that, that little bit more as well. But Zeta Division, I, you know, I like the beat. I like the, uh, I like the Mr. P. But Carl has a lot to say about a lot of these picks in terms of just going aggressive and getting the spin on them. We saw Navi earlier today really playing Willow for all it's worth. Gray going to come out for the Zeta, and it's not a bad idea. I'm not overly convinced it's the best option in power pace, but I can I can absolutely dig it for sure. Um, we'll see how Zeta kind of fare with it. I think for the most part, you got to remember it's Reply Totem with this comp. It, it's kind of not necessarily what you'd expect to see them play, actually. The Carl for sure, but everything around it is definitely a bit more avant-garde, a bit more out there. Um, but, you know, MMA did show that Willow has a place in parallel plays. Reply Totem seems to have picked up on the same idea. And I'm going to be curious to see, like, how well Reply Totem do fare with that Willow pick. And the Grey on the side of uh, Zayt, to be completely honest. As we go into our grand finals match for today, is it going to be three grand finals wins for Zeta, or will Reply Totem make their mark and get their first? We're about to find out. Well, it's going to be a very good start for Reply Totem. I'll tell you that. Maru already slotting on, getting some shots through. There's the 3K available there from now in. Does actually get it off, follows up nicely as well. But Joker's still there. He's just taking his spot. Slow down coming through, though, and the 3K hit. But more, he's going to be taking his place. And it kind of just seems like a never ending flow of Totem. Very aggressive stuff, but then not done yet. Maru comes in to protect the pirouette as well. Gary gets the walking cane off, but he's still going. Replaced now by Joker, who's very calm and collected, just waiting for his time to try and get turret. And now he can utilize that as a bit of a thing to tank a lot of these shots coming in. He's still there. They've got to deal with him and get the right angles in this pinch, because now Maru's come behind it. All this time, Reply to him been going on the aggressive, and I love it. And Jiro looking for that TP back and trying to get another 1,000 HP heal, but Maru's just staying on the zone and almost finishing off right there. 2% needed, and it's going to have to be an absolute dream from Zeta, as they haven't even got 1% of Totem's side yet. They need to defend, they need to aggress, they need to do everything. But Maru, if he gets a super, should just be able to spin up and finish this. Yeah, that's 2% now, that is done. And that's it for the first game, at least. Reply Totem really making their stand early on, but they have also opened up the box of tricks that shows Zeta how they intend to play this one, and that will require, obviously, a bit of a switch around and some team talk in the middle, but, you know, Inso is the coach of Zeta, you know, and was last year for the Reply Totem. So if anyone can get inside the minds of this squad, it is going to be Zeta themselves. Maru just going straight onto the zone yet again, but the taps from Geru were much better and the clear up much swifter. That is the way you want to start this time around for Zeta, and they can now focus their time and their attention to the top right. 
Yeah, you can't blame him for a really nice aggressive plays, but so far it seems like Mario's just been, I mean, Mori's just been defending so, so well, and Mario aggressing. Joker kind of just being that support unit. He's going to get hit now in the LP and push back. Mario slowed. Jira's going to TP onto him as well, and this is the best we've seen from Zeta, and they haven't even guaranteed a percentage of the opposing zone yet, but still the best. Going through great timing on the gadget there. Really set from Meow, who's focusing far more on the right hand side at the moment. Mario just waiting to try to seize the moment that he can gain that mind control and hopefully put his opposition against his own opposition, really. Very tied up now. They're creeping forwards now, now into a very good spot, trying to get this pinch between himself and Meow onto Joker and Maori. But anyone who goes down now is going to give up a great deal of control and high ground. Now, Pizer turning his reply to his stop push balls here. Yeah, there's Maru, TP available as well, but it's getting him too far if he does choose to go for it. Tries to bait it out, Maru flashing that super walking gain in, gets the 1000 HP heal and gets it off. But still, that's even more percentage than we've already seen come out the top from Meow, and he's been just in a locked in a 1v1 matchup against Mori. It's just get a shot, heal, get a shot, heal, either way. And so far, it's just been Maru getting some aggressive percentage. Yeah, but his flying hooks are being as exacerbated as they go down. He's got no more left. There is a lovely little Honey Molasses there from Naui to ensure the swift takedown. And now they can focus again on that top right hand side zone. Barry with no scuba, not really much the aggressiveness. And as long as they can keep him that way, they can really start to control this left hand side better and creep their way forwards. There we go, the aggressive gets the takedown as well. They are looking very, very good now. Yeah, wonderful stuff. But all this can just be deflated by Mori making one masterful mind control here when they do choose to go aggressive getting someone to kill another player and that kind of just deflates all pressure maru needs a super to be able to have the mobility now those flying hooks are used slow available from Navi down this left hand side as well an endless amount of supporters coming in not the best place but the tp from jiro overused there and just goes straight into two of them not the best plan so far now he's just going to take the 3k but joker will just tank it eat that move forwards jiro gonna go for the tp but actually maru just gonna not even go aggressive with that super and just try and avoid it joker might want to just heal up in the meantime and take his place when he dies. Well, they take down in the end, but yeah, Fly Totem will get themselves in some very, very good spots in that bottom left, causing a big problem that I wasn't sure Zeta were going to be able to get out of. Is there time on the clock to even be able to secure this zone? That's the question. No, with Mario there on the bottom left, regardless, and it should be. Reply Totem will take this first set. They pull hard for it, and Zeta almost has something to say about it, but not quite enough. But we can get a bit of a glimpse of what is to come. It is so, so close between these two teams. Yeah, after that first one, it seemed like maybe Reply Totem were just going to kind of run away with it. But into the second, they did win, but it wasn't as convincing anywhere near. And that's what Zeta do. They come, they, 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 they lose, they make improvements. And that's what makes Zeta as good as they are. They may have lost the set, but the improvements they made were visible. They only just lost that second one. They just couldn't get aggressive enough. You know, Willow sat behind that wall. It's almost impossible to push. And Mr. P found a few connecting shots, but at the end of the day, the connecting shots just weren't enough to get the kill. Yeah, I'm getting more and more sold on it, to be honest. You know, it was something that coming into the day I've seen before, and I was okay with it, but not entirely convinced by it. But I think it's really spoken for itself today. Uh, time and time again, Willow, as that final draft coming through, does seem to be a very, very safe pair of hands when it comes to securing those defenses. And teams struggling for sure to be able to deal with that. Some good moments for Zeta, not to say they weren't at all. Very, very close, but the Playa Totem just had that edge that they were looking for. Yeah, they really did. And I mean, they've just got to keep that edge as well if they want to carry on winning against Zeta Division because they've been looking good all day long. Reply Totem have as well. And I think this is the final of probably a lot of people predicted coming through. But 8, 1 and 4 from the side of Zeta Division. And honestly, they got more kills, but it doesn't matter at all. 3, 1, 4 for the side of Reply Totem. They're the ones with the win. They're the ones with the percentage. And that's what really matters in a game mode like Hot Zone. You can't really fault Zeta Division though for, for getting the kills that they did just wasn't really enough. And I think Meow was the one who was on that aggressive side. And with only one kill, you're not going to get that offensive percentage. Yeah, it's very much just about cycling that aggressiveness onto the zone, isn't it? And that's what Reply Totem did so well. Going down a fair amount, you know, he's going to inevitably give more kills to Zeta, but it's the objective that matters. And we might see a very similar story happening here. Curious to see what the bans will be in that respect. But Carl, you've got to talk about that. You know, that brawler really coming in to full force now. I would say very much the meta. Um, I don't know whether it's quite leaked into the bans, but as a result of, the, yeah, there we go, Carl being banned. I'm glad to see it because this is a map where it would have really thrived. Bonnie is the response. 
That's the first pick from Reply Totem. But Brock, Max, and Eve banned from Zeta. Carl, Colette, and Grom banned by Reply Totem. Yeah, looking quite good then. Penny going to be the first pick of Zeta Division. I do like it. I think Penny's a very, very solid brawler, very versatile. Can be good against Bonnie as well. Once you get that salty barrel, uh, once you get the mortar down and stuff like that, it's extremely good uh, in that top left-hand side pocket. But they do have a second pick as well. See what they'll follow up with. Possibly something like a bell or something like that. It's also good against the Bonnie. Eve, uh, uh, Eve's banned out, sorry. So maybe something long range. Brock definitely banned out as well. So you've got to be looking towards something like a bell, I would say. It'll be a solid pick for sure. And it is going to come in for Zeta. We know that they tap with it. We saw it already earlier today over on Kaboom Canyon. And it's, you know, we've seen them also bring in Nanny here quite a fair amount. So I wonder whether they might be considering that as their third and final pick when they can see the grand scheme of things. Again, not my kind of go-to ideas, but Zeta are built a bit diff in that respect. And they do like to go with some edgier ideas. Reply to them tend to play things a little bit more traditional in that respect. As soon as they might go towards the B potential, something with some range definitely to add to that Bonnie is going to help considerably so. Shelly going to come in, I mean, <laughs> all day long, you know, we've seen it win. And at the end of the day, Sam as well. You see, I would have thought Sam was going to be coming on Parallel Play. It's not here. This is edgy ideas. Reply to from last year really kind of set the scene, the standard of bringing in Buzz here as a bit of a staple diet. And I've never quite seen them go with the Sam myself, Trav. I don't know about you. Nah, not sure about it either. Maybe they bring in something like a Ruffs or something like that, get a good amount of supers off that that Sam, and obviously pretty decently against the Shelly as well, drop some sandbags, uh, and the Clay Pigeon doesn't do too much range, but they can't go with Lou. And I don't really have an explanation for this at all, really. On a map like Safe Zone, I don't really see Lou too often, but obviously it's going to be good against the Tank, possibly good against the Shelly as well. It's just whether or not they're going to get the value out of the freezes. <laughs> this has gone very, very weird for me. <laughs> It makes sense, you know, it does make sense. There's a very strong counter towards Sam and any tank for that matter that's going to be really trying to get out right into your face. But, I mean, I, I, I genuinely can't even recall the last time I saw Lou on Heist, let alone specifically Safe Zone. Um, I, I feel like Shelly can't really go far wrong here, but ultimately, if Saints do really clock onto that fact and target her specifically with that mark, really with their undivided attention, then that could really be the difference maker here. Joker pushes his way forward so, so quickly, but the shots from Garu are connecting, as we thoroughly expected coming in the, into this one that they would. So, yeah, not great for the reply to not the great start they really were looking for here. You have to rethink this trap. Instant mortar as well coming through, and that's going to do quite a lot, but instantly taken down by Joker. Shouldn't be too far off getting it back if he just stands like this, though. Maybe one shot left, and there comes the slow, the stun coming in from now. He gets the stun off, but Maru still survives and gets a bit of damage for his troubles as well. Only 2%, but every percent matters. Yeah, it really does. Ultimately, Maru as well has got jump in and looking for his time to do so, keeping Naui low. Joker's quickly into the mix as well on the left-hand side. Power up the knockback potential, but... Maori duking around this, gonna go down now, but he's got some damage in the meanwhile. 18% done for the reply totem, and not really since they turned too much into the thick of things. Bit of a wasted super there for me from Daru, but let's see, he'll probably earn it back pretty swiftly, I would say. Yeah, Joker marked up as well, not the best. Maori almost stunned out. Get the gadget back in from Joker. Got the super returned as well, the Knuckle Busters back in hand and getting some heals, but when you marked up, the heals are gonna be nowhere near as, uh, as valuable because you're getting damaged so much. Penny more to re-established up there, and Joker just pushing straight through his mid, but with Lou Super, where's he gonna go? You can force the right-hand side, which you will do, yeah, and just really shut down Maori there. And now they can start to get the damage they've been desperately needing for the past few minutes, but that nest egg is in a great spot too. Does Maru know? No, he does not. He's gonna trigger it. And he's gonna focus his attention onto the turret. Joker's knocked back here. The shots are gonna get so much value from Garu. Maru should go down here. Survives on a little bit, but Meow will seal the deal, and... This is looking much better. Zeta shouldn't really be faltering here, but it's a lot closer than I think it really should be. Yeah, and Maury's duking nicely as well. Just got to try and stay up in the mix and let his teammates come up because they're in a 3% lead. Maru's going aggressive here as well, not even soaking up any shots either, but these two are just hoping to just get the damage off Sam. Maru just left on safe now as well. This is a risky game they're playing here. Pull back with a knockback from the turret as well. It looks like Maru might try and pinch back. The damage is coming through and it's actually being wiped out. The damage from the loose super is coming down, but up comes Totem and they're adding damage to the safe. The Sam, the Shelly, they don't have that much damage in the middle of the map, but when they get on the safe, 4,000 from the super and Zeta, after dominating the entire game, lose the first to Totem. Wow. 
I've got to say as well, I didn't mind them leaving the Shelly on the safe. I actually was thinking it before they did it, that they probably should just kind of commit and just overrun the situation. But Reply Totem were able to just foresee that problem and came up behind, had a bit of a flanking moment as well. And you've you got to be so, so careful around that. I mean, now Zeta are really in trouble of dropping another set. Two sets down in the grand finals is not a place that they've really ever found themselves in before. So they've got to be very, very careful now and start to really iron out some of these mistakes. And they are kind of mistakes for me. You know, they've got a, a winning comp against uh, another one, which is a bit lacking in range in some respects. And I mean, Maru, they're breaking. I mean, that's intentional, I'm assuming, right? <laughs> I imagine so. Maybe it's going to be useful for that Bonnie, but Mark going to be missed, shots going to be missed, and Maru is duking like nobody's business over this left-hand side, not getting hit by pretty much anybody, but a lot of damage coming through from that Penny. We might be able to get rid of this turret and get some shots through. Maru's there, jump, Mori's there jumping in as well, and Maru's still alive, even maybe even can get the kill there. Not shooting any shots, just waiting for all his ammo to be replenished. Might be able to find some kills, and Joker tried to come through, but 21% dealt by Totem. And Zeta, they have an answer, they can't even find him. They're flustered. They really are Maru. <laughs> Maru is doing a fantastic job in these bushes, and he's still there. He's able to get back into tank form as well. And yeah, we'll get onto the safe. He's got Salty Barrel, but Joker is in hot pursuit anyway. And Zeta just do not look like a squad right now. They look like they're just trying to make battles happen left, right, and center on their own instead of focusing on the real threats at hand and moving on to the next. And in the meanwhile, Reply to them are doing just fantastic spawn cycling, and that's where they're thriving. Yeah, Mori looking for another super now. Gotta be a decent distance off, because he did just turn back to that cannon form, so maybe a couple of hits and he'll be there. Joker trying to find his route through, throws out his uncle buses a little bit too far to the left, but gets the heal off and picks them up. Meow's not gonna fall either, but Mori just looking for this shot. If he can get it, no matter who goes up top, they're not really gonna be able to equal his damage. Mor Mori has the super over the left-hand side as well. We've still got Joker rolling through also, and they just need this opening. He's getting shots on safe anyway, and there's the jump. Now he just needs to pick his time. Zeta is struggling uh, to really land the kills as quickly as they need to to get onto the aggressive here. Maori on the safe joker now following up. Gonna be stunned and frozen out now, but there's just no time for a push. And look how big the push has to be in 25 seconds of time. It's just not realistically gonna happen. And reply to some, are just running away with this. I don't think the loop pick was the right call here. There's still some time left to play, but it's looking short, surely, Trav. I mean, 3% on the safe. They're not really gonna be bringing this back, are they? 12 seconds left, even if they spam every shot they've got on the safe, it's not happening. Nine seconds now, and Reply Totem are gonna run away with it. Even a bit more damage from the Knuckle Buster thrown in there. Super to play defensive, but that's gonna be two sets to Reply Totem, and Zeta Division are just dwindling away. I think maybe that Lou was a bit of a mistake, and, you know, if you can win with Sam and Shelly on a map like Safe Zone, I mean, Shelly's good no matter what, right? You got that, that movement speed, but Sam, not really seeming to do massive amount, and still wins. There it is. Zeta know it. That is the sign of a team that already looked defeated and they're not. And they have to remember that they are not. And they have to remember that they are the two times champ of this region. Reply Totem are looking for their best. They are hungry for it. They are getting the drafts to match that same hunger. And I think I feel like Zeta had an opportunity there. They got the bell. They love having bell on this particular map. You know, Penny is always going to have a good time with the indestructible walls. And it just kind of came down to that threat. They saw the Sam pretty in the same way that I did, thinking, oh my. <laughs> you know, if a Fry Totem are standing, you know, sticking to their guns with this one, they must have something very dangerous up their sleeve. Let's just go with the best, you know, counter that we can kind of think of. Even like a spike would have been better, realistically looking back on things for the, uh, the fact that Sloops has no DPS. You know, it's, it's going to shut down the, the push and look at the stats you know this is where you look on paper and you see this kind of thing in front of you if you didn't know what the results were you're thinking zay's got the win reply to him just play the objective it doesn't matter the power gets zero kills because he's just bringing the flow of action on the aggressiveness to open up the space for his team five kills for joker and maori and you know, almost double that on the side of every player on the side of zeta i mean they're gonna have to make some big changes into this to get involved have some pep talks going into this next set because they've got to make some changes. Reply Totem are returning the favor of February with a sweep of their own at this moment. Yeah, I mean, I thought they were going to gravitate towards a Rux or something like that. I think that would have been a much better pick. Uh, just play down one of those lanes, get some power-ups, play for the long game, because they outrange them. They're going to out-damage them if they get towards that safe, but they just didn't play the long game. They were just running in and getting uh, dealt with by the by the Shelly and the Sam. So we're moving on to Flare and Phoenix. They've got a restart now. A full reverse sweep is required, and a knockout is the game mode. But we'll see if they're able to do it, or if Reply Totem will take this win and become the... Uh, 
the June monthly final winners. You'll see the roughs coming off the start from Reply Toto this time, and I thought it was going to happen in the last. Bands coming in of the Grey, the Shelly, and the Gus. Barley going to be the first pick of Zeta Division, and their bands are going to be the Gene, the Tick, and the Shelly. I quite like the grey ban here from Reply Totem, as it is one of those maps where grey can have so much presence realistically here. Thinking ahead and the Shelly ban, I mean, you, you kind of have to. <laughs> like on both sides, you really do kind of have to at this point in time. The mid, ultimately here, is a bit of a risky one. I like kind of Gene here myself, but once those bushes are broken, it does really restrict what you can do with it. So B going to come in now for Zeta, which I think I prefer in that instance. RT though is still very much available here, and that would be where I feel like Reply Totem have to go with next. If they were thinking to combine the roughs with the beef, that kind of harder hitting sting, it's gonna work wonders as well with the RT too. So that being available is a no-brainer for me. Something potentially here for throwing control could be on their minds as well, but I think you have to go with that longer range approach. Roughs is just not gonna cut it on its own. Yeah, I agree. Max is going to be there as well. They're not really going to play for the long-range approach, and I don't mind it. You're going to go for the Max, just play for some speed. Grom's going to be coming in after that as well. Got that thrower. And obviously with Barley on the other side, you're going to be outranged him just that little bit. If you can manage to hit the shots, Grom Bomb being very influential as well. It's not like a Barley Super, it does damage over time. It's very hit and get the damage done, and that's the end of the round, or at least some wall break can come down from that as well. But Zeta Division have this last pick. It's going to have to be a very, very smart one if they want to beat Reply Totem here, and they need to get another two sets after that as well. I like the response for me, Carl. It's going to work out wondrously well here. I think that Zeta can bring back a set with this comp. But look how look how bold it is for Reply Totem. It's very aggressive. Max mid, I don't mind it. But I think it's just kind of better options are a bit safer and they don't want to play it safe they want to wrap this one up they want to make a statement and what a statement it would be you know because ultimately there's so much history between these two teams you know reply totem had so much success last year obviously you know into leaving the roster and the organization going over to zeta there's a long-term history and they've been suffering in defeats against this team time and time again month by month you know except for obviously in april this is their chance to get redemption this is their redemption arc right now and they just want to go in and seize it well we shall see if they're able to do it. They've got a good start, but Meow's very low, and that might be a pinch capability there. Joker just backs off. Doesn't really want that fight. And Mori throwing some shots down the mid, not connecting onto Jiro just yet, and Joker's surely going to be ticking up now in terms of close to speed, and speed is going to be what they need because they need this explosive burst to be able to get much done against this comp. Yeah, field promotion being ran there by Mara as well, so the HP of Joker can be just going up the more they stick together, and. The more token moves, obviously, the, the, the more speed it's going to have. We saw this come up, I believe, actually, in the qualifiers. I'm pretty sure it was ran possibly by Casey and his squad, but it didn't work out, if I remember correctly. Let's see, now there's a big pinch. The gap's coming in. They've got to take exactly what they need. I like that from Melbourne. He might go down for it. Might be punished. The heels are there from Garu. Just the nick of time. He's created the space that they really needed here, and they could turn this around now. Yeah, the heel's coming in, but Grombom comes down. Jiro goes down as well. Meow falls, and Mori cleans up. Grombom followed by some shots. Beautiful performance from him. One round needed for them to take this game, and on that, it'll be match point. Scary stuff, isn't it? It really is. All hangs in the balance, and... That's the thing, looking at the player cams between the sets, they just did not look like they were in a, you know, a fight mentality. They, they looked like they were just kind of already de defeated and demoralized. They've got to come back here. Get, oh, just a few shots down the left-hand side there. Be a bit more cautious. Joker going in, very aggressive on the taps, and Reply Totem just look like they are in control every step of the way. Very aggressive in their nature. They just got to start to match that, and this is not necessarily the kind of cop that will. Yeah, Mario's just giving them such beefy HP as well. The power ups there, the shield gear, the field promotion, everything's lining up for Joker to be the man to make the move. He's got his speed as well, and just saving this for the late game. Gadget's thrown down the left hand side there by Mori. Still got a couple in hand though, I believe. And now the speed comes through. Shot into Mario instantly though, and with speed, that's not what you want. They might have wasted this one. Need to start from ground zero yet again. But Meow's got super, and that can be dangerous. Big clustering here, big value there from Meow. He can go in if he wants, but he's keeping everyone low. Nonetheless, Joker 100 HP goes down finally, and the pinch will secure it. Signs of life from Zeta, and it's about time. Yeah, it really is. They need to make the plays yet again. They're just waiting for the late game, but Joker and his speed really didn't do a lot, I will say. 
Uh, you needed to make more use of that, I feel, and maybe another power-up being thrown to him in this round is needed, and just that speed needs to be more influential. He does have it now, and field promotion beefing him up a little bit more, but now he's saving his 3k, Meow saving his skin. Still got a flying hook in hand as well, and that is dangerous. Good chooks, though. Meow did well and flying hook in, and Maori's in trouble. He will go down. Everyone survives for Zeta. This is the best chance of getting a game that they've had for a very long time. Great honey, my is there from now. He absolutely shutting out Joker. And now the taps to follow should be his demise. He's escaped. Face shift away. A chance to fight another day. I really do like that. Supply drop from Mari because why not, right? This is over either way. You look at it one way or another. Someone is winning this game. And this is the best chance they've got to be able to survive on. They're doing so for now, but it's a three versus two. It's a big ask here, Trav. Yeah, and Mario's going to be gone as well. Surely the shot's there. Joker's the only one remaining. Face shift through that. Doesn't even get that kill. And Zeta Division, they get a game, and that is the lifeline they need. They need another one, and then another two sets to reverse sweep this. It's a long road ahead of them, but you've got to start somewhere. Yeah, smile there as well, finally. On the faces of almost everyone, deep in thought and focus, no doubt about it. But they did need a little bit of hope, a glimmer that this comp has some legs here to survive a set, and then they can work out the rest after that. But we are still that game away from doing so, and the reply totem will have learned a lot from the previous rounds. Let's see how they fare this time round. They're playing a lot slower into the mid. I prefer that myself. I think that Mario and Joker have got to supply as much time as they can until they can earn that utility to go on that aggressive push. Be very careful of Meow because he is dangerous on that call. Yeah, he really is. Joker now just trying to make something happen, get his super and get some aggression going. Meow's the one who's really making the moves for this side of Zeta Division, though, and he's getting some piercing shot through. Lovely stuff. Maru's very low now as well, and Juro pops this healing tonic as well. But through comes the Grom shots. He's got a gadget activated as well. That can be dangerous. Shots come through, but nothing connects. Speed from Joker is going to use it, not trying to save it for the next. Meow almost falls, but just avoids it. And Maori running for the wall to try and stay alive, but I'm not sure that's going to happen either. Yeah, that was great from Zeta there. Being really patient, Meow was very close to going down, and that could have been a, a real game changer in that one. But nonetheless, this could well be looking like a Zeta set for me, and that could well be enough to see another to follow later on. Big speed coming in, phase shift from Joker, but he's going to back away from Gera as the heels come out, keep everyone afloat. And now, at least, going back into the side walls and looking to fight another day. Lots of call available for Geru. Protective pirouette available for Meow and big amplified sting ready for Naoi. It feels like Zeta are getting all ready for this next push. Well, we'll see if Joker can get a speed and make something happen because it's going to be Maori who needs to make the play now. He's the one with the power up and he's the one who's at such a tough position against Meow who just flying hooks in and gets the super off with tailspin and pir protective pirouette. Maru just getting some shots through, getting very, very low as well. But here comes Meow, speed away. So, Flying Hook was wasted, but he's still got another one. He's still got some in the bank as well. So, not the best position for them whatsoever. But now he might be the prime target for Joker here. A little trade might be happening down bottom as well. Joker gets the kill, but they actually both survive. Maru's still alive, needs a super if he wants to make something happen here, and I just don't see it happening. Maori, sneak, like, trying to get something happening. Actually gets one, can he get two? Him versus Jiro, it's going to be two shots needing to connect. But Dali's just so much easier to hit with that range. And Zay Division get a set back, stay alive, two more needed, and Totem still only need one. Very calm and collected there on those final shots from Zeta. That's a good sign. You know, that was a very tense situation for them. The Ply Totem would have loved nothing more than to make it a sweep to return the favor back in February, but we've got a game on our hands. That is what matters to me watching from the casting desk. We want this to go all the way. And you know, going into that matchup, Zeta just did not look themselves. But they were able to just draft the combo which they were comfortable with, one which they were able to prove. They were able to just suppress the strategy that Applied Totem wanted to implement. And the aggressiveness there didn't pay off. That's a learning. So that Reply Totem will have to take forwards. They want to be able to become this month's champions. Yeah, they're going to be two in a row as well. Still a long road ahead of them. The next map's going to be Backyard Bowl as well. So I'm not sure how I feel about their chances on that map. I feel like Totem and the aggressive boys on Totem are probably going to be the favorites going into that one, especially with the lead that they've got as well. But this map was all Zeta Division. Like there really wasn't any big Totem moments where they made huge, huge plays. You expect Jura to win this one because of how much easier it is to hit those shots. But with some luck, maybe they'd have made it happen. But Zeta Division, this time with all the kills and the DPS, do take the win back because Knockout, it's a KD mode.
Get solid stats there. Realistically there, Meow had a phenomenal time. I mean, his number of kills matched the entirety of Reply Totems. I mean, that's very, very impressive. Gera as well now, you know, this is one of those modes where, you know, kills and deaths really do matter. It can place a lot of pressure on your team and ultimately the aggressive nature of what Reply Totem were trying. I love, it's my preferred style of, you know, gameplay to watch, absolutely so. It's very, very entertaining, but you've got to be able to be as controlled when it comes to landing those marks as well. Backyard Bowl is the map for Brawl Ball up next. Very much a different kind of play style for sure, but I don't know, Trap. This, this map, obviously, in the, in the pool has had its kind of historical times of troublesome stalemate kind of moments. We haven't really seen that in the new sort of implementation since the Indestructible Wars, at least in my opinion. Kind of, where do you see this kind of map fitting now in terms of the meta and, like, you know, when teams approach it? What have they got to bear in mind? I mean, I feel like we still have had some serious stalemates, just as you say, not as many since those Unbreakable Wars, which is kind of unexpected. And I do think in Europe as well, it's one of those things where they just just go for it, you know, like the ball's in the pocket sometimes, but occasionally it's just a more aggressive kind of stance than a lot of the other regions who play it a lot more passively. Uh, in terms of the bands, though, we got that Gene, the Max, and the Stu, and Stu, Shelly, and Penny on the other side. Obviously, with, with uh, Zeta Division having the first pick, they're probably getting Shelly out of the way because of that. But they're actually going to go for this Gus. I do like it. Give some good, uh, give some, give some good shields for the aggressive stances. And obviously, if you defend in as well, it can be very, very good. But I don't know if it's a first pick for me. I'm warming to it. It's one of those brawls that I always forget kind of actually exists when it comes to draw. But now, actually coming towards the idea that it's kind of first pick worthy for me. I think Bonnie here would be a good response idea for a play to but doesn't really kind of match too much their play style. Um, a little bit here and there, but. They can get an opening for a big tankier idea. I think that that's kind of where they'd like to be with this. So, okay, fair enough. I quite like it. I quite like it. I mean, it's it's going to help a little bit more with the control side of things. And Crow is a fantastic way to back that idea up too. Could open up the doors to a pam here from Zeta or something. They, they, they play some very out there kind of stuff, which we don't tend to see other teams in this region adopting towards. You know, they really do uh, they have the nannies, their flagship too. I don't see it working here myself, but a Brock would be my kind of go-to way. They seem to break open those protective barriers to really open up the goal map, wouldn't go amiss. You don't want to get trapped in this idea of you know, having that there necessarily. You'd much prefer to leave it be gonna come out though. It's always a good mid, but it does leave some options still available for Reply to, to be able to counter it. Yeah, I was going to say maybe Mr. P, uh, not banned out. So I think Mr. Yeah. P is probably a good shout. They and could pair they it. Really, they don't really want it against the B either. And it's probably quite good against the Bonnie, against, yeah. the, against the, the Crow. So wouldn't be a bad shout in my opinion, but I kind of guess the B defends them against a few more tanks. Uh, obviously, if you go Mr. P, you're kind of susceptible to just being walked over. But with B pinching down, it might be a little bit better. Uh, as B's already good against Bonnie anyway. They're going to go with Carl, though. And now I feel like, actually, no, because Carl's going to be decent against Mr. P, right? So it's not going to leave them that susceptible. But still, I don't think it'd be a bad pick. Yeah, it's going to cause some problems here and there. Um, I don't mind it if they go for it, but I'm, I'm kind of with you. I think they need to draw away a bit from that idea now. Um, it will definitely exacerbate a lot of the B shots that they'd like to be able to maintain. And it's Buzz coming out, and I don't mind it. I quite like it, but it is definitely high risk for sure. The replies are oh, that team, you know, they will pop off with it. And uh, you just can't turn your back to them with it. You, you're going to have to take care of it. The slow is going to have to be there. I think Zeta would like to go on the aggressive here big time. They need to wrap up this set kind of quick because if they let Reply to some cook, they're going to get burned. Yeah, no, I agree. And, you know, Buzz, it's going to be very good against this Carl. If it can get in proximity of that Gus as well, it's going to be very good against that. B, it's pretty much the defense they have against it. But at the same time, B can be overwhelmed quite simply just by a jump from Bonnie or something like that. But Bonnie's going to have to get super. Oh, Jero, 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 Jero. Not looking good. They're all together, right? So it's kind of one of those unfortunate things. They're going to try to defend as best they can, but I don't see how it's going to work. I think it's back now, but that's unfortunate. Definitely so. Unfortunate circumstance for Jiro, but he's just got to play on and see what happens afterwards. Now, got the super as, as well. Got triple super from Zeta Division. This might be an aggressive push that they need. Now he's trying to play down this right side. Nice stuff. Great shots coming through, but the slow's quickly exacerbated by that jump from Mori moving into a different form. 
Joker has the super and Meow got to be his prime target, surely. Tries to snipe him across. Vertical jump from Maru going to surely get the trade. Actually gets the kill with one shot from Maru, Maori coming in. And uh, Jiro looking for the walk, but not able to find it with a nice inception from Maru. I swear the wall break has really opened the doors for Buzz to thrive because Reply Totem can sit back in these moments and just actually get stronger for it. Big, big flying hook in from Meow will secure it. Let's get a pass through as well. As the area is stunned now. Nice gadget there from the Kooky Popper. Mario's going to try and pull through. Oh, great interception. The pass through is there. Beautiful stuff from Zeta. Karma collected when they needed it most. They get a goal on the board. Yeah, Mario's got his jump here now as well. Super still available for him. Joker just working on his and gets it as well. Grasps him perfectly. Mid spin, waste is super. Nice stuff from him, but down goes Maru. Still some gadgets in hand for Joker as well, but don't really want to be going towards any of these without a super and a stun. Shield can be popped onto himself, but Jum goes vertical from Maori and tries to get Maui down. And even with the goal, they pretty much got gifted. They're all she does. Yeah, you can really sense the tides are turning here a little bit. Big something from Joker. Picked up though from Gary, so the trade is there. And Maru is going to go down himself. I think Gary can probably walk this one in, especially with the hills. Now they have a support. No stun available there on the respawn. And Sator that are really starting to run away with this now. And I'm worried for a buy totem. It was not that coming into this matchup. I mean, they are my prediction here. Well, you know, I'm not saying I'm rooting for a team, but come on, <laughs> get my predictions right. Let's go. I'll be taking a, I'm thinking a big win if they manage to pull this one through. They won it even with a gold pre and pretty much gifted against Reply Totem in this one. So we yeah. might be seeing that set number five. Totem going to need another explosive start, but this time with Jiro actually playing might be a little bit more difficult. And after he came back, Zeta played it perfectly. They know that they've got to take care of this boss pick, and they have been doing that. Joker's been struggling because the shots are just landing from all directions because everyone on the side of Zeta knows that they've got to ensure it. Uh, dropping like flies now, the pass through there, the potential pass through to Naoi, but gonna play it slow because you have to against the boss, take care of it first, and then go for the big push here. Time Tox is still available for Maru as well, so it's gonna be a tough thing. If they get a pass through, then Meow is there for it. He's gonna have to go away for it. It makes a lot of sense. Just exacerbate down what Reply Totem have got to defend until they've got nothing left and then seize the moment. They've already got them in a good spot, so they can just keep this flow and eventually they will falter. Yeah, you gotta hope Joker doesn't get a really good super for them though, and there he does. Nice shield provided. Wow. Beautiful from Jiro, finding that. Maury's low as well, gets back in the tank form, but one and a two from now he'll get him down. 120 on the clock, that's a goal. And now Reply Totem have to make something happen. Incredible stuff. You know, Zeta are looking at home. It's a map from moment which really suits them. I don't think the bus pick is a bad one. It's just simply the strategy that they're focusing around. Maru needs his super. He's got it now. He can go for the jump. He's going to pass through the Joker. Who's going to score? Surely, yeah, Ooh. gadget in. You can see it coming a mile away. And Zeta just didn't notice it coming. And that's the first sign of a potential turnaround. Yeah, and it's one of the only mistakes you'll see Zeta make as well. That's the thing. Letting that open, you know, we could see it. It's obviously different when you're playing, but you could see that from a mile away as a viewer perspective. Meow yeah, got his super here as well, but going to be feeding Jokers in the meantime. Great slicing and dicing from him there. Joker has this super in hand, trying to go for a little swinging play from one to another, but this has got to be a walk. There's three of them there. The jump comes in from Maru. Might even intercept this ball, but doesn't. The spins come through. Meow's there. He's got his super, though. Gets the stun off, gets the ball, plays it to the right, and they live. But only just, only just great stuff from Joker. Really coming in clutch for his team there because that would have been fifth and final set all day long. And he's not done yet. Gadget in. Great timing for the shields there on Garou's half. But he goes down regardless. It's a three versus one. What can now he do about this? He's going to try to Oh, the miss shot from Joker. It's a painful one to watch back in the board, I can assure you. And Zeta, as a result, are able to survive on a bit longer. Need some supers back though, and Joker's gonna have a tough time in this overtime. Everybody outranging him, but he gets his super. Still got one of these little shield, uh, these little healthy things for Gus on the floor here, but now he is hitting hard there. The stun, the shield hits him as well though. He's getting the shield as well. It's just perfect from Kira every time they're in danger. He's got a shield ready. Full up shots from now. He and just that last one avoided. Nice kill there from Meow as well. They're bringing the ball up. They want this set number five. They can smell it. They just need to make something happen. Thanks for advising, and it's exactly what we wanted to see. Big stuff from Zone Joker, but the shield coming in clutch yet again. And this utility super for Meow, super for Naoi. If they get themselves to the ball, this could well be a goal. And going to the fifth and final step, Joker's going to 
trying to get us down here. The ball's left hang, hanging there. He's going to be able to defend. What? How has he managed to do that? I mean, that seems like a mistake from from Zeta more than something massive from Joker. I don't think the patch should even be made there, right? I'm Surely I'll be corrected at some point yeah. I'm wrong, but I feel like that's a mistake on Zeta's part. Yes, it was a great defense from Joker to be able to make it happen, but I had a thought that that was going to make, make its way through and make it into the goal. But we are going to have a rematch of that game with brilliant plays from both sides there, back and forward, back and forward. Toten still need two to finish the game, and Zeta Division need one to take to a set number five. What an aggressive start from Reply Totem. And Joker's got the stun off the back of that. They've got to get this ball away. This is going to be a Reply Totem goal. What a gadget there from Garu. He's able to just single-handedly just deflate the entire left-hand side. Wow. Great stuff. And now they can take care of Maori as well. That was Christ averted. I've got to hand it to Joker though for that defense. That, that was just honestly, the timing was impeccable. And we wouldn't even be at this point in time if that hadn't have been defended. So let's see though, can Reply Totem still secure the win within this set? It's definitely possible. Larry's looking for the search of the ball, not going to find it. Larry jumps in and that, it's not going to be enough. It's going to be a goal. Reply Totem now are in a fantastic spot. Yeah, wasting the time there as well to perfection. One minute 35 still on the clock, though. Zeta Division need an answer in that time. Joker has another superhero as well. He's going to be looking to finish this one off before Zeta can even answer. And Gadget Pop by Mori increasing his movement speed, and that's going to be a tough thing for B to hit. A little shot coming through there and baited out a few. Nice stunt to return there, but ball's got to go in the corner for Totem here. They need to wait this out. Well, pass up and the slow. Brilliant stuff. Doesn't get the inception of this. Might be a walk. Does he have super? He doesn't. Might want to get it. He does get it in time. And Joker defends again. Incredible stuff. You know, I saw the way that they backed away. They didn't want to feed into Joker too much. By, by trying to have the body blocks available for the goal. Meow might be able to get this night. No, shut down massively so great stuff there from Maru. I think a little pop of the slowing toxin caught possibly there too just to ensure it but nonetheless Fly Totem can just castle that ball on the top right now and focus their attention on just securing kills. But Zeta, they've got, they've got to be feeling now about Joker and the way that he's handling the situation. That they've got to go back to where they were in the previous games and really focus their time and their attention on just ensuring the takedowns quickly. Yeah, slow on to Joker there as well. Follow-up shots also. Meow gets yeah. the super off. There he comes. Now all going in. Jump from Mori onto all three. Gets one. One's going to go for the ball. One's going to walk. Surely and none of them go for it. There's 15 seconds left. You're getting stunned. You've got to play for it. We've seen Zeta like this before. It's in that indecisiveness going towards the ball and it's happening again. The Playa Totem will take this game and that is going to move them ever closer off the match point now and they can really now start to feel like this can be tied up in Brawl Ball. It's going to be very close. i like it to go all the way, but I'm starting to feel like it might be done and dusted here, Trav. Please tell me you agree. Well, I'm not, I'm not being yeah, stupid, I do. right? I do. Like, why didn't they go for the goal? Yeah, I think it's not the first time in this set. It's happened as well a couple of times now. I think this, we saw it a little bit in North America a few months back when, you know, Dog Walkers had that, you know, penny in the backhand. And we saw as well, I think it was, um, or the oppositions were playing with that rose to pick and they were just really worried to go for the goal a lot of the time because of a single brawler. And they have got to shake that and be more you know, secure in themselves and more assertive here because they're wasting opportunities and they might not get a second chance. Jiro shields are so good though. I mean, they might have made some mistakes, but he's the one who's playing flawlessly here, I will say, giving shields whenever people need them. Through comes Meow though, great shots. Might be able to finish off Maru here. No slow from him just yet. Shield available as well. The stun comes through and it's gonna be missed. They're slicing through them now. Joker goes down. A miss, please, Zeta. Please. It's a goal. <laughs> get it in. And now only one minute and forty until we see a set number five if Totem don't answer. <laughs> I was worried for your personal well-being for a second there, Trav. I was worried massively sorry if that didn't go in. But let's see how they respond now. Keeping Fighters from a bay, but Joker can't be far away, surely, from another huge stun moment. Big flying hook, the takedown is there onto Maori, and a jump is going to be forced out there from Maori. Swiftly taken care of as well. Will Joker we get a third Ooh. time defense? Oh, the double spot is swift. We're going to get the pass through now, which they surely will. Zeta survives the fifth. That we're going all the way. I'm actually sweating. I'm not sure if I'm sweating because I'm like jumping out my seat that they should be scoring or because this is such a good game. Maybe a little bit of both, but Zeta Division bring it back. We're going to see a set number five, and this is the final that everybody wanted to see. Totem versus Zeta Division, and we're seeing a set five.
It has to be decided here. Like, it just simply has to. There's too much at stake. There's too much on the line, too much history here to talk about for it to not go to the fifth and final set in this region, which every single month will go on indefinitely until we are simply out of breath here on the casting desk. But definitely some big signs of, you know, nerves coming in for Zeta, big time. But also for, for Reply Totem as well, some solid defenses, but it wasn't clean for either side, actually. Great, you know, moments and hugely exciting stuff, but the, the, the tension is starting to show. Yeah, it really is. Both teams really, you know, making a few mistakes, and that's the, the magnitude of how big this game is for both of these teams here. It's safe to win this one. They only need to make, well, they only need to qualify once more to lock in a world spot. That's how big it is. It's kind of insane having just come back off a mid-season break. Holy stats. <laughs> <laughs> Let me come back around to that point. My goodness me, Zeta. <laughs> 21 kills for Meow. 265 DPS. I mean, absolutely doing work. But like he put, rightly pointed out though, Trav, Garu was doing phenomenal stuff as well. Keeping his teammates fully shielded up the entire time. And no doubt a lot of that coming from there. Flyto from stats wise, just very much more of a defensive one, it's fair to say, but that is a big divide. I mean, if Zeta can see that going into this next set, it's got to be something to have on their minds that can give them that reassurance that they can still do this. Yeah, I mean, as I said, you know, Gero was playing so well. Shields always onto his teammates, and you know, regardless of all the kills that they did get, the amount of survival they had from, from him was really, really incredible, and just great plays all around from the Zeta squad. We're going to see who wins this one. Set number five, obviously, going to be the decider. Reply Totem, they're not looking too good now. We saw, he's, he's looking exactly like Zeta Vision were when they were down 2-0. Absolutely defeated, and that's not the face you want to be pulling. No, but having said that as well, though, you know, we saw Zeta able to rise above it and get past it. And the question now is, can Reply Totem do that? They've been dropping you know, now sets consecutively so, and... That's always a tough one when you know you could have wrapped things up a lot sooner than you have. And you know, last month we saw, well, I keep saying last month, uh, back in April rather, Reply Totem did get reverse swept by foot in that quarterfinal stages. So that's going to be on their minds a little bit too. Uh, just to give you guys a good bit of an update, we are having some internet issues on the side of Zeta as you saw in that really opening first moment of Brawl Ball. They still managed to win off the back of it though, having said that, but uh, nonetheless, we want to check it out, make sure that they're all good to go for this fifth and final set because uh, the way that these guys are playing, we want to make sure that that is the best possible competitive setting for both sides there. Layer Cake will be the map though for Bounty, and uh, what I will say is this is the closest monthly finals grand final in the EMEA region this year. We've only ever had 3-0s and 3-1 scorelines in the grand finals, so you know it just goes to show how the competition is shaping up to be, the level of play, the level of competition, competitiveness within these teams and how much they want this. Like you said, with, this, with the points and the way that the leaderboards are shaping up to be, Trav, it's really getting close now to the nitty gritty where we can actually confirm people in last chance qualifiers and maybe even the world finals too. Uh, the way that Zeta are breaking ahead, it's kind of scary for me. Yeah, I mean, if Zeta win this one, as I said, they only need to qualify one of the last two months, show up and they're qualified to Worlds. That's how well they're doing. And I mean, a team who wins three monthly finals should be going to Worlds anyway, right? That's 50% of the entire year you've been winning. So definitely deserved. If they do manage to win this one and qualify next month, they'll be heading straight to World Finals. Still though, they've got to get through this one. They've got to get through Reply Totem. And Reply Totem have been looking fierce all year round as well. But this reverse sweep would be a big, big thing for them. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be something that which they'll have in their minds. If it happens, you know, if Reply Totem don't, secure this in this fifth and final set you know it's consecutive months of being reverse swept and we saw that a little bit last year didn't we with various teams i think tribe gaming eu sort of came to mind as one that sort of struggled with it it does make those moments where you're able to break the mold better for you it's more you know more elation for sure but i think that they would much prefer to uh to make this more, more straightforward uh, as we kind of come to expect Reply Totem to be able to do. It's, it's kind of interesting to me that they just seem to be more at home in a land setting, more at home on stage and, and easier to kind of control the outcomes and have the crowd behind them there and they just are a team which really respond well to that kind of thing. So let you guys know as well, we are still having a few internet troubles with Zeta Division, but we'll shortly be getting into the game as quickly as we can to make sure they are all ready and set to go. And, you know, there's nothing worse than going into a matchup and seeing someone standing still, is there? 
Yeah, I mean, for the people just joining as well, we are in set number five of a matchup between Zeta Division and Reply Totem in the Grand Files. It really has been an absolutely incredible today. We've had so many good games throughout pretty much the entirety of it. Every single game has been so close, and that's just what EMEA is. It is such a close region. Any team can pretty much beat any team. We are going on into Layer Cake in Bounty as the decider, though. And although they may have had some internet issues, they still managed to win that last set, which just goes to show how good they are. Jura was stood still for the, pretty much the first goal of the first match and they still come out on top i do love this for a decider like okay can really go back and forth and it's very punishing you know it's going to come down a great deal to this draft and having something that's going to not get you too locked into your spawn fans are in squeak sprout and the mr p from zeta interesting uh tick barley and gene for reply totem and the first coin toss handed over to zeta they'll get the first draft the first pick here Kind of, in my opinion, you have to go with a little bit more of that mid control based brawler idea. It just kind of feels like you're able to, or not, <laughs> you know, when Shelly's not banned, you know, pick Shelly. Um, it's, yeah. <laughs> I already know your thoughts on this one, Trav. I mean, uh, I. Uh... I don't like seeing it, I don't like watching it, but it usually wins. And that's clearly why Zeta Division have selected it, you know. <laughs> a lot of the throwers banned out. I mean, we've got the Barley, the Tick, the Sprout all banned, which is probably what would be good against Shelly here. Squeak's banned out, Mr. P's banned out, another couple of brawlers that are probably decent against it as well. Gene, usually paired with Shelly rather than against it, but we do have Reply Totem's first pick and it's gonna be the Gus. Solid pick, obviously providing the shields, you wanna take it out of Zeta Division's hands after Jiro just provided the performance that he did on it. Uh, you don't really want to see him playing that again, but they're going to pair that with a penny as well. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking Gus actually for Zeta, but they didn't go for it, and I should have spotted the bands. Really, realistically, it's just going to be a go-to if someone's not gone for it. It's definitely a much more defensive idea from Reply Totem. They might want to pair something more aggressive towards the end, but Zeta might take that opportunity away from them. I'd quite like to see Kyle come in now for Zeta. If not, maybe Reply Totem will snap it up, but ultimately... Can they go with something tankier here as well on the side of Zayza? It's not really their place down necessarily, but something long range. Carl, yeah, I, I like that. I do like that. Because Zayza work better with range. It just kind of fits their play style more. So having that ability to go in if they choose to, I'd imagine also get the flying hook in and the blue star, which we didn't see earlier today on the side of foot, but it would make much more sense to, Zayza to get that upper hand early and then have something to have in the back pocket to be a bit more defensive later. Yeah, well, we'll see. I do really like the car that will say able to slice through Gus, you know, even with shields and stuff like that. Usually you want to pair that car with the Gus, have it go aggressive, but we're going to see the B come through as well. I do really like the Saiyan Division comp, I must say. You know, obviously you can be able to tank quite a lot of it with, with that Sully Barrel, at least on the B side, but Carl's going to go straight through that. And I mean, that is dangerous for a Plytotum to face with. I think with totem kind of playing more of the norm, but... I don't know if I like the norm at the moment. <laughs> like, Zayt's mission just being out there and playing something a little bit different, it's either going to go very well for them or very poor. And I mean, it's not that different, but, you know, Reply Totem just a bit more safe. Stu, the final pick. I'm not sure. It wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting aggression. But I kind of expected it almost to be actually something tanky, despite the beast, despite the Shelly, just because it just keeps Zayt on the back lines. Let's see, going into this one, I think I favor Zeta's comp myself here, but the penny is always good to have. You know, if you get your opposition in those back spawn areas and you can just wait your time, you know, and Zeta will be very cautious to not give up that control or die too frequently that they then have to relinquish that control. It's quite, quite close in terms of the drop, I feel, but they're going in. And one of these two teams is coming out as the champion of the June monthly finals. Fly Totem have been looking for it ever since the start of this year. They have had it twice, looking to make it a third. Well, Joker going long dash as well, picking up that kill onto me out. Can't get the word done, but goes through there. Instantly hit with that return shot from the B, and now down goes Mori as well. And this is what Zeta Division wanted off the start. They might have lost Meow early on, but they answered quickly back. Very swift. Great right, taps from Naui, and oh, he's just continuing to just harass Joker, who's now on 150 HP there. Went down very swiftly prior to that as well. Lack of range, definitely not a favorable matchup for him in that mid area, but the shield handed over. Not going to do much. Realistically, there, it's going to be fizzled out by the time he even gets in position. But 
Five six from R starting to creep forwards on this right hand side and close the gap a little bit. For the most part, Zeta are getting some good damage though to be able to deflate it every time. Yeah, Meow in this spot here is really, really good. He's just going to be looking for something to finish them off, but just pop that clay pigeon, really not getting a lot from it, considering he just long dashed away. It's a nice move there from Joker, but Meow, now he's just hitting shots and not really following him with the most of the 3Ks, but they are in the lead. And with Shelly in this position, if he maintains under the radar and in the grass, not able to be connected to by this penny turret, then they're not in a bad spot whatsoever. That was a very big strong arm here. These taps from Naui, though, are helping out considerably well, and Gary just going to continue to whistle down Joker. But for 25 seconds, you've got to remember that Zeta have got to hold this position, and this could be a team white moment. Now, they're just going to be hanging on to that scoop for dear life. Give me a move for Gary to go in, but literally he didn't because Joker tried to go on the aggressive. Now going out with the blue star to hand as well. To bear in mind, it's hands over to, uh, to reply to him. One singular kill is now all they need. Five seconds, Joker's too low. He can't go in the aggressive now. Meow, so it's to the hands. Still, I don't think they're going to be able to get it. It's not going to happen. Zeta's division hold on and get to match point. That was very sketchy towards the end, but Zeta Division do hold on to the defense. Totem need to get the early kills that they did, but then not get killed in return. They need to keep control because it seems like they've just got such a solid defensive line on the Seda Zeta Division. And that's exactly what they were playing for. They got the early kills and got the defensive line. They just stood there. Penny Turret was placed way too far back as well, and it wasn't even connecting. I did see more from Joker on that stupid pick. To warrant it here, it's just not really for me showing its worth and whether that's because Zeta just shut down so well continuously so or because it's just not right here either way you look at it Zeta are dominating so far Meow's already got super on the right hand side and Zeta can afford this now they were playing a little bit more passive previous to this just to get the lead just to be able to try to ensure that they were able to survive those overtime moments but now they are just letting it flow and it's working the reverse sweep dream trav is very close to being succeeded yeah it really is jiro getting some nice shots in here as well the penny trap being placed down i had to use a flying hook back there i'm honestly not sure if he really did need to use that but chose to anyway and now the penny tour comes down and that got a lot of value just the blue star that being the defining factor now now he's not being hit by that penny shot but it's really going to be in a good position now, a lot better than the previous one where it was just out of range. Yeah, it's definitely a different scenario because that penny tower now is going to force the hand potential. Already look at this, the splash damage potential as well. Maru, down goes Meow. It's a lead over to reply totem. Joker's low, but he will escape with his life as Gary might not do the same on the left-hand side. He has to use super there just to get out of harm's way. And that's one thing less to have going on the aggressive. Reply totem can now sit back a little bit more and just wait this one out. Big tap from Naui, but 30 seconds is what remains, and it could be a match point, match point in here quick. Or will they be able to get a clutch final kill? Well, Jiro's going to go down. Did use the gadget there as well. Not necessary, but Meow going forward, trying to get the shots in. Naui tanking with the Honey Molasses. We might be seeing a double match point here. Gets the shot off slow, might follow up on the shot. There, Meow pinch back, needs the kill on Joker. Does get it, and that's going to close it down to two. Any two, any kill at all for Zeta will win it. He's got his super, uses to go forward. Six seconds on the clock, too early. Too early, his teammates aren't there, but they're low. Gets the shot through the super. He gets the kill, but the trade's there for Totem. And it's a double match point. Oh my word! If the first game ending wasn't tense enough, that one certainly was. I, I, I thought that, that could have been a singular Shelly Super away from just turning the whole game on its head with Team Wipe. My word, it comes down to one game. One game, but so far I still feel the Zeta Corp has some better legs. I, that, was, that was too close for me. Too close. Yeah, me, I'll go on bit of a tour around the left-hand side again. Joker, you know he's there because he's being scouted out. The rest of the bush is being scouted. Jiro goes forward. That should be Maru down. There's too many people pinching him. Joker's low as well, but slides through the not getting the connecting shots. Down goes one, down goes two. Joker, the only one remaining. He was the one who was the lowest. Goes for the shots forward, but Jiro spin out. It's only three, and they got the blue as well, so Jiro on me out, and it's back in their hands. Oh my word, it's just, just so tense. Big aggressive play from Joker, flying hook away from Garu. Able to live to fight another day. Oh, Joker, no, he knew what's coming! Straight into the face of the shotgun. Oh, but the gadget is there, and the trade is back. Blue Star is still behind by two stars, but that was a bit of a saving grace, and they were able to retain a lot of the back of that singular takedown.
Got shield there. Joker looking to try and go in aggressive, but the 3k instantly going to get rid of that as well. Meow yeah, with 6k HP down this left-hand side. Jiro has this super, has that th has the fly knock in hand as well. But being scouted out by Maru, they're playing this defensively once more, and if they don't feed the penny turret, then there's a possibility of winning from this position. But we saw it in the previous that when the penny turret's there, they're not in the best position. Just two stars in it, and 30 seconds on the clock. It can, it can change in the blink of an eye, and Joker is starting to creep forwards here. Low HP shielded over there from Maori. That might be enough just to keep him in the mix here, but I worry. There's so many supers. Great gadget, but time for then the healing to come in for Zeta. It's going to be a push from Reply Totem. It's going to be now. They're trying to make the push through. Joker's coming around the right hand side. Super still available there to slow. The Soul Barrel didn't tank too much and it's still there. Flying hook forward and Jiro gets the kill. Joker's too low to do anything as well. 150 long dash is there. Gasser healers and two of them fall. And Zeta Division are the champions of the monthly finals in EMEA. Third time. Third time running for Zeta. They are back on top. It wasn't their time for April but it is their time for June. This is the team to beat again in this region and Reply Totem was so close to taking the crown for the first time this year. The reverse sweep continues to happen. It happened last month and it's happened again. They're gonna have to go back and reflect. But what a day for Zeta. I mean, I didn't think it was gonna happen, Trav. If I'm honest, I know you did, you predicted it, but nonetheless, <laughs> I'm sure but it was 2-0 to reply to that many at home thought it was done in knockout. I thought it was sort of knockout as well. Not many at home as well. It's just like, <laughs> you know, I, even, even I predicted them and I was like, okay, this is over. I'm just going to have to be laughed at in the end in the show when we show the predictions. But Zeta, they got my back. They got my back. They really do. They've got many of the uh, predictions that have ended up Brawl Stars on their back as well. But what a commendable turnaround, especially when you look back to how deflated they all looked. I think it started to bring it back. Brawl Ball really was for me that kind of set where they were tested more so than knockout and had to persevere, had to demonstrate to themselves that they were able to make that happen. But what, a, what an awful result really for Reply Association because this was their month. I felt like it was time for them to be able to win the monthly finals. They won it last year in July. Maybe it's going to be July again this year. Yeah, I mean, in terms of games won, it was six and six, so a very, very even game across the board between these two teams. Zeta Vision, they just managed to bring it back after they got that first set. It just seemed like they were in a different gear. That broad ball set, they played so, so well, and that was even with Jiro disconnected at the start of one of the games, and they had some internet issues on their side. And then after that as well, Shoot and Star, uh, Shoot and Star, Layer Cake, bit back and forward, but they took the win nonetheless. So exciting to watch. I cannot wait to go back into the VOD to see a lot of these moments, but. But now, the highlights will be able to display it all for us. I, I want to know at the end of that second game with that Shelly moment, like whether there was the chance of anything to change the outcome, because that was just so, so insane to see. But, you know, again, you know, with Shelly the way it is, my message to the pros is literally this. You know, if you don't ban it, it's getting picked first pick. So, you know, it's getting to the point where she's just so strong. You can't leave her open. The, the, the win rates for her today have got to be at an all-time high. Yeah, they do. And I mean, that, that movement speed, if anybody from Supercell's listening, that's what needs to be hit. That's what needs to be hit oh. hard. So let's brawl her out. <laughs> Stat-wise, though, 4-6-1 for Zeta Division. Reply to and get the 3-4-2. So pretty even uh, in terms of kills. Just a couple as the as the difference, but 130, 138, 116, 116, 152, 118 for Reply to as well. So great DPS across the board. And I mean, it couldn't really be much closer. I got you back there, Trav, because it's Adrian on the balancing team's birthday today. I said that I would not wish him a happy birthday until they bring down the movement speed just a little bit. Until then, for now, it's just have a great day. Um, but a thoroughly great day it was for Zeta Division, honestly. I didn't think that they were going to be able to turn that one around, but they continue to surprise us in this region. And uh, wow, I mean, Reply Totem are not an easy team to beat. We've got our MVP from event.brawlstars.com. Who do you think it's going to be, Trav? It's got to be Jiro. Like, this is a lie. Community. <laughs> Guys. Back me up here. I mean, as well as me outplayed, they all played absolutely phenomenally. But in my eyes, got to give a big shout out to Jiro. I like that. It, it could have been a close one for all we know, you know. I mean, I, I do agree. Jiro, and uh, especially in Brawl Ball with uh, the uh, Gus pick, was doing a fantastic amount of work. And we've got to praise him for it. But everyone doing their bit, absolutely so. We have now an interview ready as well. 
We're going straight over to Inso, and it's been a while since we've been able to chat to Inso. So, what a time it's now been. Inso, are you there, buddy? Hi, yeah, I'm here. Nice to see you guys. Great to have you here, man. It's been a what a journey it's been to witness you guys this year. We didn't quite catch you in previous month, if I remember correctly, because uh, we couldn't get you on the line. So, um, how has it been for you guys? Obviously, a, a massive day for yourselves. What a turnaround. Talk us through the reverse sweep, I think, because how are you feeling watching that from where your seat was and how are you feeling and how are the boys feeling in that moment in time? I mean, first of all, GG is the totem, but like every time I play them, it's always emotional because, of course, they are my team from the past two years. So it's like a lot on, on the line, especially in a grand final. But I don't know, the first two sets were really hard because they played super aggro comps and we struggled a lot to have control and like keep a, a good strategy but i think the last three sets we had uh, really good drafts and uh, like the gameplay was amazing from the boys also we got like really excited after winning the the third set and then like winning the fourth with the, some connection issues so i don't know we're super happy well, I think it's fair to say you should be happy. I mean, I think looking at the admin side of things, you are very close now to locking yourselves in for the World Finals. Obviously, today, last chance qualifiers are, are a tick, 100%. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, you just need to now qualify for another monthly finals. How does it feel now, knowing that you are the first team in this region to almost be locking yourselves in for the World Finals? I mean, it feels great. I think it's uh, our goal to win the World Finals. So... It's the first step uh, to, win in, to win it is obviously qualifying for World Finals. So, I mean, the, the earlier we can get it, the better. You, you kind of took a question away from me as well, because I wanted to just go back to the sort of, it's not a rivalry, but, you know, yourselves and Reply Totem, obviously there's a lot of emotions there and stuff. How do you approach that, you know, from like a professional perspective when you're up against your you know, old teammates? There's got to be a, a great deal of love there, but obviously a great deal of commitment to the organization and your, your new roster. You know, it's going to be a bit bittersweet in that respect. Give us a little bit more of an insight around those things. Uh, I mean... I feel great with my new team and my new org, but when I play them, I mean, I, I obviously want to win. If they are playing other teams, then I'm like cheering for them. Like in ESL Masters, I was rooting for Totem to win, but in EMEA, I want to win every time, every tournament. So there's like no, no shame in like wanting to win. It's the nature of the game, isn't it? I'll ask one final question as well, Enzo, and thank you for your time, first and foremost. But uh, now I was wondering today coming in, how are you going to fare, to be honest, simply because, you know, with Masters at ESL, you know, you guys were not able to obviously, you know, compete and play despite yourself being with Play Totem to, to qualify. Um, you have got through to the challenge stages of ESL, but, you know, for that same reason, you haven't necessarily been involved in split two and like competition sort of mid-season time has been a bit of a down period for you guys. How have you stayed sharp and on your toes? Because obviously looking at your performance back in April, it was your worst performances to date as a team and going out in the quarterfinals. How did you bounce back? Yeah. What did you guys look at in the downtime to be able to come out with another win? I mean, first of all, our, comp our confidence never got down because I think even in April, we should have won our match and we probably had a great chance to win it all. So we, we still believe in ourselves. We train a lot. Like this week, we've been practicing three times a day when like we could. So I don't know. It's just like playing a lot, especially like Power League. And I don't like the guys are super good. We have good drafts. So I think like everything is working for us in, in this period. But regarding the competitions, I think that we take scrims seriously, especially like on a gameplay standpoint. So not playing official tournaments didn't really affect us. Interesting stuff. Well, you heard it from me. So if you want to be a, the top pro, the pro scene of Brawl Stars, Power League, that's the way to go. Any final shout outs from yourselves or the boys in so before I mean, we sign off any uh, thing you want to say to the fans? I mean, thanks for supporting us. Like, we appreciate you watching our matches and cheering. 
and I don't know, from Germany, it's all, we're happy, we won, and see you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you once again for your time and congratulations again to you, to the boys, to everyone there in the Zeta Division squad working hard behind the scenes. You guys are killing it. Keep it up. We cannot wait to see more from you guys very, very soon. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. Take care, Enzo. Welcome back, Trav. Welcome back, Teddy. You heard it there, Teddy. Power League is the way to go to be a Brawl Stars pro. Yeah, I I don't think my teammates are Zeta Division when I play uh, Power League, but a fantastic <laughs> interview arc and very fitting for this fantastic monthly final, uh, full of surprises again. And uh, what a pleasure to be here, man. Yeah, it was it was an interesting here thing to hear say because like yeah, for me personally, I don't get that experience myself. <laughs> well, at least when you're queuing with solos. Let's take a look back though at the bracket for today. Trav, talk us through how today went down. We've had a fun packed road. It was very, very busy today, wasn't it, in this region? Yeah, it was. The, all of the games were pretty much just very, very, very good. Starting things off, we had Zeta Division versus Ammo Fantasy, which they won 3 1. Humble versus One Trip Ponies. One Trip Ponies won 3 1. SK Gaming versus Foot. Foot came out on top in a close 3 2, and Reply Totem beat Navi in a close 3 2 as well. Then Zeta Division swept One Trip Ponies in a pretty convincing game. Foot Esports lost against Reply Totem 1 to 3. And then in the grand finals, yet again, Zeta Division for the third time have become the monthly final champions. On the staff, uh, I mean, this region is getting hot. It is getting very, very heated. It's getting closer as well. Let's take a look at the leaderboards as well to see how far Zeta are down the lead. 386 points. That is very, very commendable. I mean, they are the team to beat. Reply to us, not far behind them in second place. 276 points and a very narrow gap between themselves and Navi in third. 218. Humble, though, creeping forwards a little bit, despite their no rookie uh, road today. 206 points for them. Foot behind them in fifth. 197 points. Emma Fantasy, who didn't really cut the muster today. 190. AR, who didn't qualify for this month, in 167 points to the name. SK Gaming down the bottom. Yeah, it was a tough day for them, no doubt, no doubt about it, Teddy. Oh, absolutely so. I mean, other teams that didn't qualify. FA Mr. Doza that had a fantastic start of the year, first month or two, um, as well as Team Queso that didn't quite make it. Yeah. They were all near that top eight. Uh, not anymore, because team, teams caught up and seized the opportunity, and that's a lot of fun to see, but, you know, still a lot of fierce competition fighting for those spots. Very brutal, very, very brutal, but you've got to be consistent. You've got to keep qualifying and, you know, we can just see how quickly things can turn and change if you don't. So uh, we'll have to take a look as well at today's play of the day very, very shortly, Trav. We've had so many moments, to be fair, but this is the one. Talk us through it. Well, I'm going to have to jog my memory on it as well. I think it was kind of just a bit of a bit of a mute coming through down here. Uh, and then the trick shot coming through from Semantic. That's it. He got dragged in. Couldn't find the angle if he didn't go for the trick shot. So perfectly slotted in. An all around really good team play to get it there. Look, Drey's just getting this perfect mute down the side here against Yoshi. Otherwise, he could have got those shots through beforehand. Got the drag in. The pass was perfect as well. A little trick shot back around the corner. Couldn't find the angle if not. So wonderful plays by Foot Esports yet again. It really was fantastic to see. Uh, we'll never get bored watching that one go back round and round, but you know, it made perfect sense. Like I said at the time, you had to go for that trick shot. It's not just for flair, it's for literal you know, goal scoring purposes. World finals then, let's talk about that. Because at the moment, these are the teams that are in the position leaderboards wise to make the, their crazy raccoon for East Asia, of course, doing phenomenally well over in East Asia. Zeta division at the top of EMEA. And again, if they qualify just one more time, could well be locking themselves in, but we'll wait and see as to how that one goes. Not confirmed yet. Reply Totem not far behind, and Navi at the moment are in those spots. Zest for South America as well in a great spot. The last chance qualifiers, however, we've got a much wider spectrum here. Teddy, talk us through the teams that really stand out to you as being potentially in that world finals race. Well, I mean, all of them are, right? Uh, but right now, I mean, looking at a, a couple in particular, I feel like over in SA West and SA East, Clash and Leave No Witness have looked very competitive overall. Of course, East Asia 
incredibly competitive region. Reject affiliate esports. I believe I, I, I heard uh, F. Dot say in the East Asia show that Reject they could have won the monthly final if it wasn't you know in East Asia, uh, and that is absolutely true. Very very strong team. In the end, SEA have been in development a lot as well. So uh, it's always fun to see you know how they actually grow within their region and then at the end of the year against every other region. It really is great to see how the whole global scene is coming together now. And the, the competition is so fierce. We saw a glimpse of it earlier this year in the Snapdragon Pro Series in Japan. I cannot wait to get to the last chance qualifiers to have those clashes of everyone coming together. And we're not done for this weekend either. Make sure you tune in tomorrow at 3 p.m. at UTC for the uh, South America monthly finals. Um, it's always a good time there, Trav. We have a blast. And, uh, you know, it, the competition there is really heating up as well. It, it really is. So definitely tune in tomorrow because there's some, always some absolutely incredible games over in South America. And obviously after that as well, we've got North America a little bit later on down that night. So it's going to be an absolutely incredible day all the way throughout tomorrow. I'm expecting a lot of protesto pins for the North America one for sure. Uh, Teddy, we're wrapping up the show now for today. Any final thoughts, anything you want to say before we close today? Well, I mean, uh, a pleasure again to cast with you guys and to have this opportunity. It's been a, a long time since my last cast and I've been so happy to be here with you guys again. A big shout out to everyone behind the scenes making this possible, Supercell, as well as Esports Engine and every uh, one that makes uh, these shows possible. Massively appreciate you guys. Very well said. Anything from yourself, Trav, before we close today? Oh, just pretty much everything what Teddy said, to be honest. Absolute pleasure casting you guys. Lovely, lovely mug from you as well, Ark. It's, my, uh, it's the highlight. It really is. It really is the highlight of my day, that. The, the way this guy's got out, that he got out of his way to spend money to get a mug with my beautiful mug on it. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a mug on a mug. That's what it is, you know? <laughs> I'm glad you were the one to say it. I didn't want to be the one to do so. Uh, but we've had a lot of fun here in the MEA, as we always do, guys. Uh, make sure that you tune in tomorrow. 3 p.m. is the time for South America, of course, and uh, you'll find us back then. Got to give a huge thank you to everyone behind the scenes, of course, here, the production side, but of course, the viewers at home. Uh, you guys you know, make the show what it is. The coaches, the analysts, the players, the organizations as well. You guys keep doing what you're doing. We love it. Uh, we will see you guys tomorrow, 3 p.m. UTC for South America. We'll see you then. Till then, goodbye for now. It looks to me like it's going to be Zeta, which will bring it back. But it wasn't the most comfortable of victories. And Offense is getting a little bit short in this set. And it shows big damage now. We'll secure it. Zeta's division are safe, at least for now, as they make their way through to the semifinals. The bow diff from Reply Totem, the mines that undermine any chance of success here for Na'Vi. Reply Totem are moving on to the semi-finals and Na'Vi are out in quarters. This time he actually hit some valuable connections, gonna miss that rocket rain. No, Meow's very, very low in Cindy almost brings him down, but Bandit kicks him in the mix, Paul comes in, but Arty can drop his legs, doesn't get anything out of it. The takedown's there, but they need another three anyway, and Gas alone can't do it. Zeta Division take the game, and surely no chance for foot. Incredible Leon plays there from Maru, absolutely toying with his food. It's still available, there's the slow, the solid barrel didn't tank too much and it's still there. Flight hook forward and Jiro gets the kill, Joker too low to do anything as well. 150, Long Dash is there, Gasse heals him, two of them fall, and Zeta Division are the champions of the monthly finals in EMEA.